Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Oh. Sorry, I didn't see you there. My, uh... My therapist suggested I start using, um... I start using positive mantras. So... They said, visualize what you want in life and continue to repeat that over and over again and it will happen. So, we need Starfield to be good. So if we just keep telling ourselves, it will be good, it will be good. No more black pills. No more black pills for me. I, I swore it off. You know? I think I beat Pat to the punch. I think I was... I think I came in a little bit sooner than he did. Yeah, we're going to be doing a double feature today. Pat's running a stream on his end. I'm running a stream on my end. And uh, we're going to get into a Discord call. And uh, yeah, we're going to... It's it's the Starfield waiting room today. We're just we're just sitting here, you know. Gamescom, Gamescom, Starfield's at Gamescom. We don't know. We won't see any of the stuff, but it's there. They they had a whole like vertical slice that they showed off. Which so I've heard different things. I heard I heard from one source that it was playable there to the people in attendance, and then I heard a bunch of other people saying that it's just like a it's just like a video demo it's another stage demo so considering that was ign who is saying that i'm tempted to believe it's just another video maybe there's like exclusive access for like like maybe maybe ryan mclafferty and jeff Keeley get to play it but i'm just I was more interested in what City Skylines 2 did. So, while you got while you got Starfield there, right? Not letting most people play the game. City Skylines 2, on the other hand, Colossal Order and Paradox Interactive, the mad lads that they are, got a bunch of streamers and YouTubers and stuff together at Gamescom, strapped them to a fucking crane, and then gave them full access to the game. Like, literally... Put them up 15 stories into the air with a streaming platform strapped to a crane and then gave them full access to the current build of the game. That, my friends, that is confidence. That's what, that is marketing right there. Then you compare it to Starfield. <laughs> it, it's truly amazing. Truly. So, seeing as we're already going to get started talking about Starfield. I'm just gonna call Pat in right now. He says he's ready. Hello. Hello. Are you are you practicing positive reinforcement for Starfield? Uh no, I was playing ads for the uh <laughs> Tempurpedic battle station. <laughs> And the Elgato microphone. Interesting. Are those are, are those Starfield? Starfield? Oh yeah. Oh, Star Starfield uh, merchandise. Oh oh. So we, we get that, um, but we don't get to see the vertical slice, the demo that. So what's funny too is uh, I I finally <laughs> watched I finally watched uh, that thing that got leaked that uh, that dude yeah. who leaked like the beginning and stuff. From what I've read about what they're showing at Gamescom, they're showing more at Gamescom than what that leaker showed. So if they're, they're so showing just like a sliver more. Yeah, it's like so if you're concerned about the dude who leaked, which is that's been the only leak so far. It's like just show us what you're showing everybody else at Gamescom. Like what's the big deal here? I know it's a very confusing uh very confusing thing to be sure because like you said they're keeping it under wraps, but it's but, out there. Yeah, I it, wrote a fucking section on the introduction <laughs> for my video based on what was shown in that. Because, because, like, I guarantee you, 
there's two things that I have marked down that like check to make sure that this is right when you play it. And that, that's all I've got to check and I've already got like the part written out. I think my favorite so far that's come out of Gamescom was Eurogamer's article saying that it's Fallout 4 in space. That was just <laughs> that was just beautiful. <laughs> that because I I had I have I had a thesis for this Fallout video. Fallout 4 which is what 5.4 <laughs> on Metacritic. <laughs> That's oh come on, that's the user rating now. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had a thesis that was basically Fallout 4 in space, and Eurogamer confirmed it. So mm -hmm. I guess I can start writing some of this stuff. <laughs> Too bad I'm still writing the Skyrim video, so I can't. Just yeah, but... you just start writing a Fallout 4 video. <laughs> and uh it, yeah, that was um On a Skyrim out of ten, how was the intro? The intro is too complicated for me to really discuss at length on this stream. We can't show it because uh, <laughs> they've got the bloodhounds on that footage now. Oh yeah. Listen, I can't. I can't get another thing struck down. Uh, one was enough for this week. For uh, for those unaware, my Fallout seventy six video got age restricted earlier this week. So don't ever fucking call us paranoid ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I said it on Twitter as, I'm sorry, X, formerly known as Twitter. Um, I don't know if I should feel validated or disappointed right now. Kind of feel both. It is a, it is a validation, sure. <laughs> um, I still haven't even, like, rendered out the full, the full, yeah, the full version of the Fallout 76 video. I need to do that, but, because there was some stuff I was going to, like, update. Yeah, let's chat. Let's not jump ahead on the um, on all the news that's come out. It's been busy. W when was the last stream last weekend? Yeah, it feels like it feels like so much has happened <laughs> since then. <laughs> yeah, it was last Saturday, right? No. Was it Helgen or Sanctuary? It listen, it's it's complicated. You need to let it you need to let us work through the plan here, so. You've got uh, are you going on Skyrim yet, or uh, no? If you don't, just, if you don't know what's going on with this stream, he's live on his channel as well. I'll link yeah. that in the chat. He's going to be playing a Skyrim mod, yeah. And then I'm going to be handling the watch together or whatever we do over here. We're actually starting with an article though. Um, the two live chats being separate is like going to your other parent's house after the divorce, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we've been saying yeah we we got divorced a month months ago yeah this, this is all obligatory we once, were signed up for yeah once starfield, starfield comes out that's it the contract's over our and obligations un undic undisclosed future collaboration <laughs> listen Look, Private. Violence is scary for children. That's why YouTube has videos on the Wagner guys playing crashing all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> well, and who knows? It's probably, like, it's COVID stuff. You know it lines up it, with them bringing it back. Man, it... I haven't they're even... Doing, they're doing I haven't, mask mandates again in, like, um, Atlanta. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. At, like, a university. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's always the schools uh, that started it. It was the same thing over here. It was like our schools who were starting it first. Um, yeah, I, I haven't even appealed uh, because, you know, let's be honest, is there's, there's quite a bit in that video. There's quite a bit in that video. I, I yeah, I we have, have to figure out some out what's wrong with it suspects. First. I have some suspects. <laughs> um, you gotta figure out what you think it is first, and then I would hazard ask Team YouTube. I would hazard a guess. It was either. The very opening, where I'm standing in the middle of a nuked-out uh, town, making fun of it, or if it was the Enclave section, where we're going around, um, just, you know, doing our part as the Enclave. Yeah. A two listen, roleplay is dead. <laughs> you can't roleplay as bad guys, because if you roleplay as bad guys, you actually are bad guys. Yeah. But, to be honest, though... 
I was looking at the analytics and everything for that video. I don't know why it was doing as well as it was doing, and I have a suspicion it was going to die off after a week anyways. So I'm not... I'm really actually not that annoyed that it got age-restricted. I'm more just concerned because usually these things come in pairs. So I actually pulled down the, uh, the parts because I was concerned that, you know, if there's something in the main part that got pulled, that got flagged, that means well, is, was one there of the parts... Was there an original patron version? Uh, that one's still available, unlisted. If you go to my Patreon, you get access to the un... Patreon.com slash private sessions. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I pulled down the uh, the individual parts because it's, you know, it's redundant anyway. That was always part of the plan, uh, was I'd delist those parts eventually anyways. So I just did it because I'm afraid of getting uh, getting a second age restriction like a week later. And those are like private too. I just straight up, they're they're gone for the most part. But it's not like content is lost. It's those are still those is literally the the full version just cut in half. That's what the parts were. So I'm not gonna take down the full version or anything like that. I'm not even gonna bother like re-rendering it or doing a different cut. It's up. It's up. It's yeah. Um, it's just annoying. Yeah, it's. Anything. I'm more just concerned about getting hit with another one because, like, that happened in Never Knows Best, where he got hit with one and then he just kept getting hit by them and he didn't know why. And now his channel's like in this weird limbo state where he just like can't seem to upload anything. That's that's the only thing that has me concerned. But this listen, the Skyrim script is coming along. I'm most i'd say I'm like two-thirds of the way done with it the the plan is to have it finished by the time skyrim or the script done by the time starfield releases and yeah it's it's clean there's nothing in there that's going to get me clipped it's skyrim there's not listen skyrim haters it's a the day of reckoning is coming on august 31st yeah <laughs> uh, for, for game uh when game pass users gain access to um the elder scroll starfield mm-hmm <clears throat> all right so yeah you're gonna kick off your skyrim yeah i guess so do you have a um do i have a watch the other link yes. yeah let's i'll set that up before i start playing well i did on it closed for some reason probably what just do you guys think activity. about the opening night live for games con todd howard starfield appearance i didn't even uh, really boring i had it muted well uh like it, I was gonna give it a it, watch later. It was like a minute long, wasn't it? It, it was, was. Yeah, it was. It was really short, and I'm really gra glad we didn't watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad because they spent more time advertising Zack Snyder's new like movie than they did <laughs> talking about Starfield. Was, they they got to get paid, right? Jeff mm -hmm. Jeff shows that they they have they incur a cost, and that's that's kind of the thing. Got to got to do a little bit of shilling. I'm not you know I'm, I'm not judging. Okay, now the question is, if I'm going to, is there anything visual that I... No, no. So, all right, I was so going to start shouldn't... off with an article so I can read that for you. All right, so it's your, like your I don't chat. have to set up a scene for this then, right? No. Like, it's fine for me to just leave the audio. All right. If they, if you listen, if you're on the private session stream and you want to see the visual, like watch together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we're watching the video. Yeah, just, just go over to go over to Pat's go over stream. my stream. I mean, if you, if you don't care and you just want to watch Skyrim gameplay if I'm playing Ether Dynamics mod, go watch his stream. We've given you options. All right. So. Uh, let's close the pop oh, up telling me to run. We're uh, listening to Starfield music on my on my stream. I got I got the Skyrim music. Do you have how much how much of the OST do you have? Uh, we have seven tracks now, if you count the one that we had before. Nice. It's very strange how they're getting out. It's like random channels will post, like, one track. And then I'm pretty sure, like, every every one of these channels, it's, it's always, like, these tiny channels, would, like, they grab whatever's out there, and then they add, like, one more to it. It's really weird. So we're up to, like, six, <laughs> uh, six songs that are out there. I think... I think getting this, access this sounds like to the Des full... Destiny. Yes, we are listening to Destiny yeah. music legally. Yeah, yeah it's kind of weird listening. Like some of the tracks in there definitely had some Destiny vibes to it. So there's another thing I got to add to the thumbnail. So my idea for the thumbnail is just going to be like this. 
ton, like I'm just going to take a ton of different um what's it called? Like a ton of different logos from different media that the that Starfield is like basically, you know, taking inspiration from. And it's just going to be like layered on top of each other just stretching out into the background like as far as like I'll probably have like 50 different layers, 50 different image layers which is different logos. And then the top one will be Starfield and like behind that will be Fallout 4. What? It's not just going to be the generic uh starfield like painting that they did <laughs> six years ago and that, i got a uh, and i got a, like impact font on top of it your face and i got yeah and i got a good picture of uh of todd howard and stuff that i'll probably work in there and i think like i've had this thumbnail in my head for weeks now and the Eurogamer quote saying that it's fallout 4 in space really just like confirmed that i can just start working on it now how much did I pay private sessions to get him to play more Skyrim? No, he's volunteering to do it. Yeah, he, no, I was. He's making a video. Yeah, no, no, no. Like I was, uh, I was playing this mod and stuff because it looked kind of interesting, and it, it, I was, I was having fun. I was having fun playing Skyrim. I know, shocking. So what I got is like a um. Let's let's get the game running. Actually, let's 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 get this show going. Oh, I might be getting dropped here. Oh, reconnected. Okay. All right. Yeah, there was some there was some pre-stream shenanigans that was causing issues, and that might mm. be contributing to why there's like canals on my stream. So if I do anything more complex than a static image, uh, it was choking up a bit. But we should be good now. We're getting full bit right. Skyrim, hello, Skyrim. You all right? Okay, there we go. All right, we've got an article from GQ. Inside Starfield, how Bethesda's NASA Punk Epic became the biggest Xbox game in a decade. God, Na <laughs> the NASA Punk thing is just it's going to be one of those things that's super annoying for like the next 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like it's a stupid it's a stupid like whiteboard idea to kind of convey to the artist what it's supposed to be. And someone in marketing like picked up um picked up on it and there was like are. no 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 we can we can we can market this and uh so i'm gonna hate hearing it every time it gets said and all the games that are gonna copy it because you know that'll be a thing all right we should I see a black screen. I know. Yeah, it should be coming up in a second. I know you were saying, uh, should be coming up. There you go. You were saying how, uh, the, the, the main theme of Starfield is just, it's a little bit more subdued. From, uh, yeah. Fallout 4, Fallout 76, Skyrim, they all have very prominent main themes. And I felt like Starfields was lacking in a lot of ways. And uh, a lot of the background music, too, really. Mm -hmm. it, it's almost like I'd prefer yeah. to just be listening to Fallout 76 you know, tracks. Yeah, Fall, Fallout 76, underrated soundtrack, in my opinion. I really did get a uh, greater appreciation for that soundtrack when we were in West Virginia driving around listening to it. Mm. The, I guess I'm just going to have to go to space, we're white right? We're about Fallout 76. Yeah, you, we are. We're gonna have to listen to the Starfield soundtrack when we go to our on our space trip. Next yeah, month. Uh, Virgin Galactic. Mm -hmm. Well, they yeah. they don't actually go to space, but they they do. Isn't they that do like sub, the whole plan? They do suborbital flights. They actually don't. They uh, don't even go to space. Ah, uh, uh, that's the funny part. All right, so Elon Musk, we're gonna need some seats on. Uh, just two seats. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fine. Uh, on the next uh, Falcon Heavy or whatever I, you got I know going that, up. I know that you're a fan of us and you watch all our streams. That's why. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's why you algorithmically boosted my request for a, a Starfield code. <laughs> after, after buying publisher Bethesda Softworks for nearly seven point five billion dollars, Microsoft secured Starfield as an Xbox exclusive. But the team behind it didn't just build a world; they built a galaxy, one that could turn the tide for a console generation. Mm. Mm. Well, so you have Phil Spencer saying that Starfield is just the opening shot of a relay race of third-party titles. Or first-party titles, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
listen, guys, we know we've we've bungled 2022 and <laughs> and 2021 <laughs> and 2020 and uh 2019 when did, when did this yeah when did this console come out yeah like i'm sorry but i feel like the xbox how this, deep this, the series like i don't even know what console gen there's another in. dude there's been so many good phil spencer quotes coming out of gamescom he also said um xbox is now finally at the end of the beginning <laughs> um and and he has 200 hours in starfield and 15 characters yeah he, so apparently he's on the YouTuber grind set. Yeah. He's rivaling me with what I've been doing with Skyrim. I saw that and I was like, damn, Phil. 15 run gonna be, uh, of the introduction. You're going to be dropping a Starfield video at launch? Just beat us all to the punch? Yeah, I don't buy that he's done that. He's played that much. <laughs> um, No, like. Xbox was really dropping the ball up until now. And I struggled to believe that, oh, this is the big this is the big turnaround. We've restructured and yeah, we're going to make this big push to uh, to restore the Xbox brand. Remember Halo? (laughs) Who? Remember when Halo was sharing the Xbox brand and now they have to like go and buy another company? (laughs) Uh, All right. So real fast. This is a uh, what is what is what is this a battle mage? Yeah, Dunmer battle mage. I'm just trying to make uh, a character that's as powerful as possible because this uh, this mod kind of makes the game a little bit more difficult, especially when you're fighting multiple enemies because enemies won't just bum rush you all the time. So, and um, one of the one of the ideas so that so the idea behind the mod is that we now have like factions in the game that like NPC factions that go around and they're doing things dynamically and like building themselves up. So it's basically what the civil war should have always been. Um, And like the factions will go and take over different parts of the map and everything. And you'll come in contact with like bandit leaders and minions and all this stuff. And it's listen, Warner brothers patented this. They can't do this because it was. Oh, right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 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 I forgot. Yeah, they patented the idea of factions taking over locations. No other game can do that. Mm-hmm. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. So I'm supposed to have my own faction. And apparently it's like in at this location. I went to this. So I did a bunch of work off stream. I played for like three hours off stream. So that you guys don't have to sit here watching me run through uh, getting, you know, like. Helgen and did you do Bleak yeah, Ball Sparrow? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. I did the whole thing. So you've got um, shouts. Oh, so this is the bear, I think, right? Worst part Hello. now is that is that is the people that go they fixed it are popping up for Halo Infinite. So um, allegedly, Halo Infinite's campaign is like eleven hours. So we could do two hours a night until Starfield comes out and get. <laughs> Why, why are we going to do that? Uh, it's just, you know, I, I'm in the mood for uh, something different. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Who is this? Uh, this is one of the new followers. So, like I was saying, I get my, like, the Dragonborn gets their own faction. So, um, I'll get, like, a bunch of companions that come in and they, I can have them join me on my adventures or I can send them out. And when I send them out, they're going to, like, level up and everything. And, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, it seems interesting. All right. One blink could break the galaxy. It is a midsummer's evening in suburban Rockville, Maryland, at the end of a 10-year journey. One of 2023's biggest games, the space-hopping hype beast. The space-hopping hype beast. Starfield is just over a month away, but its legendary director, Todd Howard, the man responsible for creating several of the most successful RPGs in video game history, that's him, guys. Yeah. The, the legend himself. We're over here having arguments about whether or not these games are RPGs. and No, he, he's, he's done it. <laughs> Has realized that the protagonist's eyes aren't working properly. He's demonstrating this to me over dinner. Tacos, al pastor, and sickeningly sweet passion fruit margaritas. Man, he wined and dined this guy. <laughs> he blinks quickly three times once slowly then he closes his eyes Todd are you okay he sits for a bit unnervingly still the waitress definitely just clocked him he opens them again see 
We can what? Stay in a group every day. <laughs> what? This is this this is the style of article writing where you just don't make sense with what you're mm -hmm. with, with how you open it. This is this is the um this is the uh I, I really wanted to be a creative writer, but I just couldn't hack it, so yeah. Now I make articles for uh who is this from? What is this uh British GQ. Okay. Mm, all right, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Th that makes sense. Man, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel here. So this is cool. I was concerned that I would lose, like, Mercurio or something, but no. See, this is kind of going to be useful because apparently um, I'll be running into a lot of, like, larger groups of enemies now because of this mod. So. Yeah, now I got a, now I got a gang with me. I, want, I just want to know. Question. Jesus Christ. Okay, so he, this man, the person who wrote this hasn't tweeted in four years. But they have 121,000 posts on Twitter. Jeez. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> were they, were they uploading all of their, like, articles in, uh, what is the, what is the character limit on 100, Twitter? 144 characters, 256, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> all right, so what I'm trying to figure out is, what should I be doing? Game development is unpredictable. The more ambitious you go, the more unpredictable it gets. With a galaxy the size of Starfields, some 1,000, sorry, some 100 stars and 1,000 planets, even seemingly minuscule changes to the game's code can have vast consequences. Hmm. Because uh, every every single little area in the game is uh, scripted programmatically. <laughs> And it's not just a set of pieces placed down like Lego blocks. <clears throat> but go on, go on. This close to launch, the team treats every small bug, even ones you'd only notice when the game's director acts them out for you in the middle of a packed restaurant with the utmost caution. Bethesda Game Studios has few comparisons. In a single nine-year period, it released 2006's The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, which redefined open-world role-playing games. Really? Oblivion redefined? redefined. Oh, oh, but... Redefined it. But by what metric did Oblivion <laughs> redefine the open world role playing game? Here's how. It, here's what it redefined. It was successful. It made a ton of money. <laughs> it was a successful console RPG. It, it was like the first console RPG to come out on the most hyped system at the time, the Xbox 360. <laughs> redefined in go. the worst way. Yeah, I mean like. If you want to say that redefinitions don't always have to be for the better, have pushed up prices in the reach. Why does this read like an erotic novel? <laughs> Ugh, anyways, 2008's Fallout 3, a post-apocalyptic romp, so good, so good. That Westworld's creators are adapting it for TV. Are we sure that that's because of Fallout 3? And not just the general push of Fallout bullshit. Fallout skinned everything that they did. Because they did Wait, the do mobile they game and they're doing it the TV show. Oh, did you see? It's the, like the, the show's going to take place on the West Coast Yeah, again. it's going to be in, in, in going LA. To LA. Which yeah. I'm pretty sure Fallout fans, you can sound out on this. I don't think is possible but anyways whatever you know they're, they're well, how convenient they're filming near hollywood it's almost like they're being cheap yeah. but, um <laughs> it's almost like it's gonna keep the costs down oh wait this is an Am amazon well show it's like costs, they're trying to come up costs with are an, not a concern here's the here's the interesting part about fallout 3 they're trying to come up with a reason why fallout 3 is a significant game beyond it sold a bunch because fallout 3 got a bunch of game of the year awards that it shouldn't have gotten because there were uh -oh. more notable games that come out that year um but yeah, so they have to like, they have to say that that's the reason the TV show, and I'm sure the Westworld people are like, oh, I love Fallout 3. Because Lex Friedman loved <laughs> Fallout 3. They should they should say that's the accomplishment, is it's Lex F Friedman's favorite game. Fallout 3 was RPG oh. of the year. Fallout 3 was game of the year, as in it won the most game of the year awards. Um, 
because that was like around the time that they just started counting literally anybody who had an opinion on game of the year in game of the year awards um 2011's the elder scrolls 5 skyrim the seventh best selling video game of all time that's its accomplishment like literally he's boiled mm -hmm. it down to the reason why they're significant because skyrim sold a lot yeah it's not culturally significant it's just sold a bunch of copies is is no context given of course that is it was there sold any other times. metric yeah sales sales equals uh quality well that's 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 what we came uh, to the conclusion of with uh lux friedman right in 2015's Fallout 4, which made $750 million on launch day. There you go. You nailed it. You nailed it. Why are they significant? Because they made a lot of money. They're not wrong, though. They're not wrong. I didn't know it made that much money on day one. So, yeah, Starfield's going to make a billion dollars on launch. Remember when that was significant? <laughs> Remember the, when that was a big deal? That was when um, that was when food that was... went for a reasonable price. <laughs> Greta Gerwig's Barbie needed two weeks to surpass that figure. Ooh, you we're putting down the, really? the cultural milestone. Listen, Barbie had needed two weeks to make seven hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, it's almost like Barbie was yeah, in a, almost... at a movie theater that has to sell for significantly yeah. cheaper. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's like you're comparing uh, something that goes for sixty something dollars, and then something that goes for ten to fifteen bucks. But listen, chat, we're being optimistic here. GTA Five made the news for making a billion at launch, didn't it? Yeah, I think it made it a billion. Yes, in, it was the in first, its first day. It was the first game to yeah. make a billion dollars, and I think it was. First Do you know day how much? For sure. Do you guys know how much money Destiny 2 makes off of just its microtransactions? <laughs> Talking well beyond a billion dollars here. Now, those are the numbers people... They, they don't want people to know, mm. except the investors. All four games have won countless awards. It's true. Uh, Fallout mm. 4 was um, DICE's Game of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, dice. The dice awards are like the uh, the Emmys and the Grammys for video games. Remember that? So that was that irrelevant. was a thing that, that people claimed for five minutes. <laughs> but in 2018, the streak ended. Ooh, G oh. GQ's counting Fallout 76, oh. guys. Oh, hold on, hold on. T we can't Todd Howard's that. bad. Todd Howard's bad about counting whether or not Fallout 76. <laughs> That was that was the work of a rogue group up in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. It was it was their first game. It was their first game. You can't blame them. Saw so on Twitter oh. that the Xbox Battle Cry. The what, what, what is Battle Cry? Stop spreading misinformation. The, Battle Cry is that wasn't real. The Starfield uh, gameplay leaker just had his console banned and account suspended. Also, whoever keeps commenting that. Uh, I always talk over private sessions. We talk over each other. Yeah, it's a mutual, it's a mutual thing. This is what happens when you get divorced. This, this is how you know the relationship is in, uh, is in turmoil. Okay, um, excuse me, excuse me. Studio's multiplayer experiment, Fallout 76, had a disastrous launch. Released in a notoriously bad technical state. Hence the entire year of polish that's been committed to Starfield. Oh my god. <laughs> Damn, they... Alright, they went a little bit hard there. Well, what's interesting is Fallout 76's launch problems were almost all tied to it being multiplayer. Yeah. Like, and I feel like this article is leaving out the important context that Fallout 4 also came out in a really broken state. Like, you could play Fallout 4 today and have... Like consistent issues. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, remember Skyrim's that uh, that crashing free. that you had to fix yeah. before you uh, before you were able to stream. Yeah, it? just like a default option in the in the video <laughs> settings. Yeah, that can just crash the game. Cool. Fallout, yeah, Fallout Four and Fallout Seventy Six having issues with VSync. That was that was that was my issue. It's very difficult when your intentions don't necessarily match with reality. 
says studio director Angela Browder of the reaction to the game. Hang on. She said that of the reaction to the game. So it's difficult when her intentions of the reaction to the game don't match with reality. I, I feel like something's wrong here. Yeah, of course. They have an they have an intention. Have we just been looping the same song over and over? Whoops. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't know if anybody noticed, but uh, we were supposed we were supposed to be on a VLC playlist. Uh, Bear Mishka, can you? That's this is not. Yeah, there's a there's other songs. To be... And because it's not a companion that I direct the control, I can't tell her to like move. Okay, Patrician TV. Conspiracy time. I haven't engaged with any of the typical Peter here, Ovo type Xbox chill accounts on my Twitter main, but starting yesterday, there I'm getting go. all their posts in my feed. Same with the official Xbox channels. No, it's like, um, it's definitely like algorithmically taken over, which is hilarious because a lot of the time they will like subtweet things that the PlayStation people are saying, but you never see what the PlayStation people are saying. So it literally looks like all of the Xbox people are just fighting ghosts. Like they're just constantly straw manning <laughs> things that nobody is is saying, even though I'm sure there's one person out there who said what they're responding to. But it, it is like <laughs> it is hilarious. It, there, it, there's not a more insecure group of people than Xbox fans. It man preach. <laughs> but what? But what I focus on is that we can be really proud of how we responded. That's how you show what kind of studio you are. Listen, L okay. What were the responses? What were the uh, what were the options? Okay, they. You sit down in the meeting. Fallout seventy six has just come out. It's in a terrible state. You sit down in the meeting. You make a decision. Who's that? What the fuck? The, your options are fix the game, which is what they did? Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> Option number two could just completely abandon the game. Option number three, make it worse. Like, I mean, I don't understand. Like, there's not really an option in that situation. You have to fix the game. Like, you could. You could choose not to. Sure, that's technically a thing you could do. Good luck. <laughs> so, no, you don't get credit for fixing the games that you release broken. BGS has fixed Fallout 76 over the last five years. Mmm, GQ putting their opinion down. Fallout 76, guys, it's fixed. They fixed it now. They did it. They did it. It's finally fixed. Did co-op? 100%. What a great experience mm -hmm. that was. There's definitely not a bunch of missing content from some of those updates like Nuclear Winter and it, stuff. It, listen, it's the multiplayer game that they always wanted it to be. They always wanted there to be mm -hmm. a Raider storyline about forcing people to get vaccinated. That that's Listen, there were design Fuck meetings in 2016 this. about how that's what they wanted the game to be. Oh, this is the Hall of Vigilant. Okay. There's another faction. But Starfield can't afford to make the same mistakes. It's the team's first original universe in more than a quarter of a century. Yeah, okay. I'm going to stop you right there. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Because... What? Well, it's technically true. It's Bethesda Game Studios' first new IP because Bethesda Game Studios was created in 1999 when Bethesda Softworks split in two. But... And here's the thing. There's not a person there that's done a new ip so it's not this is their first in x amount of time it's this is their first ever they have always <laughs> been trouncing around in the ruins of other people's settings just making them worse i'm sorry i mean <laughs> improving them <laughs> my uh, on, my remember positivity positivity starfield will be good it's okay it's okay to assume a game will be good it's not okay to assume a game will be bad <laughs> so the interesting thing and i have this this, okay. this is one of the stuff things i've written in my script uh, before the game comes out because i know it'll be true is they had the opportunity with starfield to write a setting that they don't have to violate the canon of they don't have to worry about war contradictions or anything like that. They can set it up perfectly to 
completely is... align with what they want it to be. And they're already introducing elements that are like the levitation <laughs> act. Like they already did it. <laughs> they already have the, their version of the levitation act, which is the banning of mechs. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so how do you is, uh... how do you have lore retcons in a game that's like the first <laughs> the first <laughs> entry in a series? Because they tr mechs were going to be in the game. We were going to have like exocrafts and stuff, but they just didn't make the cut. But they already wrote quests and everything mm. before the game came out. You know, it was, like, it was too late. It was too late. But we we don't so. want to deal with it, so we need to just say that it's it's illegal. No, but no, yeah. no faction in the galaxy is going to use mechs now that it's illegal. Not, 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 not these pirates, not yeah, these yeah, religious cultist extremists. Not. Yeah, the, the people. Oh God, this bear is really gonna. Oh, okay. Positivity, positivity. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. <laughs> I need you to stop spreading negativity. Okay. You're just you're just a hater, man. Yeah. You're just trying to bring them down. You're trying you just wanna see Xbox and Bethesda fail. That's it. Just admit it. Just admit. It's the team Oh we, we did that. Browder calls it a <laughs> once in a lifetime thing to make a new IP at this scale. Technically true. Really sad. Mm. <laughs> so BGS will has be never had will be sad when people are saying it's just a mid game. So BGS has never had such anticipation and skepticism focused on one game. Skepticism is spelled wrong, but also the reason that they're having that star there's a lot of Starfield skepticism is not because it's a new IP. It's because of Fallout 4 and Skyrim and and 76. And 76, but like even like even removing Fallout 76, they fixed it now. Yeah. Fallout All 4 right. is not a good game. It's a successful game. But it's not very good. And so the skepticism, it's not grounded. And it's also ground like I have a compilation Oops. kind of cooking of me of all of the statements I've ever done on stream where I've been asked, like, what do you think of Starfield? And me going, well, I don't know much about the game, but, you know, I hope it's good. Or, you know, me having neutral opinions about Starfield up until they started marketing it. As soon as I started to see the marketing, that's when the red flags started to go off. <laughs> <laughs> so like I wasn't born to hate Starfield. It's they marketed it badly and have like confirmed things that are just wee woo wee woo fucking sirens <laughs> of hey this is gonna be this is not gonna be written very well or the you know the gameplay is not gonna be very cohesive. But listen, you don't go into it for the story. You go into it for the experience. For the experience, yeah, yeah. It's Re it's it's a universe refresh. that you're just meant to get lost in. Refresh, chat. Refresh. Positive. It's made for wanderers. In many ways, the reputation of the studio is at stake. I hey, I said that. This this <laughs> this really is the turning point of is Elder Scrolls Six and Fallout Five going to be good? And yeah. the way they've marketed it. No. no, we're continuing the we're continuing the downward spiral, as they say. Yeah. And to heighten the tension, no one has played it. <laughs> Published August 24th. So today, he's saying that today no one has played to it. <laughs> I guess he didn't go to Gamescom then. He didn't go to Gamescom. I mean, not this is so fu fucking untrue. It's been QA tested to death. Okay, so it's played at Bethesda. It's played at the Microsoft QA stuff. It's in the hands of reviewers. It, yeah, it, it's in the hands mostly podcasters, but it's in the hand like it. Review copies are out. <laughs> there are fucking guys. This, this fucking guy stole the Constellation Edition from his warehouse job so that he could post it on YouTube. <laughs> Like, <laughs> oh, is that what that was? Yeah, he just like stole it from his job. Ah, oh, okay. That okay. that's how that kind of leak happens. How is Skyrim bad? Well, I've got twenty hours of uh, good content about how, <laughs> Mister Private Sessions, you're working on a video right now. Why don't you uh, inform this chatter? Uh, I. There's a lot. Yeah, I mean, like, all, all listen, right. <laughs> it's going to be quite the interruption of the stream for us to really spit you down. We can go we can go skill by skill. We can go story yeah. by story. We can go dungeon by dungeon, you know, city by city, whatever metric you want. Um, 
it's just, in the words of Todd Howard himself, it's a very schizophrenic experience. What do you want, Listen, I used to work warehouse jobs, and I got my hands on the pre-release copies of stuff to handle as merchandise, of course. It's not hard. Like that's how that stuff happens. Is uh, very rarely is it. Oh, whoopsie! We sent it early, and that's how people got their hands on it. Yeah. No, your very your very first leaks are always people who steal the copies. He won't get sued by Bethesda because he didn't sign an NDA. Yeah, but he probably will be fired. Yeah. <laughs> they'll they'll forward the worth, information to worth it. Worth it for the. You listen, you got like 800 subscribers on YouTube. It's worth <laughs> that's worth losing your job. Um, <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like no, like no content creator would actually leak that because why the fuck would you cross? Yeah, like cross Bethesda. If you got a, well, if you got within their good graces, you you're gonna play by the play by the rules there. Mm -hmm. You hear me, Bethesda? Until two a, months ago, the public had barely there. seen the game in action at all, besides short trailers. No, they, um, Gamescom or not? Ga fucking E3 2022. Yeah, E3. Yeah, yeah, we saw we saw plenty there. They showed 15 minutes. It was like it was it was confusing and disjointed and um was and once ra again, raised red, red, red flag. flags. You know, yeah, red flag central. There were, bugs, there were multiple bugs in it. <laughs> But we saw stuff. The pressure of that unknown is further compounded by Microsoft's $7.5 billion purchase of the studio and its parent publisher in 2021, close to the $8 billion Disney spent to acquire both Marvel and Star Wars. That unprecedented spending spree was meant to give Xbox's exclusives the legs to stand against Sony, whose own PlayStation Studios have dominated gaming over the last decade. That's... Man, that's pathetic. Debatable. De debatable and pathetic. <laughs> the last time Xbox had a game capable of shifting the cultural needle in the same way as The Last of Us Part 2. Yeah, that. Boy, Last of Us Part 2. Oh, that's, yeah, that, let me that's tell you. Let me needle. tell you. Go, go with God of War or Horizon Zero Dawn. No, well, let's, like... ne next up is God of War Ragnarok, but we got to open with Last of Us Part 2. Yeah. Okay, that's, the, that's the one. <laughs> But the last time Xbox oh, had a man. game capable of shifting the cultural needle the same way as those games was 2007's Halo 3. Eh. Eh. Yeah. Reach? Ev yeah, even Reach. Re come on, Reach was on the level of fucking God of War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tez and Bethesda Game Studios as a whole has been in decline ever since Julian LeFay left Todd Howard and Todd Howard entered... And the BGS sheeps refused to see it, no matter the proof. When did Julian Lefay leave? That was uh, in the mid, yeah, mid was... to late nineties. No, no, no. Morrowind was was fine. Uh, Morrowind is is fine. See, is what I'll see. Say. It's like, see, it's like it depends on the, this this uh, sort of discussion always t goes de like boils down to. How long have you been following Bethesda games mm. for? Like, if you were a fan of Daggerfall, and you weren't happy with the, uh, you know, with the direction that they took with uh, with Morrowind, then yeah, you're gonna be saying that the the fall happened then. Whereas you have like, you know, losers like me who really loved Oblivion and then played Skyrim, and it's like, ah, Skyrim was when the f the beginning of the end started. Yeah, I think Oblivion and... would be fine. Like, just a few tweaks, and it's on the level of Morrowind. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I have a mod pack that I've been playing through recently, and yeah, just a few tweaks to like level scaling and stuff makes the game a lot. At least gameplay wise, better. Right, yeah, gameplay wise. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Writing it's that that it's a lost lost cause, but at least gameplay wise, it becomes a pretty pretty solid RPG. Just a few tweaks. That little in Starfield from a major title, one that topped the Steam which starts for months into the most important game for Xbox in ten years. Again, sad. They had to go to the most popular um, game company that was independent of the console war and buy them to get an intellectual property that could actually carry their console. Like, that's how bad down Xbox was. 
or sorry, down bad. As a result, the nerves are palpable. Production director Andrew Scharf uses his preschool kids port menu scare sighted to describe his mix of emotions. But there is pride more so. Eight hours playing Starfield shows why. The game is the team's most polished, ambitious in scope, and original in tone in recent memory. I saw the first hour, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> Sorry, that would don't violate my a, NDA to, to talk don't, about that. Don't, don't they have a, a bot that's playing through the first like yeah. few hours of the game to make sure it's not broken? Yeah, I mean, like, that's kind of the, the interesting thing is like, yeah, I can actually believe that the first eight to 20 hours are like super polished, but mm -hmm. you, sooner or later, like as I soon, did, as, honestly, soon as this gets honestly, into people's though, hands. Real talk, I do think Starfield's gonna probably be pretty okay bug-wise and everything. I think that I think the issue is gonna be performance. Performance and loading screens. I think those are gonna be your two technical sore spots. But, you know, definitely I would be shocked if it's as bad as, you know, Fallout 76. Oh, it's not gonna be. I think we would have we would we would we would have heard about it at this point if it's gonna be that bad. Well, we didn't hear about it last year before the delay. It, like it didn't leak out that the game was in a poor state. Yeah, true. It, it well, really, uh, it really is like a actually no, actually no. There was somebody who left be who left Bethesda, and they basically predicted what was what has happened so far that they were going to delay it. Uh, it was going to get delayed till September, and he was saying that it was still in a really buggy state. And this was, um, I want to say it was like four months after the initial release. They missed the initial release date, and he also said that. Um, what was it? The ship to ship combat was still like not in a good state whatsoever. And everything else that he said so far has come true, so it probably was a reputable leak. But that was the only one that I saw. That anyone has saw seen, I'm s I suppose. What is this article? Why was why was it written? I can't answer the why. It is probably paid for. Like it, yeah, they've been it's, taking a very scattershot approach with their and marketing. You are correct is, in the uh, observation that they are emphasizing the polish in order to help ease apprehensions and encourage pre-order sales. Because it's like, you know, if, if you were a smart consumer, you would look at the pattern and say, um, don't pre-order it, wait for the reviews. But the thing is, like, bugs are just the surface level. Like, if, if your thought process is that bugs were the only thing that was wrong with Fallout 4, like, <laughs> its problems go way deeper than that. So it's like, cool. You solved you solved the, the surface level problem. That means all of the attention will be on the actual gameplay and storytelling, which is, uh. uh, which is kind of exciting and liberating in a way because it means that that's where the discourse <laughs> is going to be focused. For yeah, that's, what was, that's exactly what I was just thinking. Like legitimately, actually, I'm yeah, able. To... We might actually get some people going. Like you know, you think the game is just not really very bad. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the settlement building really just feels disconnected from everything else. There's, and it's like there's no cohesion you are having systems. Yeah. What's the what's the connective tissue? Yeah. Thank you for the 10 bucks telling me uh, Julian left due to creative differences. Um, what I was what I was going to say was I've been watching um, somebody oh playing The God. Long Dark recently. And there was some interesting stuff with that game. Where I was like, you know, this game, is some, certain elements this feels like Morrowind. Then, I, then it turned out that uh, Ken Rolston worked on it. I'm going to hit you with a doozy of a quote. Oh, boy. Todd Howard is to games what Tom Cruise is to cinema. Hmm. <laughs> what does that mean, dude? Tom Cruise is an actor. Tom Cruise is an actor. Yeah, he's, he's not, not a director. A, he's not a director. He's not a film producer. He's not a, you know, he's not an executive. I, you know, I mean, maybe he's directed something. 
Uh, they, they they usually do dab. But no, he's but... he's known as a as an actor and as like a he, he does his own stuff. Yeah, and what have yeah, you that's his like... that's his call to fame. If Todd Howard, if we were to compare Todd Howard to an actual film director, who would we compare him to? To a film director, um, yeah, oh, I'm in this dungeon. I don't know, fucking Chris, uh, who makes the Transformers movies? Michael Bay. Michael, no. yeah, come on, Michael Bay. That's got to be the comparison. No, come on, have a have a little bit more respect. But listen, Michael Bay <laughs> makes the movies that he wants to. There's some deep, there's some deep underlying themes to what's going on with Michael Bay's <laughs> keenography. Zack Snyder, yeah, uh, the, like Zack Snyder's the runner-up pick. I almost feel like there's not a film comparison because film is in somehow in. Yeah. Actually, I don't want to say it's in a better state. At least creatively, it's in a better state. J.J. <laughs> Abrams. Oh, J.J. Abrams. Ah, close. I, I don't know if J.J. Yeah. Abrams runs a good ship, though. Am I like fucking this up right now? Am I getting defeated by a Skyrim puzzle? So he cackles when I suggest this theory to him. Slight, boyishly handsome. <laughs> What? <laughs> so the author has this theory that he's the Tom Cruise of games, and then he, he's laying out the reasons why he thinks this, and he, he's he's saying to Todd Howard, okay, you're Todd Howard, and I'm saying this to you. Listen, hear me out. Hear me out. This is why I think you're like Tom Cruise. You're slight, boyishly handsome, sharp-jawed, and tussled-haired. You have the look of classical antiquity. He, I they fuck. Hold on, they, hold hold on, hold on. He said this like in person. He said this in person over margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> and Todd's just sitting there like, I am never doing an interview with GQ ever again. <laughs> I knew I should have handed this one to Pete Hines. <laughs> People send me Pete Hines quotes like I care what he has to say. Yeah, <laughs> I love re I love reading Stonewalling. It you know what actually it is kind of funny because like he is vicious sometimes. Yeah. Like there was that there was that one on Twitter where he's just like, uh, we're working on a game right now. You might yeah. not have heard of it, and it's just like, God damn, Pete. <laughs> he he talks like a YouTuber. Yeah, <laughs> that's the crazy part is like <laughs> Bethesda is like the super professional outlet. And then there's Pete Hines. <laughs> and it's like he's he's completely the opposite to the rest of the studio. It's insane that he's still there. Tom Cruise is Todd's height. Yeah, oh. he, should, he did. I hope he mentions <laughs> the height thing <laughs> as the studio's leading man since the early noughties. Right, there's sure that, that's that's a that's a phrase we can use <laughs> he was he was the project lead on red guard which was God in the 90s fucking like he did like like it fucking every every account of todd howard would say that he took over in the late 90s what are you talking about the noughties <laughs> plus it's the aughts anyways <laughs> he has become a semi-mythical figure to gamers who hang off his every word mm, todd bros we're so back I hang off his every word, but for different reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hang off his every word because, like, every other sentence he says you could use in a video. Yeah, it's he's just a quote machine. Now, fi now 52 years old, the only real sign of him being flesh and blown are some faint bags under his sea blue eyes. The slightest imperfection to show that he is under the warlock spell and that he will begin to age on August 31st at... 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> <laughs> He's reserved, but not at all good. shy, talkative, but never all that forthcoming, especially about his life outside of games. And, like Christ, I mean, like Cruz, he is innately, <laughs> intensely curious about the creative process. <laughs> This is this is an article, all right. Whoever said whoever said that this article was written erotically, like <laughs> you called it, man. This is this article is insane. I'm glad I archived this. <laughs> In a 2005 behind-the-scenes documentary on the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, he's seen continually questioning designers and artists to satisfy his own wonderings. What? 
isn't that his job? Yeah, isn't that his job? Like, he's their boss? <laughs> that what is? <laughs> that curiosity. We've really, we've really gone off the deep end here. This is the kind of person that gets a Todd Howard interview, but I can't. Like, yeah. this is the world we live in. That curiosity <laughs> pushed him to take art classes alongside his business degree at the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. Despite the business major, he had always wanted to make games. He remembers giving an impassioned speech to his parents about how CD-ROM was going to change the way people view electronic entertainment. So okay, he, I, gotta, I gotta ask, uh, what is this article titled? Inside Starfield, how Bethesda's NASA Punk Epic became... Okay. The biggest Xbox game in a decade. Okay, so why are we going into this whole thing about Todd Howard's history and <laughs> things like that? How is this? Because this he is wants the to part where my, where, my, where my high school uh, English teacher would be underlining it and writing in the margins, how is this relevant? No, it's just What's the word the point? relevant, question mark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you guys, like... Get in there. Please. So he learned to program and understand code. He even did st the sound for 1996's The Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. Um, this part's kind of not true. As I understand, he was in an IT position and asked like constantly for uh, things that he could work on with Daggerfall. But he's, he wasn't the fucking Daggerfall sound director. We really don't know. Like One of the things I would ask Todd is, what's something that's in Daggerfall that has your signature on it? What's something that Daggerfall fans can thank you for? I understand just enough of every part, he says, of game development. Everybody else is better at it, but I can at least ask the right questions. It has made him a supremely successful director. It's almost like that's what a fucking director's job is. <laughs> His 2017 induction into the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame put him in the Pantheon alongside the likes of Super Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto and Metal Gear Solid auteur Hideo Kojima. Todd's clarity about mining universal fantasy in the most ambitious yet accessible way possible is a gift. Todd's clarity about mining universal fantasy in the most ambitious yet accessible way possible is a gift. Harvey Smith, creator of the critically acclaimed Dishonored Games, tells me. Hmm. I'd love to know is the context Bethesda, of that Harvey Smith quote. Yeah. <laughs> is Bethesda ambitious? I don't think they are ambitious. Starfield's not a particular doesn't strike me as a particularly ambitious game. If anything, oh, it's no. it seems wholly, wholly uh terrified to actually strike out and do new things beyond what it has to. Oh no. The bear died. Oh no, not the bear. How did it die? Mercurio, did you sh electrocute the bear to death? I'm sorry, bro. Your 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 pet bear just died. Fuck. Howard has been looking up at the stars since he was a kid. His older brother was born on the 20th of July, 1969, the day Apollo 11 landed on the moon, and it and his brother grandfather lived close to Cape Canaveral when he was growing up. It was always this kind it was always kind of unbelievable to me that mankind has done this he says of space exploration the idea that we're still searching still finding next he's bouncing onto the formation of the universe whether or not we're alone quote impos implausible unquote how he hopes we discover alien life but before he Todd, dies and a, if Todd, the world is a computer simulation but todd why aren't there aliens in starfield then Listen, spoilers. <laughs> we don't it's know. It's biggest design yet. flaw, death. Nowadays, he wears Omega Speedmaster, colloquially known as the Moonwatch after Neil Armstrong took one giant leap while wearing one. It was a gift from Howard's wife and high school sweetheart Kim after he made the Hall of Fame. She knew he'd never buy it for himself. His love of a watch that's tied intrinsically to space even inspired Starfield's Constellation watch. The time... Oh my fucking god. Wait, 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 wait. There's wait. layers... Oh god, there's layers wait, wait, to the wait. fucking watch? Wait, 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 wait. Please repeat that. <laughs> Hang on, I need to actually put this in my notes. 
<laughs> because the, I didn't know that the watch the the watch goes the, deep. The watch has lore. <laughs> All right. Let me grab the link for this. Nowadays, he wears an Omega Speedmaster, colloquially colloquially known as the Moon Watch, after Neil Armstrong took one giant leap while wearing one. It was a gift from Howard's wife and high school sweetheart Kim after he made the Hall of Fame. She knew he'd never buy it for himself. His love of a watch that's tied intrinsically to space even inspired Starfield's <clears throat> Constellation Watch, the timepiece you receive upon joining the game's central group of explorers. So, that is interesting. Man, so even the watch is an original. <laughs> no, of course not. I, well, okay, so I have, in my, I have in my script flat out saying that um, the watch was created specifically to be merchandised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it turns out it, it's it, because it was merchandise. Man. They, yeah, they didn't have the idea, like, we could do, like, smart... We could do... Well, I mean, a, a smart watch isn't... An, a, fundamentally Man, that, interesting idea but like i like the idea that, that that's the reason why we're the only person in the game to have one and that it's not a, like a common thing yeah, yeah yeah is that why like they're not using implants like they're, they're using smartwatch technology just because no it's not even they're using smartwatch technology because if everybody had smartwatches you'd get one at the start of the game it's literally yeah. only constellation that decided that they were useful it's it's a really stupid version of the Pip Boy. At least the Pip Boy made sense because that not everybody uses them because they were like a limited thing. But like this is a setting where literally everybody would have smart these smart watches. Nah, it's you know it's old fashioned. Nobody really yeah, it's not really unfashionable right now. Mercurio, please. Divine smile on your face. I, you know, huh? Go. Fuck off, please. All right, thank you. Fascinating. <laughs> well, this, uh, uh, all right. So, so this article wasn't a complete waste. We got the deep lore on the on the smartwatch. As for actually going to space himself, I've been offered in the past. He reveals semi-casually. I think it would be amazing, but maybe when I'm older. Angela Browder can't contemplate any of it. Oh, I'm scared Ooh. shitless of space, she says. I don't understand why people want to go to space. Okay. She, she's just in there, I guess. <laughs> Codename Genesis, jointly inspired by the... Yes. <laughs> Codenamed Genesis, jointly inspired by the Bible and Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan... Starfield formally came to life a decade ago. Oh my fucking god, dude. <sighs> Add it to the list. Alright, so 25, 10, 8, 4. Starfield was originally codenamed Genesis. <laughs> after the Bible and Star Trek The Wrath of Khan. This is well, one you of know, those you got, Bible you got reference M guys. There. Listen, you guys thought it was crazy when I said there was biblical inspiration in Oblivion. <laughs> no, you like got there's M legitimately. There, you know, it's he he grew up a good Catholic boy. Just giving me ammunition. Just giving me stuff that I can work with. I love it. <laughs> we legitimately codenamed it after the Bible. Clever. I'm pretty sure the Genesis device also got its name from the Bible. Listen. <laughs> you think they've actually watched Wrath of Khan? They just know that it's nerd cred. Starfield formally came to life a decade ago. 2023 minus 10 equals... Yeah, that's that's 2018. Hmm. Ah. I love when math comes again. <laughs> 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 Howard loved the name so much that he trademarked it before anyone else could. It was 2013, two years before finishing development on Fallout 4, and he had an answer to... And he had to answer the big question mark of what the studio would commit centuries of manpower to make... 
What the studio would commit centuries of manpower to make next. Listen, we're not going to do we're not going to do the 10th planet. All right. It, it's got to be Starfield. I just love. No, I, I love the, the mental image of them working game developers for centuries to make video games. <laughs> Ooh, Grand Soul Champ. Smartwatch? Sounds like a pip boy. A bad omen for a game built on the Fallout 4 76 engine. I'm very wary of it. Oh, you should be... No, no, no. It's it's worse than that. We already had Eurogamer saying, <laughs> after they saw the thing at Gamescom, that it's literally Fallout 4. This is their byline to their to their head to their article yesterday was that it's fallout 4 in space yeah it's uh, confirmed which is (laughs) just the most dreadful of i think kratosis had a thing like (laughs) yeah thing like me lining up to uh review starfield after hearing that it's fallout 4 in space and it's just a guy carrying an axe (laughs) which like um i actually saw i sat through all of the parts that are out now for his fallout 4 thing and he does a pretty good job Uh, actually, yeah, let's go. I knew a lot please, of please. a lot of the story stuff. He really kind of hammered a lot of the gameplay stuff. I hope I can navigate Starfield's uh, <laughs> interface, their skills interface, better than I can navigate. Uh, well, of course, Skyrim's. you will be using your Constellation controller, correct? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot while, about while you that play in thing. the in the Starfield Temper Temperpedic Battle Station. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> It's a, it, it, what it sounds like. It's a battle station to play Starfield in. Right. That's totally. I, I didn't realize that's what I need. That's what's been missing in my life. This whole well, time. yeah, and you, you're going to need the uh, Starfield Elgato microphone. Wait, 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 wait. Isn't there a Starfield? Yeah, there's a Starfield chair as well. Is, uh, yeah, no, Bethesda, there's a Starfield Bethesda, gaming chair what am I, and a Starfield. How am I supposed like, to play Starfield from my gaming chair, from my Starfield gaming chair, if I'm in my Starfield Tempur-Pedic? <laughs> what the fuck is a Starfield Tempur-Pedic mattress? Oh, okay, hold on, I'm I'm looking need, this okay, up. Okay, yeah, you do. I'm gonna send you the video. And uh, oh, there's a video. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I opened my stream with it. I should have sent it to you before. Um. But I will send you the video of the Starfield Tempur-Pedic mattress. Let me, hey, yeah, it's this one. Okay, hold on. In the vast it's like a comedically the edited together too, too because it's unborn. it's hilarious how they introduce it. Okay, hold on. Uh, should I put this? How can I even put this on stream? Uh, maybe it's on YouTube download. and we can like load it on the watch together. Yeah, yeah. Nope, doesn't look like it. I don't. No, I don't even know how um, we have I, this. Do I have a scene for? I don't have a scene for VLC. Do I? I'm just gonna watch this and see yeah. if it's even worth me putting. Up yeah, on just just watch for... it. Like if you if you're interested, I'm sure that you will find out about it chat because uh there's no point in slowing things down um a galaxy howard loved the name so much that he trademarked it before anyone else could it was 2013 two years before finishing development on fallout 4 and he had to answer the big question mark of what the studio would commit centuries of manpower to make next we realized if we didn't make starfield the next thing we'd probably never do it what is this and perfected <laughs> Starfield so good. We're going you're going to need a Starfield. Oh my god. For generations. No, this isn't real. <laughs> no, it's at Gamescom. They have a display model at Gamescom of it. When one adventure ends. This is a Oh my god, capitalism has gone too far, guys. Hang on, it's on my stream if you want to look. What in God's name is this thing? Hold on, hold on. I, I can at least like screenshot it. Yeah, to show your, put to it. Show your chat. This yeah. is a real thing. This is not like, you might think that this is a shitty blender render that they did, but there are pictures of people... <laughs> 
at Gamescom showing that this thing is real. Okay, hold on. Uh, all right, where'd that screenshot go? Windows, please. It's like a parody, exactly. The game has taken eight years. Very few studios other than Rockstar, whose Red Dead Redemption 2 was in development for an identical period, get so much time to figure things out. Let, no, let's be honest. They, they wrote is this they only thing? got like okay, hold on. three years to... to figure it out. And then like they had like a long pre-production while most of the team was working on Fallout 76. And then they just had a lengthy period of them fixing the bugs. Like, I don't buy for a second that they've mean meaningfully added to the quests in like at least 18 months. I, I I got the chair on my screen. Yeah. What what is this? <laughs> Am I supposed to be able to sleep in this? Well, yeah. You can you can recline it and sleep, so that while while the settlement is slowly ticking up your research bar progress, <laughs> and mining resources. While you. you're waiting for the for the fiftieth loading. Yeah. Screen. While you're going through the loading screens, because you can afford a Tempur-Pedic mattress, but not an actual. I just in, in I just would never, as a game developer, I would never want my brand being associated. Like, even though Tempur-Pedic, you know, it's a reputable company and stuff, I'm not throwing shade on it, but I would not want my product to be associated with a product for sleeping, with a brand for sleeping. That just, that just isn't the energy that I want. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought we could find the answers faster, Howard admits, explaining that Starfield only clicked into feeling fun to play as late as last year. Oh, my God. Whoa. Hold on. What? Not big enough. Yeah, th this thing also doesn't look very big for your um, average Bethesda player. Mm, true. It doesn't look like it'd be big enough for me. I thought we would find the answer. Well, okay, the monitor that's oh, in there. Does. I don't know if the if, is the size of the monitor throwing you off. It's like a ultra wide. Okay, it's, okay. it's not a sixteen by nine monitor. Well, I'm definitely not fitting my uh, my waifu body pillows but on that listen, thing. Let me chat, tell you. I'm gonna say it again. I thought we would find the answers faster. Howard admits, explaining that Starfield only clicked into feeling fun as late to play as late as last year. That's um, what um, uh, <laughs> one public uh, delay and several private ones prolonged things further. It's the game flow, he says. We whittle away remember, all these lumps of clay and make them better, but there's a magic. Remember what I was just saying about that leak from the former former employee that was saying that like uh ship ship to ship combat felt bad and stuff mm -hmm. and no, I can totally Man. buy it because it's such a disjointed set of ideas. Yeah. That that's probably one of the main reasons they delayed it beyond it being buggy was that it it just wasn't yeah, a good just, game. So like you yeah. didn't even have the Fallout 4 defense that some of their fans strutted out of like, but guys, come on, the game plays at least good. It's not, but <laughs> like the game plays at least good, guys. Um with like if they had just dropped it and it had been a bad game and broken, yeah, that would have been death. Oof, this is, Should uh, be fun for a year, right, Todd? Right? Well, it's like a lot of game studios figure out like that that fun gameplay formula first thing, like very first thing, and then like they build iteratively on top of that. So the notion that like so much of it was uh, like for so long they had been playtesting just a fu unfun game that is hilarious. <laughs> And then you got an Anzur running around asking everybody what the game means. And it's like, bro, we can't even get the game to feel fun yet. But I like the metaphor of them whittling away at lumps of clay because it's absolutely true. Remember, <laughs> game... The NPCs? But no, listen. Well, yeah, it's that too. But <laughs> but this the game development is a subtractive process. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything they do is always subtracting from the formula. It's never there's this missing piece to it. We got to add something to bridge it. It's always we got to cut down on what's not working. Yeah, we got to focus, focus like like what uh like what's just happened to Bioware recently uh, today. They laid off fifty people. They got to mm -hmm. focus, you know, agile, redefine success, speed. <laughs> Man, I need a. Uh... 
I need fire bolts. Design director Emil Pagliarulo likens pre-production to the land of milk and honey. I can hear it in his voice. <laughs> Compared to the harsh reality of making a game where entire new technologies had to be coded and designed from nothing. Oh, but they, they, they didn't start from nothing. Building iterations on something that isn't fun until it is fun, pretty bizarre. Well, it also means that a significant chunk of the game's content will have been developed in a state where the game wasn't fun, meaning that the storytelling can't synergize with the mechanics if they were still ironing them out. Which isn't going to be a surprise, of course, but... The team used real positional data from the Milky Way to structure the game's settled system. One day, Howard found a designer hanging balls from the ceiling of his office like a model galaxy. The massive world you explore has more dialogue than Skyrim and Fallout 4 combined. God, it's as, dis it's as disjointed and schizophrenic as Starfield. And it's complex interlocking web of art and new tech. A major challenge for the team was how to generate an entire explorable planet. I mean, it was years before the game took any tangible shape. <clears throat> when you're making a lot of content, well, that's what vertical slices are for. Like you yeah. fake, you fake the planet and like the, the process and you make like this little area that you play through and test and make fun. Yeah, like, you don't vertical slices. You don't have and, to wait uh, until the planet gray tech boxes. Is done. Yeah. And considering they already, you know, they're just using the same engine from Fallout 4. It's, you you mm -hmm. can even use assets from Fallout 4 and stuff to do the work for it. All right, I think we've run through a couple times the, set, the Starfield soundtrack that's out. There's not there's not enough to carry the stream. <laughs> Sorry, guys, Don't we're going to have to listen to something it, it, better. Next week, next week, we're going to have 79 tracks. Fallout 76 OST. We're not listening to Country Roads, though. How do I get in there? There's loot in there. How do I get in there? Is this the sponsored cock and ball torture? I mean, <laughs> you, you've seen what they've hinted at in the trailers, right? When you're making a lot of content and you can't see the work on the screen, it's really hard, Toward says. He summarizes imagining a universe from nothing down to the mundane. We had to concept art the trash cans. <laughs> We had to concept wait, wait, wait. art the trash cans. Well, you know, we really want to get the aesthetic. <laughs> They're boxes. Down and everything. They're fucking cylinders. They're trash cans. Isn't this the mule dungeon? Yeah, it is. Oh, it's the lever right there. Another a great metaphor for the game: concept arting trash cans. <laughs> Starfield is science fiction at its most romantic. Please don't say that. <laughs> Please don't say that. There's so many there's so many sci-fi connotations to the word romance. Like you don't want to go full romance with science fiction. You don't want to know how bad how bad that rabbit hole goes. The warmth of golden age 19 No! No! The warmth of golden age 1960s space aspirations. Please. Please. Bethesda, there are other time periods. Also, this is really loud. Big elf. Damn, this dude's just like giving me lip for being an elf. And the familiar like my employee. Oh, I love it. And the familiar feel of a BGS game in its veins. Ah, yes. Uh, there. Did you see right. the post on Reddit that was posted in the Starfield channel? That was um, is does any is anybody else only playing this game because it's a Bethesda game? I have no interest in, <laughs> in science fiction games. However, because it's a Bethesda game, I'm interested in... Oh. I'm, I'm, I need to... Hang on. Short diversion here. Let's see if I can pull this up. Oh, man. Is Starfield going to be like this, guys? You got, you got the guard trying to give me one quest. You got the courier giving me another quest. You have this quest over here with the Alec Hears. And well, no, of course, there's, there's going to be one quest per planet. So you're not going to be harassed too much. Don't get too far ahead. Huh. Looks like I don't have it saved in an easy format to find. Don't leave the 
pay good money for information. Is your Don Guard, what do you mean? A woman. She is likely not... Are... Art director East Van Peely coined the term NASA punk for its visual language. All clunk and clutter. So we have somebody to blame for the NASA punk thing for the next ten years. I don't claim to be the best blacksmith in white run. Lorland <laughs> Greymane's got that on me. Oh, yeah, East Van Peely, who, the, who's the guy that looks like he absolutely doesn't want to be there when they're shilling the Starfield watch for two and a half minutes. Alright. Oh, wait, I gotta disenchant a bunch of shit first. <clears throat> All clunk and clutter. That's that's NASA punk. Is it NASA punk? You know NASA. They're famous for all clunk and clutter. They love just sh shoving coffee mugs on the side of the rocket. Yeah, it's projectiles. So when you go into space and you're pulling like hard G's and stuff, that shit can just fly all over the place. Mm -hmm. All clunk and clutter. Ain't nothing that defines the the aesthetic of the space shuttle and all that than. Clunk and clutter. <laughs> it's no fun getting... Will Shin's favorite part is the end. That, that is something that will come up. Apparently this article is going to confirm New Game Plus. What? Yeah, New Game Plus. What's, what's so wrong with that? Well, let's not, let's not jump ahead here. Let's continue. There aren't there aren't holograms everywhere. It's got buttons. They're tactile. You want to press them, he says, squishing the air with his thumb. Don't think of it as futuristic. Think of it as a period piece. These are things that happened. Despite setting the game 300 years in the future, he didn't want it to feel like humanity had changed its nature. People are still people. They're still messy. They still glue coffee cups to the outside of the space shuttle. This game is going to be like the Challenger. Listen, people died on that rocket. <laughs> the game's physical form is contrasted by its existential spirit. Pagliarulo. Man, you don't want to say existential spirit and Pagliarulo that close. <laughs> Who's responsible for overseeing all the writing and quest design is a raised Catholic Saudi from Boston. <clears throat> oh my god. Man, they're just putting, putting that down. Well, well, you know, if they if they gave uh, if they gave the spiel about Todd Howard, it's only fitting that they go into yeah, of course, go into Emil's back. I hope they hit on him too. <laughs> I swear to this is Emil. You know, Emil, Emil has been Emil's yeah. Emil's been hitting the gym though. You know, yeah. he's, he's looking pretty fit. Oh, wait, I think Hang I, got on, I need worker to, tusk. You sold up. I need to pull up a clip of Emil talking for a second. Come on, Emil, say Is something. That Let me show you a thing or two about okay, okay. I swear to God, I've never reflected so much on making a game, he says. He's not been practicing religiously for a long time, but Starfield still pushed, pulled from him, atheist to agnostic and back again throughout the development process. Is there anything out there but blackness? We're tackling some, like, uh, pretty big themes that... Uh, like your great American novel, your average shooter probably doesn't get into, he says. It's really affected me personally. It sounds like it. <laughs> oh my god. So fucking Emil Pagliarulo had a spiritual crisis while making Starfield. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to love... Man, you said that Starfield's not going to get controversial I said I hope it doesn't your quest oh, wow. begins like in every BGS game with a choice who are you an explorer charting distant worlds maybe perhaps a space scoundrel graying the line between right and wrong sorry sorry um wrong actually hang on hang on here I don't claim to be the 81. Ugh. Let me pull up the horse here for a second. From Yorland Greymane's got that on me. Man's spiel is legendary. All I ask is a fair trade.
This is how Starfield starts. Starts with... No, I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to play it. I'm not that foolish. <laughs> starts with... Can we... There we go. Fade from black. People walk on screen. You have a shitty mining job. We are. This is not spoilers, by the way. They, they said all of this. Um, that's how Starfield starts. It doesn't start with asking you who you are as a character or any of that. It starts with... Um, Uh, what's the fucking quote at the start of Skyrim? Hey, you. You're finally awake. Yeah. it's kind of how it starts. Uh, gonna... From how you look to the skill traits and backstory perks you choose, like having parents on a distant world or a parasocial superfan following you around, Starfield delivers BGS's most immersive role-playing game. Role-playing since... They specify 2006 is Oblivion. Wrong! Man, I can't believe I just made like 60 iron daggers. I only went up like five smithing levels. Uh. <laughs> you are right there. It's, it's, <laughs> it's hurting. <laughs> Because, because <laughs> the, the, you know what hurts about this is that I've seen the game. Like, I, I, I've i seen the game. Oh, but you haven't played it yet. You can't assume it's bad. Listen, I've seen the game. I've seen how it starts. I, I know this is bullshit. But they're still passing this off as though people haven't seen the opening. Like, so Starfield, when you pick your traits... By the way, it has a custom class thing. Sorry, they're not classes, they're backgrounds. They serve the same role as classes, but they're not classes, okay? It's a classless game, they're not classes, yeah. but they serve the same role. There's a custom class option, so you get to pick your own traits, but I guess you lose out on the uh, dialogue options. But do you know what you get? Like, y you've kind of seen some of the traits, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know that the, all the first level traits are like, you do something, you do X like 10% better. Yeah, like it's utterly inconsequential. When business with you. It gives you the flexibility and options to carve out a unique identity. And even adds a unique and exciting twist on New Game Plus to incentivize continued and repeated play. Man, I can tell some people in this chat have not watched my Skyrim videos. I do know about Dwarven Bows <laughs> and Transmute. That was the joke. Plus, it's a stream. Having yeah, the stream just devolve, not, devolve into I'm, optimal yeah. optimal crafting loop on Skyrim. We're gonna, we're gonna go for... What are we at right now? An hour and a half? I'm only planning on going for like five hours today and once i'm done i'm not playing this character for again so i'm not really trying to play like super optimally i just wanted to dump that shit out of my inventory mo mostly why is this oh, why is this me. article the way that we're hearing about new game plus okay yeah you gotta you gotta hit me with that what's what's going on what new game plus in a bethesda game no we're just moving on there's that's there's that's, an, there no there's a unique and exciting twist on new game plus we're moving on wait 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 no there's no further details we're moving <laughs> on <laughs> but this is th this is more interesting to me than like the fucking ship combat and everything mm -hmm. new game plus in a Bethesda game how explain please no dude I just told you there's no more information about it. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to see here. There's nothing special about New Game Plus. We're just saying they have it. It's a casual thing. The team did initially record player character dialogue. Like, oh my god, the back to back. The team did initially record player character dialogue like in Fallout 4, but eventually stripped it out. Having a preset voice and intonation took too much from role playing whoever you want to be. Oh. When? They had. When? The, I love this article. When? They had this player is character voice wait, 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 wait. acting is, why would they admit this, that this is this is still the gq yeah article oh my god this thing's paying dividends right now hold on when when when, when did when they did, when did when were they doing this 
Because but yeah, they started out they, Starfield with the player character having a voice. and Because it wasn't even like a year after Fallout 4 where Todd Howard was coming out being like, yeah. Well, no, um, that's what that's what happened. So um, Emil does his like talks from story like, I don't know, nine months after Fallout 4 comes out. And at that mm. point, he's still on board with like the because he says in that the in voice that protagonist thing, we, stuff. we knew that we had to have a, a voice protagonist doesn't clarify why but that's what he says in there and like <laughs> here's what i'll say about their iterative process their development process is such that like they start pre-production before they can even get input from the fans on the on the on the game that they just released and so yeah, i can was, totally believe that was that confirmed they, that they told that, they that was went basically confirmed in the they went in Alex in the Lex yeah. freeman interview right he was saying yeah they did they have a rolling development process which is not that uncommon but like they don't have a window where they receive feedback and so for bethesda to hear anything that like their players don't want them to do you have to be really loud the player voice actor thing was really loud so eventually i guess like but they were like they must have been like a year into starfield before like they decided like it, this isn't worth it yeah <laughs> How would you like how would wow. why would you ever admit? Because like that's such a Wow. That's such a put down on Fallout 4. Like, yeah, we decided we couldn't make it work. Wow. I can't believe that they were actually going into fall into Starfield. I know with I, that X. I feel like because Emil even says that like it was such a headache for them during development. You would think that like Yeah. You would think that like mid Fallout 4 development, they'd be like this was an interesting Let's experiment. Never do this We're never doing it again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's actually insane to me that they wanted to try and pull it off. Why do you think Emil has Dang. soared above his peers compared to his other past BGS names like Rolston, Coleman, or current Shin, Ellis, and Daniels? Uh, he's been there a long time, and he is credited as like the the brilliant mind behind Fallout Three. And because so many people are in denial about Fallout Three, it kind of holds his reputation up. I know he's played Fallout 3 in a really long time. You know, it's dated. It's difficult to get running and everything. It's mm -hmm. it's too hard. So I'm just yeah, that's such a it, it that's a good such, such a fascinating bit. It's like back to back, no clarification <laughs> on um like no clear like they say crazy things and then there's no clarification like. I, I want to know about New Game Plus. I want to know about yeah. this whole Star. We're going to have Starfield player character dialogue. Who did they? They Because that means they had. No, they probably did it as text to speech. So I like to imagine that they, they actually like casted, auditioned and casted somebody to be the player voice actors for Starfield and like them getting the news that their role's been cut. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's wild. All right, let me sit up here. Pagliarulo puts my imagination to shame by describing the last three distinctly different characters he rolled, each with their own self-imagined backstories and compelling headcanon to inform his playstyle. The latest he named the Red Baroness. I confess I named my character Sam. Man, so he's like, he's hitting on Emil, like, in the mind. Like, he loved Todd Howard's body, but Emil, you go for the mind. <laughs> After an atmospheric introductory mission, which sets off the game's main quest to investigate mysterious artifacts across this galaxy. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, I'm, I'm just going to put this out there. The main quest literally starts with you working for the main quest faction. Like, there, there's no holds barred. You start minute zero working for Constellation. You don't have a choice. You don't get to run off and do your own thing. You're in the main quest as soon as you start Starfield. It's like I'll, Starfield was meant was made for wanderers. It lands in terms of like the the Why main narrative not? intruding on your ability to role play whoever you want to be. It lands somewhere between uh, Oblivion and Fallout Three. I don't see a problem here. I'm breaking, breaking my NDA to bring the news to the people because they need to know. 
You get your first spaceship, the Frontier, and meet your first companion, the robot Vasco, who calls me Captain Sam. I could go anywhere, but I headed for the sprawling city of New Atlantis. Yeah, you could go anywhere, but you followed the main quest path. Huh, weird. Weird mm -hmm. how that fucking works. <laughs> weird how you, you say that I could go anywhere. I could do anything. But for some reason, for some reason, I decided to do the main quest. For some reason, I went to Wayne and Priory. <laughs> It's not five hour Helgen. It is actually short. And there is a part of the tutorial where you get to space and it gives you the ship tutorial and it says um, power up all your systems if you want to skip the ship tutorial. So it's got that going. For oh, you. you can skip, oh, the, all right. skip one of the tutorials. All right. All right. That's 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 improvement. That's better. That's more consideration than most uh, modern games give. Yeah. Listen, if if they keep the introduction, ideally, I want it below like 30 minutes. Well, ideally, I want it to be like, you know, 20 seconds. But if they keep it below like 30, 40 minutes, I'll give them a lot of credit. I Can I give them credit? Here's the problem. And I lay this out in my script. Starfield's introduction has more objectives than all of their past games combined in terms of what it needs to set up for the player character, right? Because you've got the hook into the main quest. It has to give you the Amulet of Kings. It has to give you the UI elements. Um, well, fuck, hang on. I wrote down what all they were. Um, objective one, put the player in the world. Objective two, give them the main quest item. Objective three, give them the UI element. But then objective four is that Starfield's intro, unlike all the others, has to give you a spaceship. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it. It doesn't make any fucking sense why you get a spaceship. Because it's trying to still fit within that 30 minute time window. Now there's ways that they could do it where it's less, less time and it makes sense how you get a ship, but the way that they want to set up you getting, you getting all of these things, they should have taken like 45 minutes because it's, it's, it's super rushed and loose and like how it explains why you get given a fucking spaceship. <laughs> it, it, Barrett just steps off the ship and goes, no, you need to go to Constellation. Take my ship. I can't come with you. Like, there's no reason given why he really can't, like, just take you with him on his ship. He just gives you his ship and calls it a day. That 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 was the extent of their creativity with how they were going to start Starfield. I don't have time to explain how I don't have time to explain. Mm. All right, what am I doing here? Always go more damage. Please keep your weapons sheathed in the yard for protection. Go to the city of New Atlantis on the planet Jemison in the Alpha Centauri system. As the frontier blasts off into orbit for the first time, its afterburners pop like an intergalactic jaguar. Audio director Mark Lampert steered well clear of the gl glowing purple sparkles of cleaner sci-fi to give the game sound the same physical heft as its sights. Take, for example, a laser weapon. What does it really do, he asks. It produces a white-hot beam that's going to superheat the air. It's going to be a clap of thunder that hits you in the chest. The trick, he says, is to make that feel good. Then you can sprinkle some sci-fi on top. Mark Lampert's always really bad at explaining how he does his job. <clears throat> and this doesn't seem relevant, but anyways. looking like This, this is a really ham-fisted way to shove this part in here. Looking around the inside of the ship, Howard gets me to go into photo mode. Zoom in on that a second, he asks, pointing at one of the panels on the walls, because this is where East Van is a fucking genius. Every knob, button, and screen has minuscule handcrafted Jesus. icons and scripture. Howard is standing up now, arms outstretched in front of me. That is mental. Sounds like the game is just going to be a visual mess. In what fucked up part of the jungle do jaguars pop? He's talking about the car, but I get your joke. I see that same intricacy everywhere. New Atlantis is the densest city the studio has ever created. Hmm. It's not the largest. It's the densest. Okay. Okay. With bustling streets, shiny skyscrapers, and distant areas both above and below ground. 
I see barely any of it. <laughs> a real city isn't just designed and built. It evolves over time. Mm, true. You have like a, cent a centralized commercial core that is only zoned to be commercial with par with parking <laughs> minimums. And then you have like a set of like urban sprawl that spreads out a way of single family housing. That's that's the natural way that cities are built. It's not just a singular designer's vision because then it's not going to feel real. It's going to feel like a theme park. Ooh, East Van Peely <laughs> promising that New Atlantis isn't going to feel like a theme park. <laughs> All right, that's going to the notes. All right. Let's see, what should we do? I guess I'm going to go back up here and see if anybody new showed up. I feel like I should be rushing some Creation Club items. What should I go for? Heavy, a set of heavy armor would be nice. Why are you doing creation club stuff? I'm just trying to make my character powerful. Mm. The storm cloaks heavy. of the Reach have suffered heavy losses. Is there a way to see like the map of uh, no, the factions? I wish. I wish. It's interesting that like you don't that you know that this goes on. But yeah, but you don't have like any. Uh, listen, it's a mod. Yeah, it was. It, it was mostly a proof of concept too. It's not even like a real. It's in the real upper. Polished. It's in the upper district of the city that you meet Constellation, the game's Victorian-esque space explorer ex organization, and the main propellers of the central story. Ugh. Outside their base, the Lodge, essentially an early 1920s era Soho. Ha oh my God! Stop. <laughs> There's a whole raft of opportunities. <laughs> I get distracted by a museum where I catch up on three centuries of human history. I'm not going to read it. All the this, this stuff they wrote about the history. Within 45 minutes, I have 12 new quests. Within 45 minutes, I have 12 new quests leading me off world. One has me smuggling contraband from the mining colony of Sidonia on Mars to gain the trust of the deadly Crimson Fleet. Smuggling is an entire subsection of the game, and Howard and Paglia Rula are particularly excited about the Donny Brasco vibe of that quest line. Oh my god, there it is. There again. it is again. Now I have to actually note down because it appears multiple times. <laughs> Donny Brasco. Now you actually have to watch the movie. Of the Crimson Cringe quest line. There's a there's a movie I didn't expect to, to, to have his home pay dividends on like <laughs> ten years after I watched it. The movie and the book. I read the book too. I don't remember. That why sounds I read awfully the book. spammy. It it does indeed seem a bit <laughs> awkward that like he's sitting with Todd Howard just running around New Atlantis being given quests. Like so in forty five minutes he picked up twelve quests. That means he picks he's picking up a quest like every three and a half minutes. Uh, people uh people really sniff out your uh your protagonist mm. uh status, so you have a ship? My god. It's super rare that people have ships in this setting. <laughs> that gives you exclusive <laughs> access to contracts I have. No, I'm sure New Atlant I'm sure New Atlantis is structured in a way to like you show up there and then you just get given quests all over to see content everywhere. I'm sure that's a very intentional thing. I used to have a ship, you know, but it's like something, something. It's like how that valley in Skyrim drags you to Whiterun, basically. <laughs> Another sends me to hunt space pirates in low gravity on the frozen plateaus of Europa. As I boost to huge heights using my rocket backpack, the combat has the responsive freneticism of something like... The combat has the responsive freneticism of something like Destiny rather than Fallout. Ooh. Ooh. Which version of Destiny are we talking about? He just says... New Destiny or Old Destiny? <laughs> he, do he doesn't specify which Destiny it is, but... Uh, either way, that's... That's some high praise. I'm gonna... 
Frenetic is certainly one way to describe that. destiny. All the, I'm going to hold you to that, guys. All the locations and cultures, from the military order of New Atlantis all the way to the cyberpunk underworld of the city of Neon. Even he picked that up. Offer, <laughs> to broadest, offer the broadest palette that Bethesda Game Studio has ever painted. It took a long time to nail the variety of distinct flavors and storylines, inspired by all corners of the sci-fi genre, from Battlestar Galactica to Star Wars, and even Deadwood in Space. Oof. We're close. Deadwood. We're close. Jesus. Jesus, just keep giving me more logos to add to the freaking thing. And once again, there's another thing I didn't expect would pay dividends 10 years after I watched it. Battlestar Galactica, Star Wars, Deadwood in space. Man. Man, that's that's a that's definitely a quote that's going to be uh, that's going to be investigated when we go to Planet Red Dead, and it's like the most stereotypical cowboy stuff. We have this ability to affect a player on both an emotional oh, and turn up the difficulty. Hang on, reset, reset. Hang on, I gotta. All right, we're up to master now. Level 12, we're up to master. Okay. We have this ability to affect a player on like a, a, a both an emotional and like in an intellectual level. And you're constantly deciding on like which one to do. Pagliarulo says uh, you, you like go down too far to the emotional path Oops. and it can get cringy. You go too far into the intellectual and it becomes too uh, like pointy headed. Damn it. Did you catch I was hoping I'd be able to return Meridia's beacon. Did I you catch what uh up. what Emil said? No, I got distracted because I accidentally picked up uh, Meridia's beacon. We have this ability to affect a player on both an emotional and intellectual level. And you're constantly deciding which one to do. Pagliarulo says. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm being, you know what? Very fitting that he's talking about that while I'm listening to Meridia right now. <laughs> because I am both intellectually, because I am confused how she's talking to me, where this voice suddenly came from. And I am, I, I feel attacked. This, this Daedra is just ordering me around right now. It's, no, I, I get it. It checks out. Go too far down the emotional path and it can get cringy. <laughs> Go too far into the intellectual and it becomes too pointy headed. I wish I had a quote of a clip of Emil saying that, <laughs> saying the word cringy. <laughs> Emil saying they am emotionally and intellectually. Does he say the word engage? No, he says the word affect. Player. Too much emotion, it gets cringy. Like Emil has cringe. ever done emotional. Listen, don't you, don't you? Weren't you affected when your wife was shot after you knew her for ten minutes? Ooh, let's get away from that. The biggest mutation in the studio's DNA is a new way of exploring. Because of the nature of spreading a universe across dozens of planets, exploration is both broader and more transient than the open worlds of previous BGS games. Howard admits he's not sure whether everyone will like the change in rhythm. It's not the same as dropping you in the world like Skyrim, he says. You wander totally differently. But it's in those moments of wandering where the game can be the most empty and the most beautiful. <laughs> okay. All of the tech and art comes to fruition when I land on a distant world and step out of my ship. I think that moment works almost every time, Howard says, as a distant gas giant rises above the horizon. Every planet and moon in the game has its own time, orbiting their stars independently. When you're looking over the landscape and the star is setting, that's all somewhat simulated. In this game, it just happens. Yeah, so basically... You know, it's okay. it's going to be kind of kind of disjointed. It's not like Skyrim where you walk to one end to the other and then another another corner and another corner. It's going to be more like uh, 
you know, you wait in line at Disney and then you get in because you have the fast pass and you, you land on a planet and you do some activities and then you, you know, you go back to the general theme park and uh, that that's your that's your flavor. It just works. It just happens. Yeah, it's a good Todd Howard aphorism. It just happens. Fallout 76, you know, it just happens. As you walk into Todd Howard's pristine triangular office, man, he got wined and dined and then taken back to the <laughs> office. Styled like a utopian vessel. No wonder he's in love with him. I, my guy, I've seen Todd Howard's office. It was on the the kind of funny podcast. It's not that impressive. All white walls and oak floors. There's a meter high model of a SpaceX prototype signed by Elon Musk. God damn it! <laughs> this space. This article is really bringing everything together, isn't it? SpaceX mentioned. Uh -oh. Elon Musk mentioned. Downstairs, there's a floor-to-ceiling stone mural from Skyrim. Yeah, it looks really bad. And a towering suit of power armor from Fallout. That one doesn't look too bad. I always, like, notice the knees, though. The knees look weird. <laughs> um, Howard has been at BGS almost three decades now. It's the only place he's ever worked. The studio is somewhat... the only place he's ever worked hang on interviews todd howard talks starfield is that true i might Damn, be mixing bro. up stories Uh, oh, crap. Whoops. Why was that? Why was the smith harder to fight than the person decked out in the... In the, uh, armor. I'm making a connection, but I'm not sure what it is, so we're just going to move on. The studio is somewhat unusual in the world of video games. People just dot, 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 don't leave. Man, people just don't leave. Oh, by the way, Bruce Nesmith, the guy that le led on Skyrim, he doesn't work there anymore. He hasn't worked there <laughs> in years. But people don't leave. Nobody leaves because the game studio. Who's Ken Rolston? Who's Mark Nelson? Well, who's, you know. Who's Jeremy Soule? You know, they haven't done any layoffs, right? Mm. No, I would say they're, I mean, a lot of their, I don't know, it's hard to say. It's hard to tell because, like, the big names and stuff are, for the most part, still there. They don't, they don't seem to lose as many people as uh, a lot of other AAA developers. Right, I'm just to... like I think it's wild that like Bruce Nath Smith is gone. That guy made Skyrim, but nobody knows. Nobody gives a shit. That's kind. Of, that's kind of the funny thing is that nobody gives a shit about these people besides us. Mm -hmm. Like we're the only people that care. I, I honestly, you you go to most um, most of their fans. They don't want to know. They don't want to know that there's people that make their games. Yeah, it's Bethesda. It's not. And maybe they care that it's like it's Todd Howard, but they don't give a because shit about don't wanna, any of these people. Because people don't want to believe that if just a couple people leave, odds are the games aren't going to be the same anymore. Yeah. Well, and it's it, it is an interesting thing because it's like um, with a lot of different game companies, we talk about how like yeah, you know, X, Y, and Z people are gone, and so it's like it's a completely different company, and like you know, the identity's gone. But this is an example where, like, the somehow the game identity is gone despite retaining so many of the same people. <laughs> well, when you work on a on like the same type of game for like uh, decades, they haven't mentioned any tabletop role playing game inspirations. They have in other places. Todd's talked about uh, playing a lot of Traveler as a kid, but 
Well, so it goes back to what I've what I've been asking for a while. It's like, do does Todd Howard and Bethesda are they making games that they want to make, or are they making games that they think are just going to sell well? I know like that's, how, that's how... kind of the complicated thing. Starfield, Starfield was supposed to be an escape from the we're just making the games that like we need yeah. to make to we, we yeah, generated yeah, the revenue and now here's the new IP where we bring it all back and then it's like oh and by the way we got bought by Microsoft and turns yeah. out we need we need to um we need to be the starter pistol for the <laughs> Xbox brand and so we need to we need to carry Xbox on our back now so. Yeah, it's it's it it's depressing. Some, so something's not adding up. It's weird for me, Howard says, when I ask how he feels when he contemplates retiring. But that's a long way off. You will likely be sixty years old by the time the Elder Scrolls Six comes out. Succession planning is kind of a constant thing. I want to do it forever, he continues. I think the way I work will probably evolve, but look at Miyamoto. The Nintendo icon turned 71 this year. He's still doing it. Howard's showing no sign of slowing down, as well as executive producing the Fallout show. He's mid Yeah, just like he executive produced Fallout 76. <clears throat> He's midway through pro executive producing an Indiana Jones game, a bucket list thing for a man whose favorite movie is 1981's Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh my god, it, it's just every Todd Howard interview hits the same points. It's like they don't mm -hmm. they don't read any of the other Todd they, Howard interviews. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, they don't did, do their did you know that they're, or anything. They're, he's making an Indiana Jones video game. Uh what's the age that you collect maximum social security at? <laughs> Sixty. I, I don't think I Todd's think. gonna need that. <laughs> well, he might not need that, but if he's thinking about his kids or something like that, hey, you might as well, right? Collect your social security, and then you're passing on more money to your uh, to your children. And then there's Elder Scrolls Six, perhaps the only game to rival Grand Theft Auto Six for sheer anticipation. <laughs> at, hmm. at least the GTA fans will go on stage and ask <laughs> for GTA. <laughs> <laughs> They'll interrupt Jeff Keeley. <laughs> Hmm. I don't know about that quote. Once again, he'll direct. It will mark his fourth time at the helm of a series. It's one he has overseen since 2002's The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Man, Redguard dissing. Not acknowledging <laughs> that Todd directed Redguard. The team announced the game five years ago on the same night as Starfield. It was a decision spurred on by the then trend of Marvel movies being announced in slates. Years ahead of even materialized. You bullshit. You made that. You made that shit up. It's not because it's a Marvel style announcement. Are you fucking stupid? It's because that they were shaking their ass so that Microsoft would buy them. They've even said that, like, they've said the myriad of reasons why they announced Elder Scrolls Six, and it wasn't because it was an MCU thing. Part of it was that they wanted to acknowledge that the game existed so that people would stop asking about it. Why do you think they announce all the things with the MCU? It's to appease investors. By the time the game's finished, oh. probably 2028, but it's anyone's guess, it'll be closing in on two decades since the release of Skyrim. I always love when they when they guess when Elder Scrolls 6 is coming out. Yeah, well, that's going to give me extra, so I might as well go with that. Do you regret announcing that when you did? I've asked myself that a lot, he says slowly. I don't know. I probably would have announced it more casually. What? Casually? It was just... What? <laughs> Todd, what? Why would you announcing it casually change anything? Yeah, I mean, if everybody, like, hinges on every word that he says, surely he understands. Does like, he think that the he... problem is that, like, that they made a trailer for it? Keep it casual, bro. A little Elder Scrolls between homies. <laughs> does it have a code name? It does. Do you like saying it out loud? I do. But you won't say it to me? I won't. What is? Why did the interview style switch to this like question answer? Is there anything you can tell me about it that you want to achieve with it? It's like, I don't want to answer, but I want to be polite. 
I will say that we wanted to fill that role of the ultimate fantasy world simulator. He pauses for a moment. And there are different ways to accomplish that given the time that has passed. Oof. Skyrim 2, everybody. For now, the team is still checking under every rock to get Starfield this prepped for launch. Lot. Fixing blinks. What? Blinks? Oh, the NPC's blinking? Isn't that how, like, this whole thing started? They were talking about blinking? I guess. He has a mantra. Great games are played, not made. I have a mantra, too. Starfield will be good. 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 Will be good. Chat, positive aspirations <laughs> with us. Say it with us now. Starfield, Starfield will, will be good. Be good. Starfield will be good. I feel a lot better now. Mm. My optimism is certainly, certainly procked up. Praise Todd. Praise Todd. Amen. <laughs> he has a mantra. Great games are played, not made. So they play it day in, day out. This year alone, Baldur's Gate 3 and The Legend of Zelda <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom have offered wildly acclaimed and contrasting takes on the role-playing genre. Can Starfield push it forward in the same way? I don't think about it in those terms, he says. I think about it in our terms. I redefine success. How does it push our <laughs> games forward? This, is, this takes it all to a level that we weren't sure even that we could do. This type of game is still unique. When it clicked and we could play it, we realized we had missed it. No one still does this. Hmm? Does what? What what's the clicking part? Please, does Todd, show the, us. It's Todd, does the not game do the comes no out in sky? a week. Does not do the Starfield, does not do the Elite Dangerous? Or are we talking about the Elder Scrolls formula that you guys aren't even doing anymore? I'm God, I'm sorry, it's I made up the Starfield, redefined success Starfield will part, be good. Guys, come on. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. It comes out in a week and they don't want to show it to us. It'll be good. It'll be good, guys. Don't worry. I'm not worried. Are you worried? You, you shouldn't be worried. Have you guys pre-ordered yet? You are you are pre-ordering the $100 edition, right? You don't have to pay $100. You pay $35 and your Game Pass subscription, uh, and no, you can no, play no, no, no. on... You can preload it now. Preload it now on Game Pass. Wait, wait, wait. You can play the day... Like the, the real release date, not the not the fake week after release date. If you get it on Game Pass, you have to pay thirty five dollars. Okay, okay. No, we we don't do hundred dollar purchases anymore. It's all in the, it's all in the Game Pass now. It's all in the begging Bethesda for a review copy. <laughs> I think it might be an age thing, but Howard's starting to see this differently. Oh, my my Fallout 76 music stopped. Essentially, he's learning to love the making. We don't get many of these in our career. We don't get many shots, he says. He used to work to get a game done, seeing it complete. That can be unhealthy. It can be unhealthy to want to see a game be complete. Really? He always struck me as the type of person who would enjoy the process. No, no, it, listen. Because the game being in a finished state, you know, complete, no bugs, no issues, you know, uh, quality he's, content. He's like, complete. It's like Will Shen. It's, like... it's unhealthy to want to have a complete game. <laughs> how people are going to feel about the game can kind of tie you up. But then you realize how much we love it. We've got to find a way to enjoy and embrace it so that we can look back and think that was good for us. It's that fuck the gamers, man. Fuck what they want. It's all about us. It's all about Bethesda Game Studios. Man, that's that's a bit depressing. <laughs> you you never want to you never want to hear artistic people go. I I have to, I made it for me because you know why? Because when people make stuff for themselves, it sucks. So, I just learned something new. The companions have their own bounty system. 
So if you steal from the companions or something, you get a bounty within, within your Vasker. Within your Vasker, yep. I did not know that. Hold your head up. I'm sure it won't happen. I thought you meant the the uh, the companions can get like arrested with their own bounty, which I think is true as well. Dare you question my skill? Toward the end of our time together, after the blowjob, he tells me how this process of sitting down to talk about the game, how it's affected his life, and the can Starfield really deliver of of it all? has forced him to be unusually reflective, but in a comforting sort of way. It's the same as it ever was. He casts back to 2008 when the team were in the midst of finishing Fallout 3. His family, Kim, and his two young sons were going on holiday without him. My wife was saying goodbye to me, he says. It still sticks with me. What did she say? This game better be really good. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Todd Howard. I, I don't even want to take so, this. I don't want to take this note. Todd Howard damn. had marital problems because of Fallout 3. Damn. This reminds me of a quote from um, going back to the Rooster Teeth drama. It always comes back to Rooster Teeth drama. Uh, the dude who got caught like uh, grooming a bunch of uh, underage girls in his uh, in his uh, streams. When he was getting his job with Rooster Teeth, his wife literally told him, just don't do anything that's going to embarrass the family name. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I mean, I think about, like, the balance between your work life and your personal life. And, like, uh, yeah, I, I think it can be rough. It's like, whatever I did today wasn't worth whatever conflict you caused. Um, and to just think that, like, he, he bet it all on Fallout 3 is just, like, so so funny fallout 3 huh you know it could have been any i never of really them, but... i really never thought about fallout 3 in terms of like uh bethesda's trajectory was fallout 3 really that transformative like oblivion what like marwin saved the company oblivion yeah. really put them on the map and really established them as a triple a studio skyrim this fucking skyrim fallout 3 Three though. I'm guessing you're the newcomer then. Oh, don't worry. Don't always just do what you're told. Nobody Yeah, um Fallout Three is like Codlack is the harbinger. And he's a sort of advice. I have it, it's, it's an absence in my mind. Like, yeah, I I, it, it, it feels it's the one, like a lost project. It's the at this one point. that I people don't get barely, why people like. People don't really talk about it all that much anymore. Like mm -hmm. especially after Fallout New Vegas. All right, I will be uh, we'll be playing a, a mixture of clips from Gamescom. Okay, I can't get training yet. Or is it the Dunmer who trains in one-handed? So as a heads up, the watch together is going to be going off. All right. So uh, first things they showed was the live action trailer, which yeah, which. Let me tell you how many articles I've seen praising the live action trailer being like this is really emotionally resonant. This this is awesome. I love this. And it's like I'll load up the, the live action trailer in a second cuz I need to take notes on it separately. Uh but this What what was after this? Was this at, before or after the Enon Zer? Yep, there there he goes. He's Oh, there no wait. So Enon Zer like went on stage and played the Starfield theme, and it sounded really bad. Um, and what I was told was that it was basically the piano they gave him. They didn't give him a, like a full, like a real piano. They gave him like this tiny little one, and the rendition they did of the Starfield OST it, it just sounded awful. <laughs> we'll start to play Starfield in early access on Xbox and PC. Well, I've been lucky enough to start playing it. Don't be jealous. Uh, I'm not allowed to say anything about it. Uh, yes, exactly. All right. Well, guys. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. Really disappointed. 
That's just so disappointing. This is such a special night for so many developers. It's really disappointing to see someone uh, act that way. But we're going to move right on with the show. We got a lot of great <laughs> Jeff's, Jeff's sitting there being like, fuck, this is going to be my thing every time now. Yeah. Huh? Every, sh every event I do, someone's going to crash my show. How does this happen? How does this happen twice in a row now? Yeah. Where's the security at? I like the... Well, what's funny is this This happened in the uh, the Xbox Twitter apparatus. They, they were all like, guys, it's not funny. You know, they had this list of reasons why it was a bad thing. And it was like... If it was any other game, not, you wouldn't care. Right. It's that he crashed right before Todd Howard came out. Which, which yeah, is funny yeah. to think because he could have, like, interrupted Todd Howard if you wanted to <laughs> and then and then todd would have murdered him just shot him dead on the stage but uh yeah so that was the thing they were worried like um oh game developers are going to become inaccessible because of stuff like this and it's like they don't seem fair they, they're not accessible as is yeah inaccessible as in like they're just not going to talk or they're not going to I don't understand. They're How are they not on the stage? Interface? Like, they, they have this weird yeah, stage that they can walk up on for no reason because everybody comes from behind the curtain. The only benefit of having <laughs> a walk on stage is if there's people in the audience that are going to be walking onto the stage. Like, otherwise, you should have a pitted stage oh, to make it difficult for people to climb up. And well, then that way you can have fire, security people it, down in the, there no, and no, just no, fucking no, no, tackle no, no. them the, when they try to jump the stage. The fire, marsh, the fire marshal insisted they have multiple entrances and exits to the stage. Well, yeah, like every stage I've been to has had two staircases on the side, like a staircase on each what? side of the stage. What? But you could just put security there. Why is he? Oh, because he's supposed to be a follower eventually, so I can't fucking. Thank you games to show you yeah. really it just it's just so sad to me to see something like that happen tonight we're here to celebrate games in this community and how much they mean to but gta 6 is not there listen i think it's funny because it, he mentioned gta 6 which isn't there gta rockstar has always done their own things it's, they don't show they don't show up to events anymore they make the noise mm, they don't true they don't have to contribute no, it, it's funny because it had to be a GTA it. fan, right? Yeah, <laughs> those guys are desperate. I'll show you what I can about protecting your. Oh wait, I already. It's been so long since the, the last GTA game, and it, they've been represented by GTA Online. Like that's the type GTA Online is the type of shit that just like wears your soul down to the point that you are like, yeah, I'll jump on stage. <laughs> I'll get arrested over this. Do us so. Without further ado, um, I want to move right on with the show because we've got a lot to show you. And the good news, Gamescom, is we have someone very special here who can be here to talk about Starfield. Please join me in welcoming to Opening Night Live and Gamescom for the first time ever, one of our industry's greatest creators, the director and oh my God, dude. executive producer He's of Bethesda Game Studios. On. That's right, Todd Howard, everybody. Standing ovation. I can hear it. I can hear the people standing. <laughs> the shuffling of chairs. <laughs> the loading of sniper rifles and shotguns <laughs> aimed at cocks. The, the, guy, the guy getting arrested right now is like, fuck, if only I had waited, I could have interrupted Todd instead. Honestly, I'm pretty sure he just gets kicked out. I, I don't know. They probably, they probably detained him for a little while at mm -hmm. least. So Todd's rocking his style. We get a shot on him. So Todd's rocking his style. Blue jeans, like blue bomber jacket, white v-neck. Starfield Where's pin. My... Here's my watch together. Oh, there it is. Just a little bit too loud on my end. All right. That's Starfield's theme, by the way. I don't know. It's, really? it's just not selling. Yeah, the music that's been playing, that was Starfield's and that, theme. And that's, 
And that's got to be its like crescendo, that, right? That, that's like, its main theme. That's the signature motifs that define the game. All right, all right. Starfield. Starfield's a thinking man's game. Mm. You know, it's not about the pageant pageantry and all that. It's, it's reserved. Yeah. Todd, thank you so much for coming all this way to Gamescom. Uh, we have a lot to talk about with Starfield, but first of all, is this true this is your first ever time at Gamescom? This is my first Gamescom. And oh, by the way, not wearing the watch. <laughs> I need to add that to my list because I'm starting to compile uh, instances of them well, not wearing the watch. They sold the watch is already sold out. There's no reason to pedal it anymore. Well, what the fuck? Is yeah, going that's on? his uh, Omega Speedmaster. Is this the one that his wife gave him? Is that what he's wearing yeah, right now? Probably. Ah, uh, okay. That watch went to the moon. <laughs> you said how great the crowd is here and it really as he gets interrupted it's a great crowd Woo! <laughs> all right gonna tell my pr people i'm never doing another presentation at gamescom now yeah. i'll leave that to p hines <laughs> and just all the fans that come here for this biggest the white the biggest... sneakers too it's an interesting like interesting clothing arrangement that's on screen here p, Hines, gaming p. Hines is wearing the watch in one of his interviews that might be the <laughs> only time aside from when they shield the watch in the direct that any of them wore it <laughs> Pete Hines actually just likes the watch. Yeah, that would be funny. Like, Pete, Pete Hines tastes in watches. I'll wear whatever. Yeah. In a gaming to celebrate. In a gaming to celebrate games. And I figured, you know, it is our first new franchise in over 25 years. So if I was going to come, you know, it's for Starfield. Well, uh, we all welcome you to Gamescom in Germany. And we're all very excited when to step into this new world. When did Gamescom start? Star I feel like I haven't heard about it until um, this year. Oh, it's a long-running thing. It's like the the European trade show for games. Okay. So I'm just Starfield, trying to think uh, and how long it's been around compared to you know uh, releases Bethesda has done and everything. And it's like I don't know, maybe uh, maybe it would have just shown up regardless. Uh. And the next week, early access. Set up people, why did you want to make this game, Starfield? Why did you want to create a new world? You know, I think like a lot of gamers out there, we have dreamt of a game where we looked at the skies and we can blast off into space. I love it. <laughs> this is the footage they're going to show of Starfield. <laughs> oh, he's saying this. <laughs> the awful character creator creation menu where we went <laughs> character by character. <laughs> and just gawked at how awful the character models in this game look. I'm blasting off, all right. Ace and explore. We love to make games where we can explore these worlds. We've done like with the Elder Scrolls. And this, none of this is new footage either. It's reused from the direct. That's no, how course, lazy this of is. Not. Of course that, not. Of course that's not. That's what's weird about it. It's this. not like they're showing new shit at Gamescom that they can put on fucking screen. We literally, no, no. we literally only, you literally only need like what three minutes of B-roll footage to oh throw my, on screen, dude. Then you have City Skylines over there doing a whole live stream event where they strap the fucking live streamers to a crane and put them 150 feet into the air and give while giving them full access to the current build of the game and allowing them to stream it for about two plus hours. God damn, bro. I hope... I, I hope one of two things happen. Either... By the time Tez Six comes out, I'm not doing YouTube like game analysis stuff anymore. Or Scott or like Bethesda really fucking like learns how to do marketing and stuff because this has been a fucking disaster yeah. to like cover. I know, it's hilarious. Like you guys really like you have hundreds of people that are playtesting the game. You couldn't have had someone sit down 
the for level an hour. the level of just like lack of confidence in the product that they are making because like everything that, has I to look at this and that's passed by like a board that has to approve footage being released and so like it's easier to just give them the stuff that's been released than yeah th than to actually come up with like new stuff that Pete Hines and his like eight man committee has to approve yeah. for public <laughs> consumption it i've never seen a game be so and i'm used to looking at like rockstar stuff right I've never seen a game be this miserly with, like, what they're showing. Yeah. But they, listen, they showed you 45 minutes at the Direct. What more do you want? It's not like the game comes yeah, out exactly. in a week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, not only that, they showed 45 minutes of stuff that we already saw in the 15 minutes back in yeah. uh, back when they initially showed the game. Like, that whole 45 minutes was... It, it was just confirming and shit really that we already saw and we already and knew. Two, two yeah, and yeah, and really... If two and a half minutes of it was them showing a watch and two of minutes of it was them huffing <laughs> their own farts as the environment designers say how good the environments are. <laughs> yeah, what what more could I want as somebody who's... You're just entitled. Starfield drop, would oops, be good. I, I broke the lighting in this and I'm glad to see this is still a bug. Starfield will be good. Starfields will be good. Starfields will be good. Starfields will be good. The Fallout series. Hundred dollars, please. It's not even it. like B-roll that's being shown on screen. Like it's main presentation material that they're showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Like this is this Something is the opening, new. the opening to this show. And they don't even have. Oh my god! Oh they my can god. approve in. They can <laughs> approve in on Zur to go on stage and play a really bad rendition of the main theme, <laughs> but they can't. They can't approve two minutes of footage. Sorry, in of, of a game that's supposed to be stellar and like bug free, and that they're selling a hundred dollar early access versions for right now. That's the crazy part. Is the game is put like legitimately from what's been leaked? The game is actually like really functional. So yeah. what's the issue with them just going and getting two minutes of footage of unique of new footage of footage that they're already showing at the precinct? Yeah, because they, at, they, at the they show. are showing stuff. They just they refuse have, to do it. They have that. Yeah, they have a ver like something of a vertical slice that they're showing people at games. Very cool. Apparently, it's v very substantial and all. But they will not show the public this. Why? It, it's it is genuinely like it's palpable how scared they are yeah of failure which it's like i don't no, know like why. i said it's it's such a it, such a demonstration of a lack of confidence in the thing that they are making and it's like guaranteed money for I, I i i guess it's not going to be a good game then oh man these guys are like actually where you could explore with complete freedom in the galaxy. Oh my god, these fucking character models. We just don't want to spoil it for the players, you know? Like, they've been waiting so long, they can wait another week, alright? Mm -hmm. It's a game we've always wanted to play that um, we think a lot of people wanted to play as well. It's kind of that, that dream, dream game. Yeah, I, I wish I could talk about it, but uh, it's, it's quite an experience. I wish I so love that too. Multiple times in in an industry conference, they have talked about the NDA. Yeah. Starfield's super restrictive NDA is more newsworthy. Like, if you're a Starfield fan and you weren't keeping up on Twitter, like, the new thing that you've heard about this game so far in the five minutes that's been on screen is that there's a re restrictive NDA that Jeff Keighley's under. That, and it's multiple times they can't talk about it. I mean, what else are you going to talk about? It. The, see, that's the thing. It's like they're so worried about the the leaks and everything. So of mm -hmm. course, like all the leaks are big news. And granted, you know, it doesn't matter how much information they put out. There's going to be leaks for this game, uh, and it's going to be big news. But you can temper it a little bit by just giving people something to chew on for these last two weeks. It, it really is like crazy how stingy they are. How stingy and just how counterproductive it is. It's like you guys are spending all this money on marketing and everything. Then how about you market? Show us the fucking game, please. Experience, and I know everyone here is very excited to uh, to jump in soon. Um, 
You did bring some stuff to Gamescom to show to fans. I know there's a theater. Tell us, I know you've been, you know, sharing a little bit about the game, but I know there's a lot you want people to discover when they play it. What did you bring here to, uh, to Gamescom? Yeah, it's really cool. They, uh, we've built a 300-person seat theater where we're actually showing the oh beginning God. of the game. And you start oh. out as a miner, and you, you touch this artifact that affects you. In uh, some spoilers? Way. So, oh my God. They have stuff to I'm, show. I'm s I am seething right now. So he's going to sit here and tell us it, but he's not going to show yeah. us it. We're going to see stuff that was at the direct. Problem? You know, you, you know what? You know what? This is maybe maybe this is an agreement with Gamescom, right? They're like, if people want to see Starfield, they gotta fucking come. Yeah. They got they gotta pay and come in and stuff. Into space time, and then you get to create your own character. Our games are about creating and being whoever you want, and then you're off on adventure. Yes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, this adventure. I know uh, you know people have been wondering kind of what the the main quest line is going to be after you create your character, which is something that I know. I saw even someone on the internet this week created you. I think. Did you see that? Someone tweeted out a picture. They somehow figured out. I see out. a lot of things on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love the Todd Hour quote. Thank you, thank you, Todd. <laughs> God, have you seen? Is this a? Uh, 20 hour long video yeah. on Skyrim. <laughs> Jesus, lay off the chorus, please. He didn't see he did not seem happy. No, let's let's I know people hate it. There's people out there who hate the psychological analysis, but we need to really analyze how Todd Howard said that. Going to be after you create your character, which is something that I know. I saw even someone on the internet this week created you, I think. Did you see that? Someone tweeted out a picture. They had somehow figured I out. I see a lot of things on the internet. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he is not. <laughs> this is a beaten man, to say the least. Jeff, Jeff, stop. I, I've seen the memes and stuff. I know. I try to I'm, ignore I'm so that. sick of these fucking losers that stan Xbox. <laughs> these goddamn, these you... goddamn Xbots. That are constantly getting into arguments on the. That would be so funny if Todd Howard like just fucking <laughs> unloaded a salvo. <laughs> you know what? I'm driving to my Tesla when I he's get see, back he's home. He's seen Rule 34 it, it of himself matter. at least once. Oh, funny that you should mention that. There's Rule 34 of Todd Howard fucking my VTuber model, <laughs> and it's voice acted. <laughs> Um, what channel is that going to be posted on tonight? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm fairly confident I'm going to include that in the Starfield video. Not <laughs> nothing too explicit, but it's like, well, yeah, you don't want to get you don't want to get age restricted yeah. now. Yeah, like the first week that I was doing the anime girl VTuber models, someone like commissioned went and commissioned <laughs> art and voice actors. One week. That's mm -hmm. it. That's all it took. Damn, and they commissioned voice actors? See, I was figuring it was like AI voice acting and stuff like and that. This was before that was even popular. This was like 2021. Man. Which one of the models, though? The Dunmer Girl, of course. This was pre-Dunmer like pre -Dunmer Girl dress back when she had the Hawaiian shirt. Like, very first stream that, that they, they, they debuted in. That's real. <laughs> well, the thing is, I think you could literally create. Sorry, you know, what did you say? Created you, I think. Did you see that? Someone tweeted out a picture. They somehow figured I out. I see a lot of things on the internet. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure that's real. It, well, he doesn't know if it's real, huh? Yeah. I mean, I guess it's a good sign that he hasn't created himself. He strikes me as the type of person who would play as. Like, he looks at role playing as a means of escape. Yeah. Oh, damn it. He plays, like, <clears throat> behinds. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, you have... I've noticed, um... You have, like, two types of people who approach role-playing games. You have the people who look at it as an opportunity to, like, escape and, you know, play a role. And then there's other people who see it as an opportunity to self-insert into a universe. Uh, the thing is, I think you could literally create, you know, whoever Oh, by you the want. way, you might... You, you, you will be surprised how quickly Todd Howard's about to leave the stage. <laughs> you know, whoever you want, and then enroll yourself. You think, you're thinking you're going to get a couple of minutes of Todd sort of talking about Starfield? Starts, what can we expect? 
Well, you jump off, you're joining Constellation, which are the last kind of group of space explorers like NASA meets Indiana Jones searching for these artifacts, but... <laughs> okay. Just this clusterfuck of ideas. <laughs> uh, also, like, why are... I, I do have to contest this. Why are they the last, like, space explorers? Is, is like space is fully so resource surveying is just not lucrative? Enough of space has been explored at this point that like we don't we don't need to explore mm. anymore for a while. But what if like what if they wanted to establish resources on planets that weren't under like you know government control? Like, the, the, the exploration of the New World, you know, it, it continued well into, like, the 19th century, you know? Todd? We have <laughs> a thousand planets for you to explore. <laughs> it just all comes back to that. The story goes a lot of places. The game has a lot of surprises that we haven't talked about. I don't want to spoil them here. Yes. Um, but really, really happy. Oh, thank you. Oh, You're doing God. me the favor by not telling me anything. See, see, it's like, if the game is as big as you claim it is, and honestly, I believe you. It's so like Skyrim itself is such a big game that you, there's no way you could spoil it in the, like all of it in the weeks leading up to it. Why don't you just show us a little bit more then? Yeah, just do something new just and show us, show us a, a side a quest. A little bit more. It just show, cause I know what you're going to be showing me is only like one one tenth of a percent of what's actually in the games so just you're being entitled what more do you more. want they showed you the direct it's one of the greatest examples of marketing in a video in in video games <laughs> oh no i i do not disagree there that was it, it was it masterful. did exactly what they wanted it to do and that's kind of the problem <laughs> yeah it's not very honest yeah Got some high octane gameplay right here. Mm. Well, you know, Skyrim is it's just. <laughs> Can you tell I've played many, many hours? Story many different out characters. And, and where, and, and where it goes. Yeah, it's, Mishka's uh, it's heading home. Such an oh, epic Mishka's respawned. And, and you and your team have done so much for this industry, and uh, the fact that you guys have worked. Through COVID, building this and and coming on whoa, the other. Whoa, whoa, whoa! COVID, whoa! Hold, hold on, on there! Sec. Don't don't be age restricting everybody's streams now. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't. We we had to work from home and stuff. Don't 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 throw us under the bus here. Friend, uh, we're so excited for everyone to get a chance to play it. So thank you for all you've done for our industry, Todd. That's everyone, it. Todd Howard. Thank you. That's it. Can't wait for you to play the game. That's Thanks it. so much, Todd. So really you wasted it. time talking about mentioning COVID and everything, but you didn't. Nothing, huh? Nothing. 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 We 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 found out that you start in a in a mining. We, we knew oh, that. We already knew, we knew that. that. We knew that since 2021. So this is the part where my uh, my my teacher from my English teacher would be writing like circling it and then writing in the margins. How is this relevant? <laughs> <sighs> One week, guys. We can survive this. I don't want anybody in my fucking chat pre-ordering this goddamn game until I stream it before the game is like Fully, fully out. Yeah, you know? we'll, we'll, we got we'll, we got the early we'll access. We'll stream the game the first few days, and you can come to a conclusion. Yeah, if it's worth buying or not. It's prob prob. So the game comes out Friday. I'll probably stream it Sunday. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna be. I'm temp I'm very tempted to do a stream on the 31st, a week from now, uh, starting at mm. starting at noon Eastern Standard Time. I think is it. That's when all the reviews start coming out. And we're, we'll be taking a look at some reviews on, on day one. I, I broke the lighting again. I'm very curious what all the people who were given copies in advance will say. Oh. Lighting's back. Hmm. You look forward to... I'm sure... I'm sure it'll be... 
very uh, trustworthy. Yeah, you, well, you can look forward to some kind of kind of funny unbiased. coverage and TKS Mantis. Ooh. Ooh. Well, oh, wait, 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 Mr. Maddie plays. Is is in kind of funny's thing? Uh, Paris. Well, yeah, isn't he? But that's where he's doing, that's where he's doing his review. Is on kind of funny. Okay. Okay. All right. He called us grifters, though. Not by name, but he said we're grifting. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Hold on. Who? Paris. Called us? We, you not, and me? Not us, because they, they don't name anybody, right? But he said that, like, anybody who's being negative about the marketing and think that they're not doing enough is basically grifting. Really? Yeah. I wish I had a thing to show you on the watch together for this. <laughs> Grifting, huh? Yeah, if you're negative about Starfield, it's a grift. They showed so, us 45 uh, a... minutes at the direct. Wait, 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 but but I'm not I'm not being negative anymore. Yeah, we're doing the, we're doing positivity. But listen, <laughs> this is the positive stream. Keep it positive. <laughs> Man, I didn't grifter, huh? That's a new one for me. Mm -hmm. Well, you had that guy uh, on uh, Twitter. Well, it was, it was it was a YouTube comment, but uh, but Jeweler posted on Twitter where he was saying that he was leeching off of other big YouTubers right. for uh, for calling his video a, a retrospective. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the all those big YouTubers who really covered Daggerfall. Yeah, who did Daggerfall retrospectives? Yeah, <laughs> nobody nobody can do uh, Daggerfall besides. Yeah. All right. All right, we're going to I'm going to jump through this until Oh, there's Todd. Didn't take long. You know, actually this is probably a good way. So this is a uh, Gamescom day 1 on the show floor for Xbox. Who's going to put me in contact with Bandits? I guess Farkas, right? Thanks Todd so much for joining us. We're here at the Starfield Theater. What this looks like Sony Sony grounds. You see that blue and white? All right. Are we sure we're not in in the in the house of the ponies? Colt Eastwood is not a grifter. Snap Blast Play is not a grifter. Darius Fears is not a grifter. Iron Lords are not grifters. That's funny. I think all of those guys are on my list of uh, Starfield reviews coming out in a week. What are fans expecting to see? Uh, we're actually showing everybody the beginning of the game here. It's kind of edited down, but they get to see how it starts. Oh, it's edited. Yeah. Yeah, so originally I heard that it was playable. Mm -hmm. And then I heard that it was just a video. And then I heard that it was an edited video. Yeah. So it can't be... Todd Howard's not going to go on a stage and play Starfield live in front of a small audience. Okay, Todd Howard's never done that in front of a group of people three months before Skyrim came out. <laughs> I never thought they would fucking teach you a few things. But yeah, so. Ooh, I'm broke now. Nice little edited together uh, sequence of the intro. Not live, of course. No, just, just, just. But a, recorded so on the Xbox Series Some, X or which, whichever one's more powerful. Something to set. Something to set the mood, right? We we needed we needed another palette. Did you know <laughs> something to s there's a set the tone? There's a thing where um, players of certain games on the Xbox Series X can block matchmaking with players on the Series S because the game forces frame rate parity, and they don't want to play on 30 FPS, so they can refuse to be matched with. Uh, the the, really? the pours on, on the Series S. Yeah. Really? It's not like a huge thing. It's not like in Halo Infinite, but... Yeah, there's a couple, there's a couple games that let you do that. Functional. Wow. I didn't know that the the power difference was that... was that big between the two different versions. Interesting. I'm surprised we're only two hours and 45 minutes in. 
Yeah, you know, talking about Starfield will uh, kind of do that. Well, it's good, you know? Talking about Starfield and playing Skyrim is definitely <laughs> definitely makes it feel like this shit's going longer than it is. <laughs> yeah, we keep playing Skyrim on stream. I think that's our mistake. <laughs> I think I, I I made the mistake of saying that this mod was making the game fun for me because I booted it up today and I realized I don't actually have much left to do. Yeah. So, like, what and what's up with just, the mod? I'm trying to put myself in a position where I'm just running into, like, the, the big factions and stuff, but I can't really find them. So, like, I, I joined the companions. Well, I joined the companions because I wanted training. So, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do... I guess I'll do some companion stuff because it's just going to send me to random uh, random dungeons and things like that, but... Now it's trying to tell me to do the rest of the companions. Oh, yeah, you can really don't want you, to. Oh, you made that mistake. You only get one radiant <laughs> job and then you have to do the main yeah. quest line. <laughs> I wonder if the mod changes this. I think it does change the silver hand. You know what? We're, we're going to we're going to continue doing the, the companions. OK. A little bit of character creation and then there. Yeah, show us the character creation. Here we go. Beautiful. Off on Awful. Amazing. I mean, amazing. Great. Sure. Okay. Cuts away. Brilliant. I've seen some of the reactions of people coming out, and it's like, like it? everyone looks super excited. Right. And that's that's literally all they're allowed to talk about is the reactions of people walking out yeah. of the event. Like, that's how restrictive this fucking NDA is. And they look excited. Well, I don't think you have to sign an NDA to go into the theater. No, I, I I'm pretty sure you do. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think I um one of the people were talking about it. Um, that there's a, there's a process you have to sign up and everything. So you know they're signing an NDA when they're going into that thing. Wonder if they make you turn your phone in too. Oh, probably. I did. But they're really excited, you know. And it's like, of course, they're excited. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna go to Gamescom to see Starfield, yeah, you're ex already exactly. you're a baked in fan. Yeah. Well, it's also just like it's one of those things where, you know, it's like it's that fun with friends yeah. type situation again, where it's like there's a, there's a communal aspect to it. You're at Gamescom. It looks like it's a fun event and everything. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. There's there's a lot of games being shown there. So you're naturally gonna be. Very charitable. If I was at Gamescom and I saw Star Starfield, I'd probably be like hyped too. Yeah, I did. it's one of the benefits of doing a trade show, which is once again like, why don't you just show us one of the events, like one one of the showings, just record it and put it online? Because then you can have like the but people getting listen, hyped listen, and everything. The game is not ready to be shown yet. It comes out in a week. Yeah. <laughs> You're asking too much. The game is coming out in a week, okay? Do you know how long that is? All right, Mark here. What I'm thinking about how long it's going to be is it's going to be an uphill battle to like be uh, realistic about the game with people. I hope you believe mm -hmm. Like, um, oh, but here we go. Assuming the game is going to be bad. You assume the game is going to be bad. You're going to have to be realistic with people. And it's like, you're gonna have to do a lot of like comparison to games that have come out this year like zelda and baldur's gate baldur's gate 3 has really done us a different big kind of no it's, a, it's too different a kind of game to make stop comparisons. it stop it <laughs> stop it. it it's unfair stop it it has done us a big uh, a big service because it really kind of set people's expectations for like uh for what a big rpg can do right so like that's the bar that's the bar bethesda i really i really don't think starfield's gonna be winning game of the year awards this year uh, yeah i think it's tough uh i don't think it can even win rpg of the year like it's gonna have to settle on best new ip <laughs> are, are, it's just are like sure um is that there's not an, another <laughs> new ip that came out this year that that kind of rocked the industry I mean, Forspoken. Forspoken. Redfall. 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 Yeah, new IP. It would be funny <laughs> if Redfall stole Starfield's Thunder. <laughs> and the RKO from Arcane. <laughs> you know, at least Redfall was funny. It was a funny dumpster fire. You know, this guy online, I don't remember his name, whatever, but he, he put it best where he said, 
When you put out the fi a dumpster fire, it just becomes a, tra a box of trash again. Good. Can't wait to see. Also, how's it back home? How are the team holding up with this close to launch? That's... Oh, yeah, I, I, I saw this one. How's the, the, that's the question you go for. How's the team holding up? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's... They're in the trenches. They're putting Video out Video games fires. are made by people. We're trying to be no, more human great, as no, an industry No, hold on, now. hold on. Get, great games are played, not made. <laughs> Who fucking cares? That would be a funny... Just a debate that's entirely like studio mottos. <laughs> This is always oh, tight time. I mean, the game's pretty much done. We're doing a couple final tweaks. There's a, you know, a lot of things that go into a game of this scale actually launching, but uh, super excited. You know, we love the game. We put so much into it. We just hope, you know, everybody out there loves it as well. Yeah, I know everyone's super excited. And being here at Gamescom, what goes into the preparation for yourselves and like the team at Xbox? Well, you look at this booth, I mean, I, I don't know, you're asking the wrong person. I look at this and it's just incredible, the scale of everything. I don't think the camera can capture it. I'm kind of blown away. Uh, for us, we, you know, we put a video together. It gets a little bit easier to make videos when the game is just about to come out because things are done. So honestly, our part was easy. Super exciting to be here and see the excitement from the fans. It, it means a lot to us. Yeah, and you mentioned like the booth here is massive, but Starfield itself is one of the largest game undertakings that we've ever seen. What are fans going to expect when they get their hands on the game? Well, I think, you know, if they played our previous games where you can kind of make the character you want and go do it you want, it's hard to express how big the game feels when you play it. Like, oh, there's a planet. I can really land. <laughs> I've been toying around See with this, planet? too. Like, it, the games always feel big at the start. And then, and then, like, as you play. And then you realize. Yeah, you realize kind of the illusory elements as time goes on. Yeah. So I guess. I don't know. It's like I you get this. lauded. As, you're, a, you're a good illusion master, but none of it was real. And I mean, anywhere. that is an element to all video games, right? It's the illusion. And how long does the illusion actually last? Mm, true. Can any game hold up to the scrutiny of the thousand hours, guys? Come on, be realistic. Yeah, ex yeah exactly. You should only play 20 hours and review it at that moment. Oh, right. There's nothing to do for the first 10 minutes of this dungeon, so I can just put my hands away. Oh, something killed that. Uh, and it, it is a game, even I will admit, that the kind of... You sit down, you're like, oh, I'll play for a half hour, and then three hours go by, and you're like, what? It's just, um, you know. Because you're sitting in two hours of loading screens. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, man, is that all I managed to accomplish? <laughs> I did one Radiant quest. I, I, I can't believe it. You guys said two hours of walking <laughs> is two hours of walking. You did a whole stream on it, and now you're saying it's not. True, true. Oh, wait, there is combat here. Oops. I like to say the more that you oh, give God. to Starfield, the more you put into it, the more it gives back. Yeah, like, I'm personally super excited. The more you give, the more Ooh, it gives back. Club? There we go. That's the quote I'm looking for. <laughs> Listen. Listen. <laughs> I'm I'm giving it a hundred bucks at launch, so it it better fucking suck my dick. That's all I'm saying. Well, I'm just thinking like, listen, the video I make, that's me putting it into Starfield so that it gives back. Yeah. I'm expecting about a. You make your own fun, and me making my own fun is hating the $3, game. Three thousand dollars. I mean, payout. me reviewing the game. Yeah. <laughs> I need it to. I need. I'm gonna need Starfield to really uh, pull pull it pull its weight here. My uh, Fallout 76 video got demonetized and everything, so I had to get my hands on it. Also, I'm gonna go and experience the experience for myself. Oh my god, you couldn't even like this is the guy that's he gonna interview Todd Howard, it. and he didn't even get. He hasn't in even seen it the... yet. Yep on the thing uh hopefully security let me but thanks so much for joining hopefully security will let me yeah 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 exactly that's yeah that's what i was talking about that they, they had a they had a process and everything you have to be vetted in order to get mm -hmm. in what wait what you're from the patrician tv 
YouTube channel. Get this guy <laughs> out of here. <laughs> Security. Thanks for having me. I just hope everybody loves the game. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Aw. Aw, thank you. Yeah, th th there's still there's still an element to Todd that where it's just like like that just sounded so genuine that <laughs> like yeah, I, hope. I just hope people like that's, the game. Well, that's kind of the tragic part is that um, <laughs> half the problem is just that Bethesda has been put into the spotlight because they're now the starter mm -hmm. pistol for Xbox. Like, yeah, that's not what that's not the fate I wanted for them. Oh my god, it's fucking No Man's Sky all over again. <laughs> You know the the big studio, the big uh, publisher. You got Sony mm -hmm. that was putting the the little indie guys, the little indie team Bethesda. Yeah, yeah. Now you got Microsoft putting indie Bethesda t in the indie studio Bethesda here. They're just not ready for it. They're, they're just like, listen, we just wanted to make a new IP, right? Now we got to fucking carry the entire Xbox brand on our back. Come on. Yeah, that's what's sad. Is like Bethesda was cool. I, you know, Bethesda was fine when they were doing their niche. You know, it was like fun to make fun of them. Like, oh, they made, you know, $750 million on Fallout 4 and it's this level of quality. And like, <laughs> it, it was its thing. It was its own thing. It was this own little space. And like, it's just been co opted into being this huge brand and this huge deal that everybody has to pay attention to. And like, they're not qualified to ha to do that. Yeah. Yeah, save that for like the rock stars. And, we checked. Uh, we just checked your background, and we saw you're subscribed to Patrician TV. He, <laughs> he disposed of this entitled garbage. <laughs> so why don't you guys type exclamation mark day one in Twitch chat for a chance to win a whole month of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate? That's right, chat. Right now, a whole month. Can I just exclamation mark day one spelled out phonetically? Can I just sign up for like a free Don't trial? you want your Marvel Snap drop? Don't I just need like a like a credit card or something that I've never put put it on? Like don't people have like six different credit cards these days? Listen, surely you can just find a second a credit month. card to put We're offering a free month of Game put, Pass. We want you to be a loyal a chance, customer. A chance. Like if it was you get a free month regardless, I'd be like, "Okay, that's kind of cool." No, 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 it's a chance mm -hmm. to get a free trial that like Of course. Really? But joining me right now is Bethesda's very own Pete Hines. What? Oh God! Yeah, <laughs> there, there we go, uh, boy, Pete Hines. How much, how much stonewalling can we get out of this one? Morrowind original. God, the fucking look of hate. Every every instance of Pete Hines is just this look of distaste. I've never seen a, a PR person that looked less enthusiastic to do his job. <laughs> That's his, because that's his job. His job is to make people uncomfortable. Pete, 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 Pete. <laughs> they say I bully people on the internet. Oh, cool. You snagged a Bethesda interview for our, for our live stream? Yeah, it's the, it's the seven minute spot. Who'd you get? You get a big poll? Did you get Emo Pagliarulo? Did you get Will Shen? <laughs> I mean, we know we oh, opened no. with a with a Todd interview on the spot, but you pulled, you got a good pull, right? Yeah, he's a VP at Bethesda. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> yeah, he, he's the senior vice president <laughs> at Bethesda. No, no, you didn't get him, did you? <laughs> you got. <laughs> I would. I. I just want. I would have settled with Sandwich Lady. You. You got Jamie Mallory, right? <laughs> You know, Angela Browder, Mark Lambert, like Enon Zur, anybody? <laughs> it's him, everybody. It's P. Hines. To talk about more stuff. To talk about more Starfield. Pete, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. It must feel good to be back at Gamescom as well. Uh, it is. It's a show I've I've been to very a lot of times and uh, over the years. And a lot of times, and it was not productive, any of them. <laughs> and it's always a great crowd it's it's honestly it's amazing to like bump into fans i recognize oh, yeah. to see folks um and honestly to be back hey in i remember stonewalling you back in 2019 <laughs> remember when you asked me about <laughs> elder scrolls 6 remember when i didn't answer ah <laughs> uh, 
I want Pete's job. I could stonewall easily. Let me do that. Pay me six figures. I'll stonewall everybody. You think Pete Hines only makes six figures? Oh, oh. Well, that's his salary, right? Yeah. We're not. We're not counting. We're not counting the bonuses. <laughs> yeah, we're not counting the bonuses and the stock options and uh, you know the all the all the. You still have that bruise like that. from when you asked me about Elder Scrolls Six. <laughs> Have your balls regrown <laughs> since I shot them off? Did I, I hope you didn't get fired from that when he went back empty-handed? In person, you know, it's, I fucking hate Gamescom. I hate Germany. I hate Xbox, and I despise <laughs> Phil Spencer. Now get out of my face! Wow, great! great. I want to go back to Bermuda. That, that was a great level-headed interview with Pete Hines. He's usually much worse. <laughs> something we haven't gotten to do a whole lot of and uh you know as, as todd was just saying you can really feel the energy from the fans how excited they are how much they're looking forward to it it, it honestly it, it makes it a lot of fun oh he's wearing the watch this is the part where he wears the watch oh shit he's doing his job like i said pete hines is just like yeah i like the watch i'm gonna watch i'll, I'll wear it so let me get this yeah. straight you're recording, you know, three minutes of a developer talking for Starfield Direct, and you can't be fucking bothered to just give them the watch that we, they, we know they had. You can't just give them the watch, wear it for the stupid fucking interview, and, like, show mm. solidarity with what we're doing. You can't get them to do that. Are, Pete Hines wearing a watch is, all day at Gamescom? This is... I, I need yeah. confirmation here, guys. Can you even buy the fucking watch anymore? Is it already sold out? There we go. Todd Howard. Oh, hang on. VTuber models in the way. Todd Howard's still not wearing the watch. I'm, I'm telling you, it's because they sold them out. So yeah, Todd's they, like, I'm not fucking wearing that piece of shit. Get, yeah, we already we already made <laughs> the sales. Yeah, you're probably yeah, right. Mean, meanwhile, yeah, mean, meanwhile, Pete's like, no, I just I like, like the watch. I like the watch. I like the watch. Imagine if, like, Pete Hines, when you're when you're not dealing with him, like, uh, professionally, he's actually, like, the most just, like, kindest. Yes. <laughs> like, just such a chill dude. He's such a chill dude, and then you turn on the camera, and he just fucking kills you. He's, just... <laughs> he's good yeah, at his it's, job. It's a really special place for that, I think. But so many of the fans that are here today and watching from home are just kind of waited with bated breath for what's to come for Starfield. But... These last few days ahead of launch, what do they tend to look for, look like for the, you and for the rest of the team? Um, it's uh, it's. I, lo <laughs> I love the sigh there. <laughs> uh. Like Jesus Christ, you're really asking me this? I'm not even fucking. I'm not even a developer there, buddy. What, like, what do you want me to say? Yeah, I don't have an answer to this question. Breath for what's to come for Starfield, but these last few days ahead oh of launch, what do they tend to look for, look like for the, you and for the rest of the team? Um, I mean, that was like a full chest sigh. Yeah. Like, shoulders up to shoulders down. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, in some ways, it's probably the most difficult part of a campaign. Uh, because, number one, like, you know... Of a campaign. He's, he's using <laughs> marketing terms. Campaign. Oops. How close it is. Number mm. two, the amount of work that our teams right now... Uh, and, and shout out to all of those folks who who are number one crushing it, doing an amazing job oh, yeah. with the with the trailer at o ONL last night. Don't let me hear anything about fucking unionizing mm -hmm. or overtime or owed time or anything like that. Do your fucking job. You know who you are, and you know that in <laughs> my fucking email draft box <laughs> is your termination <laughs> contract. Already signed. And, and everything that's been a part of this campaign, they, they are working so hard. Um, <clears throat> and you're also just sitting here where you've now given the game to a bunch of people to press the influencers yeah. and you don't really know what they think or how they're feeling. And so, come on, you know. But I'm you going, but I'll tell you, that one off. fucker who leaked that shit, I know where you live. 
I know who you work for. You They're should dead. be afraid. I know where you live. They're <laughs> dead. That family that was in the background, dead. <laughs> we It's a little bit helpless, so we try and focus on the things that we can control. And it, it, most of all, we're just so excited. And, uh, I love if P. Hines was like, and shout out to that moron on Twitter that was talking about our main <laughs> menu. <laughs> for next week and to get this into people's hands. I mean, I personally kind of love that confidence of being able to hand it off to confidence. press and, and reviewers. Confidence. And I love the confidence of- Confidence. Of handing it, handing it off to reviewers under strict NDA hey, and heavy selection. Can you just go outside real, do me a favor, go outside real fast. Look for the uh, look for the um, the city skylines two booth. It's kind of hard to miss. It's strapped to a giant fucking crane hanging over an <laughs> overpass right now. <laughs> That's what confidence in your product looks like. Yeah. Oh man. Lifting your embargo confidence. date ten hours before the game's out. That's confidence. <laughs> confidence right there. I would use, there's a lot of words I would use to describe their marketing campaign. Confident? Not one of them. Oh man, this is, this ain't good. And you know, influence is fairly early for yeah. what most games marketing tends to do. Like to me, that speaks like, we love what we've done with this game. It's now time for you guys to, to really have a go with it. Yeah, and, and if I'm being honest, like they're really, <laughs> there's really not a amount of time that I'm comfortable enough of like, now you've played enough mm. Starfield to get. <laughs> you will keep playing Starfield you, until you like it. You will never, ever play enough Starfield to be able to critique it. So don't even try. Don't even try. If you don't like the game, you didn't play it enough. Listen, listen. Phil Spencer has 200 hours, 15 characters. He still doesn't know what makes Starfield fun. what this game is because yeah. like i'm at 150 160 hours on my current playthrough oh my god, and like he's fucking working on it he's working on a video too oh my god a double is is that gonna be the collaboration yeah. pete heinz phil spencer yeah. <laughs> day one day one 20 hour long starfield analysis video mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, I haven't even come close to do like there is so much stuff I have intention. There is so much stuff. Here's the thing. I'll at least give Todd it. the benefit of the doubt. I have been lied to so many times by Pete Hines that I li you literally can't <laughs> take anything that this man says at face value. No, oh, sure, Pete. I'm sure there's 160 <clears throat> hours. If we're counting on like, I don't know, Mercury, like I can... <laughs> I just like the settlement building. Only not done. Um, it, it's it, like we t we try and tell everybody how big this game is, mm. and the folks that are playing it, like one of the few things they will tell us is, yeah, you weren't kidding. How big? Like I can't <laughs> believe how big it is. Like yeah, it's content and explore. Like no matter how you want to play, there is so much for you to do in this game. You mentioned. So can I play as not nice. a member of Constellation? No. Why? Why would you want to? Why would to? you even ask that? You Why fucking you idiot! That? Blows my cock off. <laughs> this game, we we said it, it. You said you watched our promotional material made for Wanderers. The Constellation. It is a faction of Wanderers and Explorers. Mm -hmm. Why would you? If why would you not want to join them? Oh man! Opening night live. And we'll talk about it in a sec, but I just kind of want to know why it was so important to bring the experience of Starfield that you have to this audience right here at GameStop. Damn, why was it important? Um, because if you didn't, it would be fucking embarrassing. And it's embarrassing <laughs> that you don't have a playable demo as is. Like, mind you, the, P. Hines has to, like, P. Hines is like, he's holding his hands because he wants to fucking kill somebody because they're doing this interview <laughs> in front of a bunch of playable demos at Xbox that Starfield isn't in on any one of these like playable systems, right? No, no reason. There's no reason to. It's not like the game's coming out in a week. Mm -hmm. They're gonna buy it. Why the fuck? Why are we gonna let people Paris play? That was something said was like, uh, why would we let people play? You know, they're only gonna get ten minutes. That's not a meaningful Starfield experience. Right.
I, I mean, for for maybe one, that maybe that is their justification. No, that totally is. Is like the only way the players are going to accept this is if they get to play it for an hour. So like mm -hmm. that's why they're trying to control the narrative so much. Yeah, but it's like I'm loving this framing of Pete Hines having to talk in front of four people playing demos of of games. <laughs> I don't know what game it is, but like, oh man, oof, oof. All right, this this is definitely the modern action. One right thing, here. like we, our games have always done oh really well in Germany. It's it's obviously what you really? know, it's a, a really well known PC market, and we obviously came from being a you know an indie PC developer and publisher. Stop! Stop! <laughs> it. Pete, Pete, why isn't there DLSS support? <laughs> Listen, we made don't a deal with AMD for FFR. Even, don't even start. Do not. Man who's man who participated in the stealing of Bethesda, the stealing and plundering of Bethesda. Yeah, man, we were totally we were indie. Yeah. Right, to... Which is kind of funny because someone linked me the uh, the Pete Hines the Pete Hines and Emil Pagliarulo review of Baldur's Gate. That's what I have on screen now. Baldur's Gate one, the new one, as oh. in published January twenty third, nineteen ninety nine. Really, mm -hmm. that ex that exists. Yeah, uh, Emil Pagliarulo, Pete Hines review of Baldur's Gate. What the fuck? Under what context does this exist? It, they used to work for Adrenaline Vault. They were game reviewers before they worked in Bethesda. Oh. Comes full here's a great circle. Here's a great quote, quote I immediately picked out. How many of these quests you can undertake is entirely up to you, and so the length of gameplay can vary wildly from perhaps 60 hours to as many as 150. Is it is it a good review at least? Oh god. It seems fairly functional. It's not it's not fluffing it up like the stupid fucking GQ article did. <laughs> so, it's got that going for it. Before we were anything else. Um, but this audience and, and role playing games and what, what they mean in Germany, it's a very popular genre and you know, across Elder Scrolls and Got to censor all the blood, though, but. <laughs> and Fallout, um, Bethesda Game Studios has got a really big um, following in this mm. territory. And, and for all the folks who come to Cologne who, who aren't in Germany, uh, and we just felt like this close to launch to try and do something special for them, uh, you know, to sort of surprise. That's something special, you know, a, a heavily security vetted <laughs> uh, phones taken preview of a curated, edited uh, playthrough of the opening hour have, of a game that comes out in a week. Do, do they have um, do they have the, uh, the the scanner from like the uh, the airport that's able to see like into your colon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like. Fucking Phil Spencer's like, under no circumstances can we allow any recordings of this demo. The the section of the game where they had bots trained to play over and over again to make sure that it's it won't break. And to light and to just be here and, and to, you know. It's yeah, to just be here, you know? It's not like yeah. not being here was no, here haven't was not an option. We're all just having fun. We're just a bunch of guys hanging out, having fun, you know? Take pictures or have a conversation yeah. or whatever. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure that they, they feel as special as, as they are to us. It's cool for me to see that you've got that glass cabinet full of all the different Starfield paraphernalia. Mm. I love the cabinet. Because I've been collecting pictures of... Uh... Do I have a full picture of the cabinet? No, I've just got a cropped version. Yeah, they got a cabinet. They've got the the collector's edition and the Xbox wrap in there, and the microphone. And the stream deck. Oh yeah, the Starfield stream deck. 
You're picking up the Starfield Stream Deck, right? Oh, of course. In, or oh, in order to record your playthrough of Starfield. And of course, the Tempur-Pedic Battle Station. I told you, it's real. I have a picture, like, this is it at Gamescom. Fuck. Why is unrelenting, f why aren't any of my greater powers on my, oh, okay, now it is. Starfield branded Tesla. Manalia, we got this console wrap, we got the Constellation Edition watch, and that helps me feel at least like we're so tangible. It's like, it's right. It helps me feel like it's tangible, you know. Merchandise! Uh -huh. Not playing the game? Yeah, it's... Playing the game is for losers, okay? Merchandise is yeah. how you know that there's there's quality. I was, um... I've heard, I've heard content creators, it, like, describe that about, like, the stuff that they make. Where they're like, you know, what I used to, what I did never really felt real until I had a plushie yeah. that I could sell. Oh man, I love the plushie trend. It just seems so lame. <laughs> I don't know. I'm the type of person. I just don't like merch. Yeah. I don't. I don't buy. I don't like merch. I don't, like, mer I don't like merch. I don't... I don't like credits. You pay me to make videos. Like... Yeah. Um. Like that's that's not me saying I'll never do that stuff because I do understand that there are people who like that and oh, I just put my fucking sword away and um you know they, they want to support but they want to have something that they actually get from it. Merch will be like stuff but, I have in my life. Like I don't know if I ever did it I'd I'd be extreme I'd be I'd be the annoying guy who's like they're only gonna work with me once. And be like, yeah, we're never working with you again. You were way too fucking, like, just too much of a pain in the ass. And you kept, you kept asking us like what the thread count on the shirts are, and like how much the shred, the shirts are gonna shrink after like ten washes and everything. We don't know that hey, shit. Hey, listen, can't it's just garbage we got from China. Canvas bags weren't as bad as the moldy power armor helmets, okay? Oh, and he kept fucking insisting that the that the that the shirts were made in America and stuff <laughs> and not like Bangladesh and it was driving up driving up the price driving down the margin <laughs> there, I can even like grab it we're so close to launch. plus it's really good like shopping for birthdays oh yeah oh I want that it's it's good shopping good shopping for birthdays nice. get, get yeah. Yeah. That. oh yeah I was gonna mention oh maybe that's what that's it that's why I don't care about merch because I don't buy gifts for yeah. people because I'm a cheap gamer yeah, um, I was going to mention the other day I was on the Bethesda uh, gear shop just looking through like the the the, All the stuff that you can't buy of no the, the stuff you they, they list you can't buy because it's all out of there's stock. There's tons of stuff that's still in stock from like years old merch. <laughs> you can pay fifty four dollars to get three Doom Eternal themed keycaps. Can I get a can I get one of the Starfields coffee mugs yet? Is that back in no, stock? No, of course not. Um, <laughs> the only reason I found out is because like Bethesda tweeted that like you could get Constellation Edition there, and I looked and like it wasn't even listed. So, what? What wasn't listed? Constellation, Constellation Edition because it uh, it was obviously going to sell out, but I don't think it was uh. ever there. Because like they list the stuff that's out of stock too. Ah, uh, you know what it is? Oh, okay, okay, it's it's one of those. Technically, this is actually illegal. Well, oh no 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 no. Um, is it illegal? No, no, no. It, it has to be. There has to be like a certain price point and everything for it to be considered bait and switch. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's it's a marketing strategy where you tell people, "Come here, we got this thing." But then they don't actually. You don't actually have it, but you have a bunch of other stuff that people can buy instead. Right. Um. Yeah. It legally gray, but uh, I think the code of law in the U.S. states that it has to be like a promotion. Like you have to be saying that it's like a certain. Pr actually, I think it's only related to pricing or something i don't know not a lawyer you, but there was a guy in san francisco i think that's pricing all of his stuff at 951 dollars, and then there's coupons on it to get the actual price so that whenever anybody steals anything it's a prosecutable offense because it has to be like that amount of money <laughs> yeah Oof. yeah <laughs> uh, you like... got the watch on already yeah i'm jealous Trust I'm, me. The, the, love the watch. I'm jealous. Trust me. Yeah. I want to have that. I can't watch. fuck. It's sold out. Or it's sold out is so this, quickly. Are these pre-scripted questions? Is that why P. Hines is wearing the watch? Because he like. 
because he knew he was going to be asked about the watch? Good question. But why would you be advertising it if you can't buy it anymore? Well, listen, it's just out of stock, okay? That's what's funny about that guy stealing Constellation Editions was um, <laughs> somebody's pre-order is not getting fulfilled. Oh, yeah. Oof. That's rough. Um, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're really excited both for, like, how good the game is, but the way in which Xbox has supported us with, you know, console wraps and, like, the controller and... Mm, immense support the stuff merchandise the stuff yeah the stuff that they've always done why don't you talk about the um the qa team well, that they it's, gave it's you. funny so there it's not a it's not a starfield themed console it's a console wrap yeah <laughs> hey, remember the halo reach like xbox slim <laughs> they did like a special run of the xbox 360 slim that was a uh, halo reach you know came with the game and Came with con nobody remembers control Halo Reach. came with special controllers that were Halo Reach themed. Nobody remembers Halo Reach. I, it's just a wrap for my existing. Well, listen, the wrap is a great deal. OK, why would I buy a whole console when I could just get a wrap for it so I can take it off when Starfield's no longer trendy in three months? <laughs> when, when when I read, oh, that's why they do it so that you don't return the console. You just <laughs> when you get disappointed <laughs> by the game. Yeah, it's like, well, I only I only just... spent fifty dollars on the vinyl wrap. Remember Xbox 360 faceplates? Mm. The headset oh, is the merchandise. best piece of hardware. I like they are so good. Oh my the God. headset's the best piece of hardware that he doesn't finish what he's saying. Oh, really? It's the best piece of hardware I've ever sold. That's probably what he's going to say. But you know, he's leading you on to think it's the best piece of hardware I've ever held. Really? Do you know the profit margins on those? It's amazing. Amazing. It's better than the controller. You can massively overcharge it to audio files. Yeah, because you know, it does. There, there is kind of like a fixed price for uh, there's like a going rate for controllers these days. But a headset. The, the Pete nah, Hines man. interview where he barely talks about the game and spends the entire time talking about like the behind the scenes of merchandising. It's like, dude, the over under on these fucking these shitty headsets <laughs> that we're doing is it's insane. <laughs> Yeah, but, but, you know, Starfield's going to be good, right? Yeah, fuck Starfield. Starfield's Ooh, just our excuse to sell merch. Yeah. Have you seen the shirts? We're on, we're on Have you seen the jackets? We're, he's... <laughs> the, the, the YouTubers really got it right, you know? It's all about the merchandise. Just shit out the content so that you can sell the merchandise. Mm -hmm. I, I use them nonstop. Yeah. Uh, Behinds using it nonstop. This is why I don't believe you, dude. <laughs> just, just selling it a little bit too hard. Yeah. Man, Full credit to that a team. A lot longer than I remembered it being. Heinz talking shop about what he actually does could be interesting. No, it, it would be interesting to get a P. Mm -hmm. Heinz interview where he's not selling a game, and it's just him talking like. Yeah, I've fired probably like 500 people. <laughs> and, you know, people ask me all the time, like, how do you do it? And it's like, it's as simple as send email. <laughs> I have them all on standby. <laughs> My system drafts them up for me. I sign it. That's it. But uh, across... X I'm the guy that came up with the NDA that says you could never talk about your time working at Bethesda. That was me. Pete Hines. You know, do you, you want to know back in 99 who came up with the uh, with the split between between good Bethesda and bad Bethesda? That was me. Todd represented good Bethesda, but me, I'm always going to be bad Bethesda. I'm Zenimax. Spots that the, the way that they have stepped up and supported and amplified Starfield in, in every way possible has been just awesome to be a part of. We're so pleased for all the support that, that, that they've given yeah. us. The opening shot. You're just helping me Remember dress that. my entire house in Starfield <laughs> stuff at this point, so, you know. I'm... Oh, God. Thank you, Mr. IGN employee. <sighs> Remember when that Xbox show was, like, freaking out that IGN... 
IGN just reported that the game had didn't have DLSS, and this guy remember when out. remember when tweet Ryan McLafferty got uh got Todd Howard to like backpedal live. I don't know if it's live, but it's in the interview. Back in twenty uh was that twenty eighteen or was that twenty nineteen? Yeah. Yeah, remember Ryan? <laughs> Peak Ryan. I, replies. I hate fucking hate Twitter. Excuse me, fellas. Just gonna come right through here. What if he deleted it? I don't think he did, because he's not the type of person to have shame. Oh yeah, no Fallout music. Annoying. Now this is this is an encounter right here. You got this, Farkas. I believe in you. Here we go. All right, I'll give you a hand. Here. Sorry, chat. I get a little. I get a little uh -oh. focused. Uh -oh. Instead of celebrating the review code release that IGN received, and I'm sure it was more than one, here you're bringing negativity to a joyous time for Xbox, Bethesda, and the entire Xbox community. I just don't understand the motivation behind these types of stories. Hashtag be better. And then this, this man, I can't wait to use that line when somebody leaves negative comments on my next and video. This, this is just, this is, this is supposed to be a joyous time for me. Yeah. Can you uh, fuck off with your negativity? Be better. Well, okay, so God. Like, he's basically saying that like the arrangement is you need to be positive because they gave you a key. That was yeah. the deal. Yeah. But, and then you like look at the Man, story, guy, the, um, the story he's talking about and it's, Someone's gone through the preload files for the PC version of Starfield, noting that they didn't find any sign that the game is supporting NVIDIA's DLSS. Like, that's literally all they said in the article, was there's no DLSS. Be better. This this guy never heard of Gamergate. I know. Hey, hey remember <laughs> when uh, when a indie dev fucked five games journalists and got them to <laughs> give her 10 out of 10 reviews on her know nothing game? <laughs> I'm happy enough as it is. Yeah, but absolutely. We did get to see quite a lot of Starfield. You had a new trailer last night. Yep. At we saw a lot of Starfield. Let me tell you. Yeah, we saw we saw a lot from that trailer too. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen the trailer yet, but. Night Live, Todd yes. came on stage to chat a bit the more about what that for last. opening sequence looks like, what players can expect, but why don't you catch, up us, uh, catch us up more on the news of the day. Five guys, burgers and fries. Sex for favors. Really, for Starfield? Yeah, uh, I mean, first of all, I want to say, uh, you know, I am, I am a few weeks away, whatever the number is, six or seven, from <laughs> 24 years at this company. Wow. That is the best trailer we've ever made. And Wow, the best trailer. Wow, really? It, Definitely recency bias on that yeah. one. Oh, cool, my, my kill cam well, animation's broken. P. Hines, oh, this is... P. Hines is too disingenuous right. to say from there recency we. bias. P. Hines is always going to say, because it's his job, that whatever they're doing is the best that they've ever done. Mm -hmm. And then, like, after the fact, he'll, like... Nah, he'd never, like... He, he doesn't get stuck in the past. And I, I will have words with anybody who says otherwise. It is... I will have words with anybody who says it otherwise. Okay, that, that, yes, that there's noted. the quote. There's a, there's the Pete Hines quote. This trailer was. If, the best listen up, you we've fuckers! Done, you got shit to talk I will about. Have you words with anyone who says you want, otherwise. You want right, a shit Pete Hines, talk? Open invitation. LARP number. You want a shit talk? LARP number six. Pete Hines. These fists. These fists are for you. You. Me, private sessions, long form analysis and retrospectives podcast number six. You've got words for us? 
This is a threat. Shotgun clicks. <laughs> These fists. I'm a I'm a size thirteen. Do you know how hurt how bad it hurts? Size thirteen going up your ass. You're gonna find out. I wonder how tall he is. How tall is Pete Hines? He's gotta be tall, right? He's gotta be a big dude for the job that he yeah. does. Yeah, I mean he, he's gotta have like a people. commanding presence for that. He's definitely killed uh killed some <laughs> careers. Killed some interns. Yeah. My favorite thing, I had absolutely nothing to do with that trailer, yeah. full disclosure. That it I had nothing to do with that trailer, full disclosure. You don't have to give disclosure, but full disclosure, nothing to do with it. Best we've ever done. That is my team. That is Aaron Losey's <laughs> team going out and making that happen. And um, the, your flowers, the, guys. <laughs> the tone that it hits, the way that it hits that feel of not just what it's like to play the game, but sort of the hopefulness, the, the lifting others oh up. I, I just, I think it's brilliant. Um, oh, my God. I, I'm giving it away, but I've watched this trailer. It was the most nothing trailer I've ever fucking seen. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry I spoiled it. I can't... I just can't sit here and listen to people fucking talk up this stupid live action... I hate live action trailers, first off. In a video game, show me real fucking stuff. Mm -hmm. But... Man. Man, like, people are this starved for Starfield's yeah. anything. That they're willing to talk up a Beautiful shitty fucking trailer. live you know, action trailer. So I don't. You know what also is live action the that take. they could have showed us? I don't us? want to spoil the take, but I got. I do have to say it. Uh, the live action trailer is just them doing a radiant quest. <laughs> oh, man. People are saying it died on my stream, but it like I'm not. Back end, it's not saying anything. Patch stream died. Man. They pulled the kill switch on me. Yeah. Pete Hines. Pete Hines wasn't kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what's You're up really with it on my end. Into a werewolf? Is your stream dead, or is it just the, the watch together that died? No, the stream's dead. Like, I lost 200 oh. viewers. Oh. Like, dead dead, or are you just dropping frames? It's like ending the stream and sending four people to other places, because... What? Yeah, it's like trying to prematurely end the stream for people. Good thing we're streaming in two different places. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, it's not just it. that. It's hey, we we've got wraps for your Xbox console. You know, something Xbox has never offered yeah. um, that look really great. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've released a bunch mm -hmm. of new wallpapers, that, uh, desktop wallpapers, and phone wall. Mm, desktop wallpapers. Thank you. Really. Mm, please, I do a muscle I, I'll take anything, please. Oh, you peasant! Here's your desktop wallpaper. <laughs> wallpapers that have been Are they charging like for it. Can I can I pay for like an 8K wallpaper? Yeah. Please take my 2.99. Two, you think it's just gonna be 2.99? Come on, you're not gonna throw. You're not willing to throw down 10 bucks on a wallpaper. <laughs> it's 8K, dude. It's gonna last you oh, until damn. like 2028. When you got to get your Elder Scrolls Six wallpaper, that's a good investment. I, li I like how I like how my streams always devolve into me just doing the most inane bullshit while we just rant. <laughs> I'm just doing companions radiant like content now. We are now in the point I, I said last night to the folks uh, at, after dinner. Like there is no emergency break anymore on this launch, folks. Like we're a go whether we're ready or not. So every. <laughs> You I really want so. me to entertain the possibility that you could have pulled the emergency break like three days yeah. ago. S or six months ago, even. Yeah. Six months ago, maybe. But no, I don't buy it for a second. CD Projekt Red's final delay on Cyberpunk was a week, right? No, it was like three weeks. Three weeks? Three weeks before launch, they delayed it. 
I, I'm going to say it right now. I really hope Starfield's launch is super smooth. Because I cannot deal with another smoke screen of people just yeah. saying, just making fun of bugs and all that shit. Yeah. This entire video was you complaining about the bugs. We take we take that away. Yeah. And it just yep. exposed Bethesda for what they are. But listen, great world. Because I want Tez 6 to be good. Buddy, like make sure your seatbelt is fastened because this is happening and it's you know, there are very few oh, chances. My seatbelt my seatbelt's fastened. I got my bucket right yeah, my here. It hasn't left my diaper side. on. I was I was I got supposed my, to I'm, shit myself in my, months ago. In my Starfield DX racer. Oh I'm sorry, they weren't able to get DX Racer to do their thing. Um I I don't even remember who did it. Why didn't they do DX Racer? Was that too obvious? Were they like, come on, we gotta, we gotta get somebody classier to make chairs. Like, chair manufacturers are a dime a dozen I, these is days. Is Noble Chairs classier? I don't know. I've all literally of, never all, heard of this all company of their before fucking, until... All of the, Starfield wasn't their only branded chair with them, and all of them look bad. <laughs> I legit, that ESO I one, legit oh, am, oh I legit am collecting, like, pictures of the merchandise that they've done, just because it's funny. The, the funny one <laughs> that... They're in Germany. They haven't shown it. The funny one is the food meal replacement for Starfield that has to say on it, this is food. Wait, wait, wait. Like, this is a real product? Oh, yeah. This is this, this is not like a shit post. Like, a, this... like a Soylent type yeah, thing? Yeah, they did, we're, they we're did it about? in um, Germany. Hmm, okay. It's food, though. Like, it's it's edible? Well, you drink it. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Okay. That's interesting crossover. <laughs> so that that's, I think, the weirdest one so far. Starfield Soy, the jokes gonna have themselves. I mean, yeah. I wonder if they're going to have uh, Tang, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they got to have Tang. Why don't I try and reinforce this to, to our respective teams as much as we can? You don't you don't get many opportunities at, at a game like this. Um, ga uh, games of any kind, you know, is a mm. finite. You don't want to be saying that a week before launch. You don't want to say a week before the thing comes out. We don't get this many opportunities. Yeah, we don't get we. You don't get a you don't get a you don't get this many opportunities, and you don't get second chances at first impressions. All right, which is why we completely botched our marketing campaign. I'll be right back. Like several times over. Ah, so Skyrim. Uh, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and see if I can get another companion. I think the bear respawned, so that's good. You don't get opportunities like this. Makes No Man's Sky 2. No, 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 no. Let's be fair. It's it's Red Dead Redemption 2. It's Donnie Brasco. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is my people not here? I guess my companions are out. They're out bench pressing somewhere. Oh shit, wait, wait, wait. Um, I need to go get Mercurio back. That's what I need to do. All the way back in Riften. Yeah, do, do we need to bust out the list of what Starfield is? I want I, you know what I, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Mule. Uh, well, Brynjolf, uh, really, Brynjolf is accosting me inside the inn. I've never seen this one before. Interesting. What the fuck, bro? You're a mage. Why why are you freaking out? Okay, so he should still have the armor. Yes, all right. Here, put the armor back on. Oh, by the way, Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Mm -hmm. One second, I'm going to try right. this. Restarting the stream in OBS. Is your stream back up yet? Uh, It's been up.
It never went down, it oh, just okay. kicked a bunch of people out. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Wait, wait, where'd Mule go? Please. Please, I need but a septum. A septum is all Mule and her simp. Guys do better. True. True. Yeah, I don't know why um, YouTube's being fussy. Okay, now that you are back, I'm going to go to the bathroom real fast. Never answered your super chats, so now you're an unhappy consumer. Mm -hmm. Apologies. That said, uh, looking up people's super chats is super annoying. But I will do it for you. How would you write Bethesda's intro to be less Bethesda? If I, if I was doing it, it would just be a questionnaire. You'd get a questionnaire. Who's your character? Um, you know, typical stuff, background. The stuff that they're doing, but just cut out the mine. You can make the mine an option if you want. But um, that should be like, oh, yeah, my job is that I'm a miner. not And everybody starts at their second day at the mine. Um the other thing I would do is you just ask the player, how'd you get your ship? Don't because the problem with Starfield's intro is that it just gives you a ship. And unless you've played it or unless you've seen the leak, you're not prepared for how jarring. How jarring it is. I'm surprised there isn't an easier way to keep track of super chats. Well, that that's the funny thing about YouTube is that it's um. It's quite the obtuse platform when it comes to making money. It is actually kind of bizarre. I'm going to check something. Are we back to Pete Hines power armor? We are waiting for uh, Mr. Private Sessions. Pete, 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 I got I got a brilliant idea. Okay. I need some Starfield branded adult diapers. It's a good a good play. You've seen his shirt, right? You see what's on his shirt? I No, I haven't. I haven't even looked at the watch together. Go ahead well, and let me go ahead and look at there. his shirt and describe for the audience what's uh, going on here. Um okay, so my screen is just black. Hmm. I'm going to number play it real fast. Okay. What is that? Is that a cat robot? Kind of messed up, right? Because you're seeing legs on like the sides. So it looks like that? it's uh, perpendicular with you, but then the cat's head is facing you and it's on the top. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna screenshot this for uh for the people in my go ahead well yeah like an adult diaper is like an ass wrap right they're big on the on the <laughs> wraps for starfield and i'm just saying like an adult diaper ass wrap i mean like i'll even settle on just like a starfield branded bucket but <laughs> if, if if i'm gonna have to play, listen somebody on twitter has told me I need to play Starfield 18 hours a day yeah. in order to keep up. That's the pace, guys. So that's that's where we're at in the Starfield race. I'm 18 hours. I'm gonna a day. have to look, like I. So I already got the um. I already got the caffeine pills, mm -hmm. right? I got I got a whole bunch of them left. Apparently, not many people wanted them on my yeah. on my Patreon. So I got a whole bunch of them left. Um, 
I need some adult diapers or something. Like, I got to start yeah. cutting out things here if I'm going to have to do, like, 18 to 20 hours of Starfield a day. Yeah. Well, you got you can Man. get... Okay. On top of me... On top of I have to finish my, Star, my Skyrim video, too. I'm going to be editing my Skyrim video at the same time. Like... Pete, come on. Work with throw me a bone here. Me. I need I need some sort Adult of diapers. like I can go. I can go to the grocery store to uh to the CVS well, or whatever no. and get adult you diapers. Need to, but like you need to get the Starfield it, Uber app to deliver you food. <laughs> from, from McDonald's, which is an official partner with Bethesda, to give to give you Starfield credits. Are they gonna give Redeemable Yeah, they're gonna give me codes, codes and stuff? Starfield credits. Who was it that was was it was it McDonald's who was doing that thing with Lilith or whatever? For Diablo. Yeah, for um, Diablo. I think so. I think it was... KFC always was, does uh, th these kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody's going to eat their shit otherwise. There was a competition for a mount that's like no longer dropped in a game. Uh, but you had to like eat an entire... I think it was like an, an entire bucket of KFC chicken. And they were like super strict. Oh. Making sure that people did it. Because like there were people that were doing it just to get the mount because it was like super rare. <laughs> you don't see you don't see uh, Chick Fil A doing that. You don't see Popeyes mm. doing that. It's only KFC. Hmm. Yeah. Wonder why. Special as it is, for as long as I've been here, and to see what these different launches are, you can tell when something special is happening, mm. and I think Starfield is that. And you know, I really uh, have tried to emphasize to, to our teams like amidst all of the hard work like please find time to enjoy this because you never yeah. know when you get another please please in between your your 20 hour shifts <laughs> of marketing starfield that's what's funny it's like they're doing they're like i i don't know what they do right i like how i have to follow the simp in order to find mule <laughs> do you need a, a lock picked because she'll do that <laughs> Starfield toilet seat covers. Ah, uh, yes. No, just Starfield, Starfield diaper. Star Starfield bidet. Now mm. that. Mm. That's something. When am I going to work time into my busy schedule of playing Starfield to change my diaper? <laughs> can I get Can I get Starfield branded hospice service? <laughs> Do we dip again? What is this good yeah, I, legit, I legit don't know. Sometimes streams just break like this. It's broken again? Yeah. God damn, dude. And like, it's legit nothing on my end because you refresh and it's back. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I'm not having any issues. I haven't dropped any frames or anything like that. Uh, that's red. Redorn's retreat. We are going up to dungeon that I already. Cleared. I'm gonna end this stream, and it's gonna be like copyright takedown because of the yeah. the second of uh, leak footage I played. Oof. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get clipped just for being mm, in just this... for association. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Did they already? Yeah, I'm, I'm dropped this, completely. Did this already respawn? Come on, you can do it. This, I this... may need to end the stream on my end. Oof. I've never even heard of this issue before. It just dis this is not the first time that it's happened to me. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so that lady spawned. The rest of them have not. Uh, there's a back yeah. So I'm just gonna link your stream, and we're gonna finish it there. All right. Where's this back entrance that I was at? It should just be like in that chamber. Pete Hines wasn't prepared for the contingency. Pete, it, it was it was his doing. You know, talk shit, get shit on. But yeah, if you if you've survived this far, switch streams.
It's weird hitting the in stream button and then like not being done streaming. <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting experiment, having uh, two two streams going on at the same time. I think it was a good option for letting people actually see the watch together. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, you're oh, gonna no, have to bring it up open. when we, when we do the live action trailer. Oh wait, I already did open this right. Can I keep Grim Sever? What, what does Grim Sever even do? Target takes 15 points of frost damage to health and stamina. Wow. Oof, that that was uh that's I'm getting, unfortunate. I'm getting raided right now. Oh my god, it's like it's, it's mm -hmm. like a Twitch stream. I'm a real streamer now. All right, put the horse back up. I don't have to VTube anymore cuz uh, ah. I'm not a real streamer. Is Starfield coverage over? No. No. <laughs> doing, we're going to keep doing the watch together. What it's just it sucks that um well, it's just inter it. it's just interview. I mean, I could put like a picture in picture, I guess. Yeah, are you using this for footage? No, I'm not. Well, I'm recording. Uh... The only thing that'll matter is when we actually do the the trailer. Yeah, the trailer I'm def I'll put on full screen. Like, you're not missing much. You're missing fucking Pete. Hines yeah, yeah. It's basically we're like we're just doing interviews. We're just making fun of like the shirt he's wearing. That's about yeah. The level that we care about. Oh, here comes that's, the simp that's, again. That's where they had to shoot us down was in the shirt. Because the shirt was flying too far. In my travels, I those who skills. Private sessions implied Popeyes was good and then the stream died. I didn't imply it. I said it. <laughs> Chance to be a part of something as special as this. Talking about the stewardship you and Todd have over this team to bring something like Starfield to that's players so out there and... It often gets described as, oh, it's an open world game, but that feels like a bit of a disservice because it's not just the one. It's completely accurate as a label. <laughs> it's no, 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 no. Starfield, it defies. It's not a game. It's an experience. It defies classification. It's created a whole new genre. world it's thousands that we can explore and just sprawling open world experience across like a real good portion of the galaxy i mean what is it a real good portion of the galaxy i'm gonna love <laughs> i'm gonna love what the damage that starfield's going to do to uh to scientific understanding of the galaxy <laughs> like i'm sorry but a hundred star systems is not even like a fraction of a percent yeah of our galaxy it's like point zero 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 one percent actually it's probably less than that yeah i'm gonna pull up the exact number the Milky Way galaxy is estimated to contain 100 to 400 billion stars <laughs> That's a lot of stars. Are they in a field? God, those those mm. jokes have already fucking gotten old too. Yeah, the No Man's Starfield. I have in my notes the the when I said that that joke was old. I'm on my way to investigate. I promise to tell everyone who asks. This is important business, you know. No, I think I've got this. There's no exact number they change the estimate every couple of years. Well, okay, it's still fair to say that like, if the Milky Way galaxy was 100,000 stars, 100 in Starfield would be an insignificant proportion, right? Oops. What about that quote where each grain of sand would be mul multiplied would equal the amount of the universe there is? Yeah, I mean, space is, like, cosmically huge. And Starfield can only capture a vibe of that. Elite Dangerous is the space game. Yeah, if you're interested in like genuine, like just going around and seeing space, like yeah, Elite Dangerous is the game, and then Space Engines, like Space Engines, the best way to actually see a semi-realistic 
Fuck approximation. I like to actually have to lead a team on such such an endeavor as that, where it's grand scale that we've seen and all the detail as well. You're asking the wrong yeah, guy. I mean You're asking <laughs> Pete Hines, the marketer. He has nothing to do with making the game. In, you know, as you as you all have seen, as you've watched how we've talked about Starfield, it, it really required us to push ourselves in terms of how do you get the rest of the world to wrap its head around a game of this size and scope. I mean, it is literally... Like, what are you saying, Pete? It feels um, when you're playing it almost like there are a bunch of different Star games. Star Citizen? <laughs> yeah, Star Citizen. People, this... You're not crack... You're not breaking any ice here. You're not really... It is funny. Star Citizen almost never gets said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Star Citizen is very rarely said. And what was the other thing? What the fuck? Is she rescuing herself? What's a Destiny style loading screen transition? Is that where they land the ship? Is uh, got news for you? Inside of one game. And it feels disjointed behinds. It is fucking disjointed. They said flat out in the GQ interview that like until a year ago they didn't even like not it wasn't fun. Man, this health bar. I got the double music playing. Yes, she rescued herself, huh? The only difference between Star Citizen and Starfield is that one of them is releasing next week. <laughs> Uh, yeah, look for those comparisons. Well, guys, come on. It's not as bad as Star Citizen. They're not taking thousands of dollars in money, and it's probably like some sort of Ponzi scheme at this point. Now, give give Bethesda some credit here. Mm, true. I get to decide how much time I want to spend in a way that you haven't really seen in a Fallout or Skyrim. I mean, those things are still... I really? get to decide how much time I'm going to spend that, you know, as opposed to Skyrim, where we pointed shotguns at the people and said, you will play for the next eight hours. You will play Skyrim for the next decade. You know, what's a choice not playing it. You know, what's a choice playing City Skylines 2 instead. Ah. Uh... Which... As Pat said how Starfield is, listen, I can't uh, talk so... about what's going on in the game. That would violate my NDA. <laughs> I can only say that I'm playing the game and that I'm dropping a review on August 30th. You know, I'm disappointed. Nobody, every, everybody got the joke that I was <laughs> obviously bullshitting, but nobody picked up that I would be breaking the embargo by releasing my video on that day. Because the embargo ends on the 31st. I guess I did it too long after everybody the, that day that everybody was announcing that they were making a video. You know, I can spend all my time just picking flowers and the elder yeah. goes like, yes, you can. But it doesn't feel as as wholly different as like the entire space game that exists, mm -hmm. the entire live on a planet, just like the freeform exploration, the combat, the which we've got. Listen, we've got even more things to stretch ourselves out over so it can be even more shallow. <laughs> Man, and it's just like the context of the fact that there's like a graveyard of games and studios that have tried to make this game before. Factions taking sides, the player, tr it's, um, it's just amazing to see it all, how it all comes together, but explaining that to folks in a way that is digestible, um, you know, it's how, how you end up with something like Starfield Direct, which, I mean, it's, God, it's basically a feature film that yeah. we created. Oh my God. Oh God, you... that's not what I want to hear. A Bethesda made feature film. So does that mean you guys got writers? I don't know. Not what it seemed like. There was an error of like, that's going to be their version of the making of documentary. I can take you to where do you want to go? But <laughs> just to explain to folks and to talk to folks about not just explain what the game is, but do it in a way that I just thought was really authentic and hearing from the people making it, how they think about. You want to know the best way to explain something to people? It's to just blast them with information that keeps cutting back and forth over and over <laughs> and doesn't really like cohesively flow. Why would you like, why would you do a short like 10 minute demo of like 
you doing combat and then another 10 minute demo of like you doing it's too hard stuff and it's too you're expecting way too much you're 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 assuming the game is functional at this point for us to be able to record 10 minutes mm. uninterrupted mm. i'm both creating why is bethesda so schizoid because they're lying it's because it's behinds because of fall 76 listen i'm not i'm not all about the todd howard lying mean but like it Pete Hines is like, <laughs> you know, don't trust anything this man says. Get how they think about playing it, and and seeing the way that that resonated with players, I think was really was really special. One thing that really grabs me, I think, is the love that's being poured into like Radiant Quest systems and just allowing those. Uh, we're really pouring love into the Radiant Quest system. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna be better this time. Oh yeah new and unique experiences for people to have no matter where they are in the galaxy whether they are just flying around in space whether they are out no i don't know what happened with the stream youtube just shit itself youtube does that occasionally it just violently shits itself <laughs> yeah just want, go and watch a uh, a live premiere you can really see uh see the cogs turning mm -hmm. marcus where's farkas yeah, you've got like a 1 in 30 chance of your stream just violently shitting itself to death on YouTube. For no reason. Still better than Twitch. They're just maybe mining some rocks or <laughs> looking at new fauna, flora, etc. It's it's a really cool way to... Man, the really engaging I really can't wait to of... stare at rocks. Can't yeah, wait to sit rocks. through loading screens so I can look at rocks. God damn. I mean, Starfield will be Starfield good. Starfield will be good. Farkas! Involve them in new stories. That... <laughs> yeah. Well, the problem is, if it was an outage, private sessions should be having these problems. Yeah, it's now not. you're up to 400 people. I hope I woke some people up with my screaming there. Yeah. <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> Starfield. I'm testing testing my uh, testing my limiter there. They perhaps weren't searching for, but now they're being like collided into, and it's just juicy. You want well, you want to die, and to then die and then because we made an irresponsibly <laughs> large game. <laughs> irresponsibly large. God, game. I love that quote. It's like so when you say words Wait, like irresponsibly large, you're basically saying, oh. You basically I gotta do another quest. You're basically saying we could have made it smaller and better. Man, if only I tried to do just do uh, jobs and stuff, I would have realized how much of a pain in the ass it actually is in the companions. Mm -hmm. No, like it's impossible. It's not for everyone to hear. To just oh, do right, I gotta, random contracts. Right, I got to become a werewolf now. <laughs> we take it to another level that that I think and this is one of the things I'm, I'm looking for We've seen it ourselves like I was just talking to a couple of folks from our Benelux office who were like, you know They've both played you know about the same amount of time like you know 40 hours or 60 hours But their experiences were like n we didn't do any of the same things at all like not even Is that is that really like it? I hear this meme come up a lot in Bethesda marketing you, everybody plays, but everybody gets like a different amount of content out of it. And it's like, yeah, one player goes right and they go to Riverwood and then Bleak Falls Barrow and they do the main quest. And one player goes left and they go to Falkreath and they do Hearsing's quest. I think you can do Hearsing's quest. I don't know. You They level up before they get to Falkreath. However yeah. many times they need to. But like, you know, sure. Players who play for a determinate amount of time could have completely different experiences especially with the way that they're going to do it. Like I'm looking forward to the speed run where players who play Starfield have to like constantly uh, yeah. re reload a save and land on a planet to try and like proc gen the right area that has a weapon they need. Starfield's probably going to be like a, if there isn't like a door in the opening area to take you to the end of the game, Starfield's probably going to be a pain in the ass for speed runners. Close and just, be with that and then the whole like locations aren't the same for every person like what you yeah. and i find yeah babe there you go you gotta let him mm -hmm. cook he's he'll just say it flat out <laughs> locations aren't the same for everybody you are 
And so that that results in a wildly different experience. Listen, we said it was a modder's paradise. We didn't say it was a speedrunner's paradise. Well, it's like fucking Minecraft that did this shit already. Everybody's world's different in Minecraft. It's not special. You know what's special? Fucking engaging content. Fun <laughs> gameplay. Interesting stories. Nah, it's, it's about the universe, you know? About just exploring the universe and just going out there and you just, you know. There's so much forward. content that so you, don't, you won't know what you want to do. What if I don't want it? What if I don't want to be a werewolf? Listen, we try to say yes as much as we can. Can I not be a werewolf then? If you don't do the companions. <laughs> I just uh, want to. I just want to do more fucking more fighting radiant. jobs. I just want to do more radiant quests. Is werewolf form good for this build? I don't think so. No. I'm going to explore this planet. I can't just tell you. You should go here and land here and find this. Like. Yeah, that might not be there for you. Like, you get to find and have an experience that truly feels like like your own in a way that, that I think folks are going to really enjoy and appreciate. Yeah, I mean... Something I think is going to be a, a nice little example of Bethesda's kind of mentality is the introvert versus extrovert perks. Because as far as I can see it, there's no reason not to recruit every single companion that's in the game. I just had my own moment. You know, they, they wanted me to go and destroy the town and kill Bellathor and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Instead, I just walked over to the corner of the, uh, near the Skyforge and just waited an hour. Yeah, it turns out you can actually just wait. Yeah. <laughs> I just hit T and E. Mm-hmm. Hey, Ella. We got a little bite of that in the Starfield Direct, like you mentioned. I mean, Jamie Mallory literally coming out and saying, oh, well, hold my sandwich. I'm, I'm grabbing them all here. And it's just... It oh, man, what a powerful statement. God, I hate fucking marketing. <laughs> An elder gleam druid has been slain. Until next time. It does speak to that unique way that every player can tackle whatever situation they do come across or even just back down to character creation and that's that jumping off point of deciding here's what i'm going to start off as i have no idea where that journey is going to take me and how it might change me as a player me as a character in this game and it's all really fascinating but what i the really sorts of hope I, I really hope starfield changes me as a person well yeah i mean you're going to have a spiritual crisis of conflict according to emil yeah, that's 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 some high fucking expectations right there. Yeah, like, you're gonna find God because of Star. I Hill. always I always describe uh, or maybe the wi don't. the wire as like a as a piece of media that really transformed my like perception and understanding about a lot of different things. Yeah. So Starfield gonna be on the level of the wire Star. or Got like it. Evangelion. Yeah, yeah, Evangelion is another good example of like just like you know just something that can like really just change you as a person the fall 76 was fall 76 definitely did it that definitely mm -hmm. changed me as a person let me tell you i'm not the same <laughs> i'm i'm a, i look at the world in a functionally different way fall 76. <laughs> evangelion's a good bar yeah you need starfield needs to be on the level of evangelion and, and then you got and then you got todd there just like I just hope people like the game. <laughs> no, you've you've poured in some time now, but well, uh, look when I'm when we're in this phase and like leading up, I I don't I don't play like I would like I don't play like I'm about to when I get right. back home. We're like, okay, now I'm yeah. gonna start like like this is yeah. Pete's you, you got a job to do right yeah, now. Up <laughs> to this point, it's been Bethesda's character, and sort of the way I've approached it is sort of testing. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been interacting with our players playing Bethesda Game Studio stuff for a long time. So we know mm. how they think. And I talked to... We know. <laughs> Jamie after E3, and she's like, I, I don't get this. Like, why is this such a thing? And I said, Jamie, what you did is you tapped into the, like... The I don't buy it for a second that that wasn't planned. 
that there weren't like multiple um that the, there were multiple things that were in the direct that were supposed to be like memes that went viral the Dorian fan was one of them for example. yeah yeah no it was it was all it was all smoke screens especially the way that she talked in her uh meet the developer thing where like she was really playing up the platypus ship and the, and yeah. the sandwiches because you can go to the Bethesda uh, Discord server and see that there's like a dedicated yeah, channel please. for this for the sandwich shit. Really? Yeah. Really? That's. And no wonder that Q and A sucked. Of course. Sanitized memes. No, like legitimately, it was designed to be a corporate meme. Yeah. And like. And people bought it i will bully anybody that fucking puts a sandwich lady meme in their starfield video <laughs> i will make fun of you mercilessly <laughs> you are the reason starfield sucks this factor yeah, you that, and like, people like you. you sort of tend to forget like you talk about starfield and yeah but it's still fun mm -hmm. like it's supposed to be about fun and you put your finger sort of right on the pulse of the kind of nonsense that our players love to get up to because we make a game that is about freedom right like yeah. we embrace chaos we give players more freedom than i think in a game like this than people really dare to in their games like that's part of what makes starfield special and look can I not be a werewolf? Why would you not want to be a werewolf? It's cool. I was, this is, this is, is this why I have to mod your games? Because it's just so chaotic that. Well, hey, remember, remember, werewolf, remember, so uh, remember. What'd remember Morrowind. Remember, uh, remember Spellcrafting. It remember. Had to be removed because of recall. Remember Super Poisons from Oblivion? Remember Mark and Recall and Levitation and... No. Remember cut. Remember Enchanted Arrows from That's Oblivion? kind of the weird part, is that, like, the stuff that I have the most fun with, they always cut. cut yeah, exactly, because it was it was too much fun. Mm-hmm. Can't have, like, can't why, have that why, now. Why did they get rid of Super Poisons? Why not lean into that as a playstyle? Because it'd be way too fucking difficult for them to make it intentionally. Because they can't control it. That creates situations that we have to do a lot of work to make sure, like, this doesn't break, this doesn't create problems, but the, the pay I think Bethesda as a studio are, like, hyper-focused on memes at this point they're like we only want people to meme on the stuff that we want that we to want them on. to meme on yeah yeah exactly that and like what like, players for, are like allowed. fallout 76 was a really bitter uh lesson for them where it's like we we gotta we gotta control that shit we can't have people making fun of our games like fallout that 76 ever again. was when the echo chamber ended yeah because I, I do genuinely think that, like, God they didn't, man. they really were not accustomed to being criticized. Yeah. Like, they said they were going to do, uh, if anybody <clears> missed <throat> it, they said they were going to do a voice protagonist for Starfield. And they cut it. Like, they got part of it done before they decided to cut it. Oops. That's how far in it, it made it. Why aren't they setting off the trap here? How to do like, wait, I can do this? Like I can spend all my time doing something as ridiculous as this? Yes, like that's, if that's what you want the game to be about, that's what you should do. But we want you to go and push and try all of the different ways because it's really not about like our story or how we want you to play. It's about how you want to play. So when I play, I spend time like, I'm going to spend a week and not land on a planet. Like what's it like to just be in outer space, spend all my time in outer space, landing on star stations, derelict ships, doing all this stuff. And then I'll be like, okay, now I'm gonna go land in this city and I wanna see how long I can spend not leaving this city. Like how many factions can I find? God. He Sounds like a really with, boring way to play the game. He fit in with that guy that's like, can I, can you play Skyrim without leaving Riften? Can, can I play it? Can I do a pacifist run? Even though you guys have never done a pacifist run before, or pacifist playthroughs before, mm -hmm. 
Well, listen, we thought about it. We thought about how we could make it work, but ultimately, like, it, what, it, it was yeah, too it's... restrictive on the designers to uh, make them account for that in every situation. Well, like, the, the weird thing is, with pacifist-style stuff, is it doesn't take that much effort. Really, what you need to do is just create such... Like, never yeah. create a situation where you have to kill somebody. Yeah. And then, like, pacifist players will figure out the rest. And how many quests can I do? And I'll get to decision points where it's like, look, you're about to, like, you have to pick a side here. Yeah. In the co and I'll make a save and, like, I'm going to play this way and I'm going to go two, do two hours down the road just to see, like, how does that feel? And then yeah. rewind and play it two hours the other direction just because, I like, I want to know, like, what should our players expect? Mm -hmm. How does this, and just trying to do that. I don't buy that that's going to be a thing that happens often. We know there's like one big decision in the game. We know of one so far. Did this mod change how the traps worked? If I think they're smarter, so they're not like stepping on the traps as often. Like yeah. I can't easily bait them into doing it. Yeah, because by default I, it's really easy to. Yeah, yeah those, you just those swinging, in front of those it. swinging door traps are like. AI death sentences. Yeah. <laughs> In as many ways as possible, <laughs> just land on a random planet and just start walking. Like, what's this like? How fun is this? Uh, and the more of it you do, the more you find like there is, there's a thousand hours in this version of the game alone. Like if you don't My even gosh. touch it. It, Man, he is ooh. really just talking that's, it that's up. Now terrible. we're up to a thousand hours? Yeah. A thousand hours. That's an hour for every planet. Ah, uh, there's my number. They expect everybody to spend an hour on the planet. Mm-hmm. Maybe that, maybe that, maybe, wait, 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 hold it, on. Ship that, it. that might actually, that sounds kind of correct. Yeah. Like, fig mean, figure, figure they they say, like, yeah, you're going to spend, we expect people to spend about an hour on a planet. And then, and then the napkin math becomes, okay, well, if there's mm -hmm. a thousand planets, then that's a thousand hours of content right there. Got to factor in restarts and corrupt saves and new game plus. <laughs> I really am curious because every, every time, every time yeah. I play these games, I'm like 100, going for 100%. It's like antithetical to how I, which I shouldn't be surprised at this point that they like try to find new ways to make a game that's antithetical to how I enjoy it. <laughs> like it really is the case that like over the years they're they're just like shaving off another layer of skin. Yeah. What else can we lose here? What else is unessential? In that version of the game where you made that choice, so he's saying there's plus one thousand hours per choice. I mean, sure. It just sounds like game developer, like napkin math to me. It's crazy. And like my one piece of advice to folks is do not ignore your activities. Like yeah. that's almost, okay. it feels like throwaway stuff that the game is giving you. Like there is some amazing stuff in there that doesn't even feel like a real quest, but like will take you to some amazing places and amazing stories. Mm. Mm. See, it's funny. Funny you mention this because I literally just started writing about this before the uh, before the stream started, where um, how a lot of the uh, side quests in Riften are just like these miscellaneous quests, and they like some of them can like lead up to other quests and all this stuff, and it's like it's an interesting way to do like diegetic storytelling, and mm -hmm. I thought they like they were kind of going on going with something. Uh, they like kind of had like a good idea going, and then they completely shit on it by having like the uh, the you know amusement park roller coaster uh, thing that you're talking about in yeah. your video. And it's just like, Rifton's an interesting city if you cut that out. Rifton's an interesting city because it's like one of the largest cities in terms of NPC population. But then you look at the quests that take place there, and if you remove everything related to the thieves guild, there's like almost nothing except those like weird generic uh miscellaneous side quests well what else is there to life except side quests yeah except doing odd jobs except being an uber driver
we encourage you to play this like any BGS game, which is like, do what you want, go where you want, test. Yeah, they're really pushing that BGS logo. L Listen, guys. It's just because it's a new IP doesn't mean it's not going to be a Bethesda. Like, that was not my concern whatsoever that this game would feel like it's not a Bethesda game. I've played enough of your games to know you guys could not make a different game even if you tried. So, no, please, just just show me. You know you know what would sell people on um, on this being a Bethesda game? If you showed people doing, like, the Bethesda loop of, you know, you land on a, on a planet, you do a little exploration... And you just uh, no, no, you're not not. They keep not saying show. BGS to trick people into thinking it's BG three. God, wouldn't that be funny <laughs> if, if the minutes on that meeting came out and they were like, it came out that like, yeah, they were trying to intentionally trick people into confusing the two. It's a Baldur's Gate game, guys. I really game. love just like you know, how much they have to try and sell this game at this conference without actually showing anything. Yeah, that's it's, like the that's like the great trick that they're pulling is can we can we not show this game to people and get away with it? I said it before, this marketing campaign is like literally stressing the uh like the capabilities of human language to be able to like convey ideas without like indirectly i've they, never they heard them really... use bgs until now i'm gonna say that that is the case yes yeah it, it's i don't, I don't know and why then, and then today we have like multiple angles that they're pushing the bgs thing mm -hmm. but it's like part of my video is going to be like trying to just teach people advertising literacy we go all right we can do this one. What could they possibly be hiding? That's the fucking weird part. Yeah, it's yeah. done. People are playing it. Fucking just show if, it. Yeah. They showed Skyrim three months before launch. This is Todd. Like, remember when people were coping and saying, well, Todd said that he just wants to show the game off a week before launch. Well, here we are. <laughs> we're fucking seven <laughs> days before the game comes out. I think it's just being really gun shy after 76 that and they know they don't have to show the game that yeah. it will be like phenomenally successful in the yeah, yeah. like they why, didn't have why, to do any marketing why take the risk even if it's like risk free why take the risk if you don't Which have is once to. again once again lack of confidence the game you know be the kind of player the kind of person you want to be in this world and see what happens i just i get chills thinking about what i'm gonna i get chills chills it's powerful god getting you, you can't chill Does as that hard count? you can't chill as hard as this fucking ign guy who's just hoping yeah. for a future interviews yeah. <laughs> he well yeah, listen he has to work his way up from uh pete hines it's everybody everybody in the uh everybody in the um office was like oh you got pete hines oh shit all right just just fucking Listen, cock stroke the game i don't have big aspirations that i'm going to teach people how to read this stuff i just want people to be able to watch something like the direct and know that it's not the best that's ever been made like that that's that's the bar that i want to get people to is hey maybe starfield direct should have raised some red flags it's, yeah, it's going to be a lot. We cannot wait to see all the <laughs> stories and how people choose to, to express themselves in this game. Oh, you can't wait to see the stories? I'm glad you're looking forward to my video. <laughs> no, I was talking about the people on Reddit. It's going to be amazing. i got one more question I just have to ask you. Okay. I know you're a fan. Have you actually asked a question win the yet? League? stories and how people what has he asked him a question yet yeah like no he, he, i'm pretty sure that this is pre-rehearsed <laughs> like he had the quote he gave not not even like they gave him the question list he 
received the question list from Pete Hines. Yeah. Oof. Watch the game be inexplicably good. I am fairly confident in the assessment that it's not going to be good on account of things that they've said about the storytelling and the gameplay. I th This is my overall impression. If you liked Fallout 4, you'll like Starfield. If you thought, Star if you thought Fallout 4 was boring or whatever, you're really not going to like this one. Cool choose to, to express themselves in this game. It's going to be amazing. i got one more question I just have to ask you. Okay. I know you're a fan, but are Arsenal going to win the league? Yes. Oh. It's, and like I, said, again, like I said, like I said, he hasn't fucking you... asked a single question yet. And he asked something completely unrelated. Thank you. You guys can play Starfield day and day on Xbox Game Pass and PC Game Pass starting Oops. September 6th. But if you can't wait that long like me, Early access is going to kick off on August the 31st with the... So, you know what I don't get? At what point did they switch it from September 1st to August 31st? Because for a long time they were pitching it that the early access would start on September 1st. Yeah. But it's like 8 p.m., right? Yeah. August 31st. Because it's the same time around the world and it's like synced with like UK time. Okay. But like so it's it's the 31st for Americans. All right, we got to Digital Premium Edition, Digital Premium Upgrade, or the Constellation Edition. But coming up, we've got Blizzard here to talk Diablo 4. We're celebrating 10 years of... Mm. Side by side, Starfield and Diablo 4. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, there's there's more competition for uh, for game of the year, right? No, Star, uh, Diablo 4 fell off in popular eyes. <laughs> The two Bs. Well, Bioware was in the news recently, too. Yeah, they just laid off 50 people. It, agile, you know? The... Redefining God success. Damn. Krev. Yeah, no, he's a... This is the mod in action right here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you gotta use all the tools available to you, you know? Good job, RKO. By the at Xbox God. titles, and Phil Spencer and himself know. is going to stop know. by for some new releases here. and what he can't wait for fans to experience here at Gamescom. Damn, that that talk to Todd Howard for two minutes, talk to Pete Hines for ten. Oops. <laughs> was it ten? Was it longer? I think it was longer. That felt that felt like a long one. It felt like I just listened to Pete Hines talk for like two hours. <laughs> It probably was two hours in real time, but I mean, you assholes, I mean fucking, like, two hours of Pete Hines' interview. Yeah, 13 minutes of Pete Hines. He over-delivered. Todd's a busy man. It's true. Todd's... You know, he has a he has to press play on the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stupid part. It's like the whole benefit <laughs> of them playing a video is that Todd could be doing interviews while it's going on. But like, yeah, now he's got to be there. Todd's in the this booth. And his he's gonna, charisma. He, he's going to watch this like intro to Starfield like fucking who knows, like 12 times a day. That's that is rough. Oh, yeah, sorry, your boyfriend's dead. Pete doesn't need to hear this. He's a highly trained professional. He was one of the Get out of here. How many times did they say shop in the Diablo 4 interview? Is his armor worth taking? Not really. I'm gonna find whoever did this. We already killed them Ayala hey, like, we killed them all it's it, it's done you don't have to find them their bodies are right back there
So how many more uh, interviews we got? I'm, I'm scrubbing through this to see if they talk to anybody else. They say they promised Phil Spencer. Here we go. Beautiful man. The man who stonewalled the FTC. Is he, what? So, Phil Spencer, so get mega excited. But first, it made a splash on opening night live. So let's check it out right now. This is the latest from Starfield. They're just like... F fuck, dude. We're, we need to fill two minutes of time. Just play the live action trailer. <laughs> like, legitimately, they just play the live action trailer. Do I have to? Do I have to switch over to the? Are we gonna? Uh, to let's that? let's see if what P Mr. Hines has to say because I'd prefer to watch it in the actual live action trailer page so I can. Uh -huh. notate. I'm well. How are you? It's good I to be here. So good. Have How's you your had... first day of Gamescom? I mean, it's been exciting. I've yeah. Had... Oh yeah, I'm gonna speed Mr. Hines up. Just I walk around, I've looked at some things, but I've mostly just been sitting here talking Diablo and Age and now to you, so it's like... I saw the Age. Yeah, it's kind of like a 10 out of 10. Who was out here for Diablo? Diablo, it was Ron and Chris. We're Roderick here. was here. Roderick and Zude. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. good. <laughs> yeah, good vibes. Um, I want to start by saying that the last time we were together, we were sat in the Bethesda London office planning to steal loads of stuff. Because uh, we had loads of Are we saying hunters. planning because we don't want planning, people to know that we yes, did? Yes, exactly. Well, you've said it now, so I was protecting us. I still have my stuff. <laughs> Well, every time I talk to you, I always ask what you're playing. So I want to know what you're playing and why is it still Vampire Survivors? No, no. <laughs> well, I am playing Vampire Survivors, yeah, so I yeah. got all the achievements. Obviously, yeah. But now they have couch co-op, and I'm playing with yeah. my wife, mm -hmm. uh, my wife Kelly, who doesn't play a ton of video games. Yep. So the fact that we can play couch co-op yeah. and she's enjoying it, like I'm all in. As well. yeah, so yeah. what I'm playing right now on console, I'm playing a lot of Remnant 2. Mm -hmm. I'm playing Brotato. It's a Steam game. So one. Yeah, okay, I'm not. <laughs> Someone's going to have to fucking send me clips of Phil Spencer. Just... All right, let me glance at uh, day two. They've got Cyberpunk, Forza, Stalker, Jusai, Helen, like two. Do, 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 Armor Core 6, Elder Scrolls Online. Ooh, Elder Scrolls Online. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do the live action trailer. All right, let me. This, this I gotta put up on screen then. All right, uh, ba, 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 ba. let me switch on over to this real fast. Do I do this without putting this on screen? There's a clip where Pete Hines gets killed while playing Stalker 2 with Todd watching. Whoopsie, I think I'm showing the... Uh, Guys, if Starfield is bad, I might get a job. Get a wife. Have kids. I exposed you know, the wash again. together room again. Yes. You don't have just a preset made? No. And we're going to get raided. I'll make a new room. Set it All up. Right. Listen, it's too hard. I'm not, I'm not a professional at this. Yeah. Just don't uh, expose this one.
do. It would be it will be amazing. It's very cool. Very. Damn it, that's going to change my audio. Uh... Oh, wait. What is this one? I wish I could preview these things before I switch to them. If you double click it in the scenes, it shows you what. Okay, well, it's fine. I, I actually did keep the stuff that I set up for the Justin Truman thing. Mm. So it's actually perfect. Good job. I'm, I'm glad I was lazy and yep. I forgot to remove that. You gotta pay so it forward good. yourself. Alright, yeah, this is good. the Starfield live action trailer. Remember, guys, mantra with us, okay? I want to see it in the chat. Starfield, Starfield is will good. be good. Starfield, Starfield will be good. Good. Starfield, Starfield will, will be good. good. All right, chat, you got to pay us off here. You got to make a poll. Mm. That's a good idea. Start a poll. Bill Starfield. Starfield will be adequate. Someone blow his penis up right now. Wait, can I not really? All right, guys. Get your votes in. Will Starfield be good? <laughs> All right, let's go. We open on New New Atlantis. Look at all these all these characters in this scene. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if the game's going to be able to render that many people. Wait, is this a child? Yeah, that's a good point. Will <laughs> Will Starfield have children? <laughs> like, the thing is, it, they were in Fallout 4. I think they were even, yeah, they were in Fallout 76. But we haven't seen them in Starfield promo material. It is, so... it is true. I want to say they weren't in the Skyrim marketing. Because they were like... very lazily made. Hmm. Rocket Man, are you kidding? Oh yeah, uh, heads up on the on the soundtrack. Oh. oh no. Oh shit, am I gonna get a... Can we work around this? We'll just play it in chunks, I guess. We can... Oh, I know, I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. Is, is the audio even really that important for this? No, is it just, like, it's just music? the song. Okay, so I, I got something better. All right, so I'm going to play it really quietly. Oops, didn't mean to scroll down there. All right. We may continue. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. I am not getting I am not getting clipped. I am not losing this. <laughs> <laughs> so they gave her he gave her the patch from the constellation edition now available for 299.99 can you actually yeah it's are part, they actually available it's part of the they, are, it's, it's part of the collector's edition you get the patch and the watch uh, oh it's 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 in the collector's edition so i can't go onto the merch store right now and just buy it i don't think so but they have patches of some kind on there you know somebody brings up a good point she has blue eyes do you think the actress actually has blue eyes, or do you think they like digitally? Context. Or digitally? Really, yeah. Um, it is a it is a trait that happens in like a very specific part of Africa, but yeah, I'm I'm just curious. Yeah, it is a good question. P play. Starfield anyway. will be good. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Oh, is that why they had they? Yeah. Changed her eye color. 
Starfields will be good. Starfields <laughs> will be good. Look at him. He's crying. He's crying because he's crying Starfields at, will be good. He's crying at how beautiful this game is not going to be. I'm just like... It's so beautiful that we needed a live-action trailer. This is why I also hate live-action trailers. Okay, Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be it's good. It's like this Starfield. shot in particular that, like, really just Looks like a chaotic me. mess. It just looks like an over-designed CGI thing. You know, like, the beauty about space is that it's just so stark. It's usually the contrast of, like, just nothing, and then just, like, you look at pictures of Jupiter, or, mm -hmm. like, Neptune, and it's just this blackness, and then this just, like, very subtle-looking... Yeah, because the, uh, the luminosity of what's coming off the planet is so blinding that yeah. It lowers the contrast of the space around it. Yeah. And, and like that's the beauty of space is that like stark, brutal sort of uh, just look to everything out there. When you're looking at, you know, in in a real color. Also, I love planetary rings made it to the trailer. Mm hmm. Of course. Can't wait to see how overused they are in the game. Starfield, Starfield will, be will be good. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Actually, this just sounds like music from the OST, so I can probably stop my mantra. Oh, no, no, you gotta keep it up. Starfield, Starfield will, will be, be good. good. Starfield will be good. Yeah. Starfield, hey Vasco. Yeah, Vasco made it to the live action trailer. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Star Starfield. You'll notice we're not really Dune? stopping to uh, comment on a lot Dune? of stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, it's almost like this is fucking worthless. This is generic. Also, by the way, I I'm spot on in the observation. This is a radiant quest. <laughs> I don't know if, it, if literally, but like, go to this planet and collect a handful get, of dirt. Yeah, get your dragon soul. <laughs> this is what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be good. Starfield will be very, very good. I am pre-ordering right now because Open Starfield will be so good. Look at the watch. Mm -hmm. You can get, get it the watch. right now. And the Starfield patch. will be good. Starfield will be good. Starfield We're back. will be good. Oh, so he went to go collect a handful of dirt for the girl? No, that's just, no, that was the radiant quest. <laughs> <laughs> that that's the radiant quest giver. Hey, can you go to this <laughs> planet on the other side of the settled systems and get me some dirt? You know, honestly, though, honestly, <laughs> that's not. It, it would be a little bit silly, but it would also be kind of like touching. That it's like this little kid just wants to be like. Imagine like she's terminally terminally ill, right? Yeah, and she like can't leave the planet, or whatever. She's like, I just, I've always looked at that moon up in space. I've always wanted somebody to, like, I've always just wanted something, like, tangible about it. And it's just like, go up there and collect your space rock yeah. and bring it back. <laughs> but it's like, that's at least, you can do something with that, at least. I would, I, it's silly, it's kind of stupid, but, like, you know, it's it's a charity thing. Like, uh, like um, what's a charity? Uh, the Like, uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Going up in space doesn't seem that dangerous. Well, you know, she has brittle bones and everything mm. like that. Starfield will be good. Starfield, Starfield will, be, will good. be good. So she's wow, wearing it's, the it's amazing that they found like uh, an actor who like he looks like one of the characters from uh, <laughs> one of the pre-made characters. Why do you think they included him? Of course, this has been in the work for a long time. Yeah, that was the that uh, was the mind blowing trailer that they kept talking about. And hey, look, it says September first. Hmm. Wait. Yeah. What? What the fuck? Oh God. You know, indie studio Bethesda Softwork, based out of. Uh, now let's be fair here. The Skyrim Greenwich. live action, the Skyrim live action trailer, it didn't exactly say a lot either. <clears throat> no. But it also. No, I mean, it goes back to what I was. It was. It goes back to what I was saying though, where I just hate live action trailers in general. Yeah. Like a live action trailer is something that you drop when you have nothing to show. But when you're a week away from the game launching just and you're trying to sell advertising you're advertising the 100 dollar early access version 
or $30 if you have Game Pass. I don't know. I feel like I feel like you should be coming with the goods. If they had more to show, it'd be forgivable. Yeah. If Gamescom had had a demo that they were publishing online that was like, here's a vertical slice of the game a week before launch. Again, I want to say <laughs> for the doubters out there, for the haters. P.S. You're grifting. Starfield will be good. I forgot. I'm a grifter now. I'm a grifter until I... Starfield will be good. I need. To, I need. To, I can't be called a grifter anymore. I yeah. have to just keep saying it. Is there anything left to this? I'm a grifter, mm -hmm. and I leech off of. Uh, I leech off of bigger YouTubers because. Um, Remember, pre-order now. You can get the deep mining helmet and pack, but not the spacesuit. So it probably won't match anything. And the mm -hmm. the laser cutter. Mm -hmm. If you pre-order. Nice. Nice. Can I um? Can I get those when Creation Club comes out? Will I be able to buy those as well? See, oh right, it comes with the art book too. Like at least for for me as a content creator, yeah, there's the soundtrack and the art book will at least give me some mileage. Yeah, but if you're if I'm like a if I was a normal consumer or whatever looking to buy this game, why the fuck am I gonna pay a hundred bucks just to play the game? Five uh, early, days early to get it early okay to play it now starfield will be good Starfield will be so good it'll justify paying <laughs> extra oh man that's it right yes we don't i think that done. i think that's it we're done because i'm sure it's shit done <laughs> yeah how long has this been going four and a half almost five hours i think we're i think we're good we're good any more streams before starfield comes out Nah, I gotta I gotta focus on Skyrim. Nice. That that'll be I out gotta, in like three days, right? Yeah, it, it'll be out before before Starfield drops, no doubt. For sure. I'm definitely not still writing the script or anything. Mm -hmm. But you'll it'll be done. In, the script will be done in a week. The video done in three days. Yeah, exactly. It'll be the video will be out and Starfield will be good. Skyrim will be good. Uh, what a weird world we've entered into. I'll be happy when, have any... when Starfield's in, in, the, in the past. I, I was just thinking about that earlier today. I can't wait to never do another game at launch again. <laughs> I fucking hate this. Oh, I love it. I love doing <laughs> games at launch. I love fucking with people on Twitter. <laughs> and making fun of shills. And I love when people like expose themselves as like being just completely illiterate and untrustworthy. I just I hate having to work my uh, my production. Like I knew I knew I wasn't going to get the Skyrim video out when like before Star because originally the early the beginning of this year the idea was Skyrim Part Three would be out before Starfield, but. Then Fallout 76 <laughs> happened. Yeah. And by the time we were finishing that up, happened. I was like, mm. yeah, I mean, it was Fallout, it was Fallout fun. 76 is like, I think it's necessary to play if you're going to cover this game. Yeah, I, I would say that Fallout 4, honestly, is a, another game. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I have a bunch of uh, some footage saved up for when I was working on Fallout 76. Oh, yes, by the way. Um, the results of the poll? Yes. Starfield will be good. 251 votes, too. Mm -hmm. Why, why don't turnout. we get that many likes? <laughs> Where's the 251 likes? Ah, oh, man. But yeah, there's a high chance on the 31st I'll be streaming before the game comes out. Uh, but I will not be streaming like the first you know, day of me playing it. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to play for a few couple days or so, and then I'll, maybe that Sunday, that following Sunday, I'll do a stream. I definitely want to do a stream before uh, before the game really launches, yeah. just so like, people can watch and, you know, get an idea, whatever. I don't think but, I'm going to do like a, tr a video review. I think I'm just going to give give my thoughts, which, you know, I'm going to predict now are not going to be positive. 
Wait, what do you mean a video review? Like, uh, you know, 10 minute. He, you should play the game or you should not play the game. I give it a badass seal of approval. I'm going to do an oh, analysis. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the same. I'm going to... I'll call my video a review, but it's going to be like how my Fallout 76 is called a review. Yeah. Which which was fun. <laughs> that funny thing, the day my, uh, my video got uh, age-restricted... It was the number one Fallout 76 review, <laughs> beating out IGN and stuff. How many more projects got... is Pat going to drag sessions into before the Skyrim video comes out? I mean, Fallout 76 and Starfield. I didn't drag him into Starfield. No, Starfield was... Starfield is an obligation as a uh, not Bethesda channel. Yeah. I committed to committed to starfield a long time ago i feel like not enough people acknowledge that you have autonomy <laughs> and you could at any point have told me to fuck off like you, no, you got your so, you got your cloud follow, you got the uh you got the recommendations oh, yeah. like people who yeah, watch yeah. me know who you are yeah it was never about that people do people not just consider that you and i work together because we like working together yeah, i mean <laughs> Is <laughs> it's a profitable partnership, and the streams are really good because of it. Yeah. No, Fallout seventy six happened because I was I was it was a coincidence. literally you moved yeah you moved up my Fallout seventy six production by like three weeks or three months I think mm -hmm. I was going there was there was going to be a Fallout seventy six video coming out this year regardless. Private sessions can't tell you to fuck off because otherwise he can't play the game and read chat. <laughs> All right. Wow. I think that's it. Is there anything else? Uh, classic Any WoW video. Mm. Did you, did you announce that? Like publicly? Uh I've talked back and forth about Cyberpunk and Classic WoW being contenders. Yeah. It all depends. So, so at this point it's all hinging on uh BlizzCon. <clears throat> when is that? In November, right? Yeah, I think typically November. Okay. So uh -oh. Yeah, what was the stipulation there? If they do like a fresh server for classic, then we can do like a a, a guild that we actually invite like patrons to. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be That'd be interesting because I'm not going to do that for a, a realm that's existed for a long time because there would just be too many problems with doing that. Bioshock video. How did you know? How did you know Bioshock is on the short list? Probably not next year, though. But uh, I do. I, I do want to do a Bioshock. I think Bioshock Deconstructed would be a fun, fun one. Now that we've got more info about cyberpunk, um, that's given me like mm -hmm. I can start to do a basic outline of what I would want to do with that project, which, by the way, it doesn't bother me to do outlines for both projects and then marry one because I could just do the other one after. Yeah. But now I can think about like, because I think I'm going to have to play the game like three times. Uh, how long is that video? How long is that game? <laughs> well, it's not going to be like crazy lengthy playthroughs like Oh, okay just basic run throughs to because there is like the launch version of the game there's the version that's like the kind of the edge runners era with some reworks and bug fixes and all that and then there's like there's the overhaul that's coming in uh next month yeah 2.0 i f i figured you were going to be doing multiple playthroughs to get like different uh choices and everything like that i mean that's like, gonna thank be part god of it, but thank god bethesda games are so I, d I don't want them to put branching choices into their uh into their I, quests I do as stuff. a fan not as a creator yeah <laughs> but like at the same time i don't think cyberpunk's gonna be that difficult in that front it's gonna it's just gonna be a new kind of challenge out of it mm -hmm. but like i'm sure studious saving and reading up on quests will uh kind of help with the with outlining it but yeah it, it's kind of crazy how long this this little race has been going between cyberpunk and wow yeah yeah well i always say whenever it's 
it's always the next project that I'm always thinking about. Mm-hmm. So I've been, I don't even, I haven't really even been thinking about Starfield, honestly. Like, I'm thinking beyond Starfield. I kind of want to do. I'm, I'm going to see. I'm definitely going to be playing uh, City Skylines 2 when it launches. I'll probably do some streams of that too. I would like to do a review on that. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, for, for, for this year, anyways, Skyrim Part 3 and Starfield are committed. I don't have a big like end of year release yet. Uh, for me, it's probably going to be Starfield, unless I can squeak out uh, City Skylines too. I don't think Starfield's going to be end of year. Is uh, it going to take you August, uh, or sorry, September, October, and November to make a video? No, no, no. I like I want, I want it out in November, mm. so that it can capitalize on the, uh, you know, on the holiday stuff. But I just don't know if I'm going to have anything coming out after it well five minutes until armored core year. six is live yeah, so so people have been thanking us for streaming during the uh, final minutes <laughs> all right cool let's uh oh yeah, yeah i'm, supposed, I'm supposed to this week take a vacation i'm not i'm bad at I, vacations so it's probably I gonna did, be i like, did that last week it's probably gonna be like still working oh uh, you gotta less. Just go on. Oh, right. You don't have a car. Yeah, I do have or options. Driver's though. license. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. I just went on a on a road trip for four days last week, and that mm -hmm. was my vacation. I came back primed and ready. All right, that was last week. I think it was last week. Uh, um. Yeah, it was last week. <laughs> like early last week. Yeah. I'm glad you remember. I'm sorry, I just got Skyrim and Starfield on the mind now. I came back and I'm just like, all right, it's go time. All right, and, uh, we'll see you, chat. Yep, we'll see you uh, when Starfield's out. Come on, be hyped. Hype.